Why? Let's go. This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck, fuck, and cut. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this MLB opening day Thursday, March 30th, 2023. The program starts now. Baseball is a sport that we talk about four to five times a year. <laughs> That's right. The World Baseball Classic just kind of came out of nowhere and made it five to six times a year we talk about baseball. But with what baseball is doing with baseball, baseball might be better than it's ever been before. Oh, yeah. We got pitching clocks. We Why? got freak show athletes Why? out there. The games are going to be shorter, hopefully more entertaining. The pitchers can't cheat as much, so maybe mm -hmm. there's more home runs. Ooh. Baseball might be all the way back in today. They crack the bat on a new season. Yeah, Hell yeah. We'll have the baseball insider Jet Pass and will join us in about 27 minutes from ESPN. Can't wait to ask him what's the storylines we need to ask about for this 162 season or game season. Mm -hmm. Whoa. A lot is going to happen. Football season will be full go. We'll know everything we basically need to know about football teams. Sure. By the time this season that's starting today ends. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. So long, these seasons. So, <laughs> so long. Too mm -hmm. long. But today matters because it's the first day mm -hmm. of the very heavy day MLB season. <laughs> Come on. Jeff Pass will be here. Can't wait to hear what he has to say. T. Higgins will be joining us. Whoa. Obviously, the Cincinnati Bengals. Shout out to the man that's been joining us on stage for getting that particular connect. Changed his number. Also going into his last year of his contract. Oh, Hello. he's going to get paid. Hello. And this dude is a no. dog. <laughs> Obviously, they got Jamar Chase and a lot of other weapons over there. So, T. Higgins hasn't been necessarily the one on the particular team. But whenever Jamar Chase was not playing, hey, who showed up? T. Higgins. Yep. Who's an absolute dog? T. Higgins. Who are they going to have to try to figure out to keep in Cincinnati, even though they got a lot of contracts they're going to have to pay? T. T. Higgins. We'll chat with him in the second hour, and then I believe we'll have an NBA guest in the third hour. Not 100% sure if it's locked in or not. We will keep you updated. Speaking of updated, the boys will do that all day at the toxic table. At Boston Connor. At Ty Schmidt. Who's in full fucking Yankee costume I today? I I couldn't find my pinstripe pants, but yeah, it's Damn. It's opening day, baby. You got to do it. I seen you crack open a Bud Light what? as soon as the show started. Mm -hmm. Opening day is a holiday, I assume. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's a like Christmas morning to me. Very, very close to it. I, I just, I mean, you wait so long, or at least I do. I wait so long. I mean, it's a long season, and it's nice. Long! Mm -hmm. But it's also a long off season, and it's nice because the NFL's here, and, you know, you can kind of just forget about it, but... It, like you mentioned, you know, I mean, it, there's there's every team kind of like in the NFL when it starts. Hey, every, this could be our year. You know, we know it's a, the Mets. The Mets potentially right. could be the Mets year. Could yeah. be the Mets sure. year, Probably, yeah. especially because they're the new kings of New York. Yeah. Well, you know, you spend a hundred plus million dollars on a closer, and he blows his knee out oh, in yeah. the World Baseball Classic. You know, so your bullpen is kind of in array, but that's neither here nor there. They got plenty of time to figure that out. He, he might only be out six months, not eight months, like everybody's saying. But that's the thing. And is, six months from now, they're still what halfway through the season. Yep. <laughs> well, you know, but that, that's Home the stretch. thing is you can't, uh, you know, you can't earn a playoff berth in the first two months of the season, but you can definitely lose one. So, you know... This what? matters. It, it, it does. It does. I mean, today doesn't exactly matter. I mean, like the Yankees are playing today in New York. It's like 45 degrees. That's not exactly baseball weather, but... There's just a lot of storylines, a lot of new faces. It's it's very exciting. If you like baseball, and then like Jet mentioned, like you mentioned, I mean, a lot of rule changes this year, so we'll see. Like, there actually might be some more baseball fans by midsummer this year than there have been in years past. Jet passing, very excited to come on and talk about the state of baseball. I feel like all people from the world of baseball talking about baseball to me. Now, I don't know how the baseball purists feel about all this shit, but all the people that we talk to in the baseball world are like, hey, mm -hmm. this is about to get... It's about to get, like, good. Good like, for the game. It's about to get, like, better. It's about to get much better. Because I think even the players are starting to get a little bit, hey, what are we doing? we got four-and-a-half-hour games on a Tuesday in the middle of fucking April. Like, mm -hmm. we do not need this in our lives right now. I think the pitch clock's going to change some strategy. Mm -hmm. yep. I think it's going to change some pitches, how long people are pitching for, yep. everything like that. Could be great for baseball. <clears throat> Tone digs one half of the hammer. Dad. Dad. Cowboys is here. And the man that booked T. Higgins, who looks incredibly fresh, 
The Jacob Bonner. Oh. 14 year NFL corner Adam Pac Man Jones. Yeah. Pac Man baseball fan, I heard you saying, yeah, you know, you live in Cincinnati. The Reds used to be a thing. Yeah, the Reds used to be a thing. You know, it used to be a baseball city. But since Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow came in town, <laughs> you know, um, I don't think too many people are talking about the Reds right now. Let's talk about Joe Burrow. They're going to have to pay him, obviously, yeah. and yeah. they're going to have to pay Jamar Chase. And we don't know what's going to happen with. The running back situation. Right. Yeah, it doesn't look great. No, you did Oh, you not get... that situation. I mean, the contract situation. Oh, oh the other okay. situation. Okay. Oh, we're talking oh. about the money, though. Yeah, we're certainly yeah. talking about the money. T. Higgins is about to join the program. Yeah. He's a guy. Everybody in the NFL knows he's a guy, too, right? And he he's just hasn't. Dog. I don't want to say he hasn't gotten his opportunity, but he's not talked about nearly as much because whenever you talk about the Bengals, especially when it comes to quarterback wide receiver, you're like, Jamar Chase, Joe Burrow, been doing this since college. T. Higgins is a guy. Going into the last year of his contract, Cincinnati going to be able to keep him, you think? Um, I don't know, but I, I know T. Higgins has balled out. You know, you you saying that he's not getting his name called enough. Um, he's put up really unbelievable numbers, 1,000 yards back-to-back -back season and being the number two receiver. I think um, Cincinnati Man. with him. We don't got any of No. It would be great. With him and one of those. and, yeah. and Tyler Boyd, um, to me, they still consider the best wide receiver group in the NFL because no one have done what they've done week in and week out. And everybody know it's time to get paid. Yeah. It's time to get paid. And, by the way, all the good teams out there are able to pay uh, yeah. a lot of weapons. Now, Katie Blackburn, who I believe is the daughter of Brian, okay. who is now running the Cincinnati Bengals, they have chosen to save a little bit of money, not change the turf. Yep, right. Mm -hmm. Right? And they yep. said stats they... say a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. You know, they're kind of talking about it all. Uh, I don't really think our turf has been a huge problem or a problem at all, to be quite honest, Blackburn said, adding that the team has no plans to replace the turf this year and intends to follow the original timeline set by the manufacturer. They, they know this stuff. A lot better than I do. They told us the distance. There's a lot of players who like to play on a grass field, period, she added. They do all kinds of studies. They have a lot of data. But all that data, to process it, process it fairly, you have to take a lot of things into consideration. And so we certainly listen to that. But we also look at what is happening in our own experience, too. I feel like our surface has served us really well so far. Some of our biggest injuries were on grass fields Whoa. at other spots. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Hey, you know, every time you point a finger at me, there's three fingers yeah. pointing right back. Boom. That's what the NFL doing right now for these slip fields that we got. <clears throat> they need to be looking at themselves. Grass fields got us. She would also go on to talk about a couple other things in this article. Uh, on the NFLPA survey in which the Bengals were heavily criticized in areas such as training facilities, game day amenities for wives and families. Remember, one player anonymously, anonymously said that his wife had to change their baby's diaper on the floor of a public bathroom because there wasn't a family room. Correct. Which is just standard operating procedure. That is operat apparatus. Uh, modus operandi. Modus there operandi. Is. There it is. A modus operandi everywhere else. Mm -hmm. Like family room. Just got to have it. Got to have it. Pretty much. I thought it literally just came in the stadium. Yeah. Like that just came. Right. Rule of thumb. We learned this through this NFLPA report card that came out for the first time in 20 years. And whenever, you know, Katie Blackburn was asked about it, the operating owner of the Cincinnati Bengals currently, who added an indoor facility yep, yep. right over the last year, which is incredible. It was like, yeah, good. We're addressing that. Blackburn said in reference to the training room, which is undergoing a major renovation. You had to wait until the season is over to get those things going. But yeah, that should be a really good renovation of that area that the staff and players should like. Really, we have great facilities. We're really blessed to be where we are. We're in a great location. Our stadium is, you still feel like everything's new, but it's been 20 years and it's just time to address a few things and keep it at, the, at that state that it should be. This is one of those things I think should help us on that way. Oh. All right. Okay. Here you go, Katie. And then as far as the complaints about the wife oh. having to nurse babies on the floor of public restrooms, I'm sure we will discuss that topic, she said. We want everything to be a good experience, and we'll do what we can to make it that. That might address some things, and that might not address everything. But at the end of the day, we try to make it a good experience for everyone. And to be fair, overall, I think we really do do that. Everyone might have another idea here or there, and we'll always look at those and consider them and see if we can address certain concerns. How about it? Okay. Let's Thank go. you, Katie. Yeah, well said. New page for the Bengals. That report card did a lot, I think, with a lot of organizations because a lot of owners were being asked about it this week. I saw an article that the Cardinals uh, were addressing their facilities. The Bengals Ooh. were addressing their facilities. I know Rooney got asked about it, uh, about their report card. That was, that was a good thing. It was a good thing for the player. And if you think back, these are humans, mm -hmm. right? Like Katie. Now, granted, the Brown family has been operating in a different fashion in the NFL for a long time. Mm -hmm. And everybody said that the uh, original Brian, what was his name? 
Paul Sr. Paul. 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 Wore the same clothes every fucking day. Same hat every fucking day. Dog. He's like Warren Buffett goes to McDonald's, gets that same thing yeah. every single day, <laughs> does the same thing every single day. So whenever he was looking at his business, there was no like amenities because this, hey, it's nice. We got look at how many square footage we got. You know? <laughs> and things just kind of run that way. How how big is your scouting department over in Cincinnati? Scouting department. What I mean, what's that? You're a coach, you're supposed to scout. Like they didn't have any of that. Like they did not really spend much, <clears> but <clears throat> Paul wasn't living lavishly either. It was like, no. this is just how it is. We got money. We put it in that bank there, and it just fucking... Yeah, it's, it stays there. It, it is staying leave. there. Now, you put in some banks, allegedly. Wow. Yeah. That shit could... Poof! David Copperfield. <laughs> I don't know how that happens, but I've just heard that potentially takes place. So now with Katie getting in there, it feels like they're probably going to spend a little bit more. I feel like the public shaming, too, mm -hmm. because these billionaires have friends. Yes. So Mara said he was sick of telling his billionaire friends why his team fucking sucked. Yep. So that's why he started investing heavily in it. Anytime you can get a little public conversation about something, normally it makes it better. Happy the players are kind of having a say. And also, it's good for business, too. Mm -hmm. If you invest in your business, normally your business is going to be more profitable. Investing in facilities and just spending money so that guys can live better. It's like, hey, they'll probably invest more time there, which means what? Oh, they'll probably be better. I think that is just a zoomed out view that some people have and some people don't. Good for everybody here, though, Pac. I yeah, I think that that port card was unbelievable great for the players and for the fans and the, mm -hmm. the family because that's real. Like, if, if my wife and kids are coming to the game, should be somewhere where if I got a three or four year old, you could check him into a daycare at the facility. I think that we had it in Denver. Um, hmm. I had it somewhat in Dallas when I was there, but I didn't have any kids. At, I mean, well, I did have now. You. I don't know if the Colts had a daycare. They did have family room, like very, very separated family. Like I couldn't even imagine, especially with you know Mrs. Pac-Man and the crew. Just not having a place to be able to get away and get out. Like, that is an interesting thing not right. to have. And most people that have never played in the NFL wouldn't even think of this because you get to play football for the amount of money you get to play football. It's like, agreed. But how come every other team, like even away stadiums, there's family areas. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, for, for away teams, it's like, that's just the type of thing. It's like, you're running an amateur business right now. Like, this is not what everybody else is doing. And you're cheating your players. But ultimately, you're cheating your fans, too, because, like, you're supposed to be – competing with these other places that have all these amenities. It's just, I feel like they're at the point now where everybody's making enough money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I understand there's some owners and owner groups that came in where they weren't making as much money. So it's like, hey, this is a business. We need to save every dollar. The NFL right now is currently making more money than anybody else. And they're going to continue to make more money than everybody else for what C foresees to be a long fucking time. <laughs> so it's like investing in your company is a good thing. And also, I think you should want to do it. Yeah. Like you should want your facilities to be the best in the bill. You're competing, but are you really is the big question. So the report cards, mm. I think we're a big fucking deal. I looked up. There's 11 teams that do not offer daycare. I'm not sure which ones they are, but there's 11 teams total that do not offer day game day daycare. Yeah. And, and just think about that, though. Out of 32 teams. Just yeah, think about that, though. Bro. Like, if you... Think about the worries that don't have to happen for the player that's on the field. Yeah, right. Don't have to deal with it. The drama, right. the bullshit. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like That's just like bullshit out of your life so you can be the best version of you. It's like those types of things that make people better. Because once again, not video game characters. No. Humans yep. that have actual priorities, actual families, actual bullshit, get paid very well to play a kid's game. Understand that. But it's like if your owner isn't like trying to make it as good as... The Patriots have that plane. Exactly. They let UConn fly on it. They also yep. flew some masks. Yeah, didn't they? Damn right. Right. Whatever this whole thing. Over yep. a million. But they have their own plane. Everybody has a first class seat, I think. You don't think Tom Brady benefits from being able to lay out as opposed to what some people are doing where their offensive tackles, knees are jammed Bingo. directly through the back of the starting punter of the team. Mm -hmm. And then the, the left leg is an armrest for the starting punter on the team. And that tackle is six foot seven. And he's supposed to just the next day protect the fucking $250 million asset behind you. It's just like, that's, that's just dumb business, I think. That's just not smart. I think you should be trying to do everything you can to win because when you win, Huh? What Florio yeah, said? Oh yeah, a lot of money. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's where the yeah. money. So we got to remind the owners of that. Like, hey, you're not just, this money isn't getting thrown away. Like, this money leads to more money, mm -hmm. right. which is what you all want, right? Isn't that where we're all headed towards? That's all they think about it. Well, in, in terms of, like, that situation with, like, a family room or, like, stuff with your, your kids or whatever, like, I don't know what the exact dollar amount is, but that certainly seems like that's just penny pension. Right. You know, like, I, that's not, we're not talking about <clears throat> building a brand new facility. It's like, 
this is something very easy you can do to like put your your players you know minds at rest and and like you said get rid of all that extemporaneous bullshit that you might be worrying about and you don't have to worry about like and like you said they all have enough money like that that really seems like stuff like that is just penny pinching it's like just being cheap for the sake of being cheap. But I also think it's good that people are hearing about this. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Because if a player ever in the past was to bitch about something like this, I mean, yeah. oh, shut the fuck. You're, uh, oh, sorry. Kids game. Why, uh, why don't you pay for it? How, how long has this report card been coming out? 20 years or something like that. Oh, really? I think that. Isn't that what they said? And then this is the first one that's ever been made public. Okay, okay, okay. I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know. I, I, this is the first time we've talked about that's, it. I yeah. thought it was the first time it was ever done. I, well, it said for the first time public. it has been made public. Yeah. I'm like, yo, what are we doing? Yeah. How come this has not been made public in the past? I I would assume that they have some answer to that report card. I think I heard some teams say, like, that was done in preseason. There's a lot of people that aren't in the NFL <laughs> that are doing voting and that whole oh, thing. Okay. Like, there's always going to be some sort of spin to something, you know. But some of those places, I think, had quite a wake-up call. And then in their conversations, like, hey, everybody says you're building shit. Yeah. Hey, why do you have such a shit built? Yeah. And I guess Dan Snyder kind of takes all the heat for everything. Exactly. But some of these other owners, I think, are kind of getting opened up to a little bit of conversation about like, oh, you're not that good at business either, huh? Is that hmm. are you guys okay <laughs> over there? Right. Like that's that's a big deal in this world. Yeah, for like the Brown family and the Bidwell family to what you just said. They're they're loving the poop pipes bursting in Washington because they can go back, you know. Hey, at least we don't have that going on. It's like the new coaches with Urban Meyer. Like, hey, sure, we might have won five games, but at least we didn't have the Urban Meyer situation in Jacksonville. Talking about winning, that's why it didn't make sense that the Chiefs like their facilities, they got F's and D's on everything, and it feels like that place should be what the first one taking that. Right. So you know what the players are saying there? Players are saying there, thank you. Yes, we've been putting up with a lot of shit here. <laughs> yeah, kind of. You know what I mean? Who had no seasoning on it, man? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> shit. We're winning Super Bowls here. Yeah, we're going to AFC Championship. Like, I guess you know there was a long time Kansas City just hey, sucked. I will, I will say this, uh, and shout out to Mr. Brown. Um, one morning, I had an incident that the bacon was really burnt. Okay, crispy. I mean, like, burnt, burnt. Okay. All right. I go, I'm like, yo, who in the hell cooked this? <laughs> yo, and the dude was like, I cooked this. Up. I said, what? I'm like, bro, you burnt the bacon, bro. Like, why would you put this out? Like, he really wanted to fight me. I went upstairs. <laughs> I went straight to Mr. Brown. I'm like, yo, bro, how in the hell are we supposed to eat this? <laughs> Mr. Brown fired dude ass the next day. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, no. The guy was going to fight you, yeah. then he gets fired. Then he gets fired. Hey, but I think that is an interesting thing because, like, there's places that just have poor quality of shit, too. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. they're giving it out. Like, yeah, we got food here. And then the report card comes out, and it's like, yeah, I guess you check the <laughs> yeah. box. You have food. Technically. Right. Yeah, technically, there is food here, but... It's with this old nutritionist thing that's coming into. I'm surprised that every team isn't being forced to have yeah. a good like. But once again, good food, you know. In the eye. I'm saying they're gonna find us if we overweight. You're gonna get fined. Well, also you're faster yeah. allegedly, yeah. right? All this science led, says. All, all this yeah. science says that if you eat better, you're faster, you recover quicker, you're clearer minded, you're everything like that. That's why there's a fucking nutritionist being forced into every building. Right. And then. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah. And also, there's some nachos with cheese out here. Mm -hmm. You're paying two fifty four. <laughs> if you want. If no, you guys can order out. I mean, we go ahead. DoorDash. You go, DoorDash is here though. You gotta go pick it up at the gate, walk mm -hmm. it back mm -hmm. in here. You have twenty five minutes, remember. So if you want to do that whole thing, certainly get it here on time. It's like I don't understand why it isn't just the quickest, like we should have food that makes them all in the best fucking shape that they could possibly be. Because once again, they are our business. I, I, that's just, I think that's coming from a player's perspective, though. Yeah. That's like from our perspective when we're like, somebody's in a shitty hotel. It's like, so if I sleep terribly, that's good. Like, we're good with it. We'd yeah. rather have everybody. Recommend this place. Everybody just be super fucking tired for the game as opposed to, it's like those little things. It's the non-obvious. Isn't that what Lombardi said? Yeah. yeah. Yep. All, it, the, the the person oh. who can conquer the non obvious or something mm -hmm. or handle the non obvious the best is normally the winner. I forget. Dash Bruce Springsteen. Dash it, it was. Lombo. Dash Michael Scott. Right. Yeah. yeah so like <laughs> that whole thing happened, but it's real. It's like those little things matter. I think, and nobody really thinks about, especially at the highest level where everybody's kind of in the same ballpark, same salary cap, same ages, same coaches, pretty yeah. much. Mm -hmm. It's like those little advantages are a big deal. So. I, it all did get exposed. Everybody's going to change for the better. We we got faith. We got faith everybody's going to change for the better. Steelers, I, they said this place stinks too. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, no. I didn't. Think. No. <laughs> Here's the thing, though, too. Like, um, this is the NFL we're talking about, and all these colleges love putting out videos of how nice their facilities are and how nice their 
cafeterias are and all the players are on these meal plans and you see like the beautiful food that they have and stuff like that. If that's going on there, it should be happy. Like you talked about a lot of these college kids are, are leaving oh, college yeah. and Go their situation much get, worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. also there's nice places. The reason why they're putting it out there, college is, and you can add on to this for sure. It's like, yo, you're going to hang out here. We want you to right. hang out. Mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Like we want you at the building. Like some of these NFL facilities, it sounds like nobody wants to fucking be there. Yeah, get in, get out. You'd much rather your team hang out though. Right. And it's like, that's a, that's a big part of the whole thing. It, the nicer it is, the more they want to be there. You get more things done if you can keep them all at the stadium. You're going to watch film longer. You're going to hang out longer. The team going to get better as being a team, um, team camaraderie, all of that. Like, you want the workplace to be like this. Yeah, that's a pretty good mm -hmm. one here. Mm -hmm. We got a pretty good yeah. one here. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of, yeah. we got an easy carry contest submission coming from Pac-Man Jones. Ooh. He's going to have to jump over that table over there. He's going to have to get across that crash pad. What? He's going to have to juggle a pickleball. Oh, Whoa. Boy. On a Thunderball yeah, court. Yeah. Then he's going to have to do a lap, obviously, through the obstacle course and then the football. Then he's going to have to deliver the beer. But before he does any of that, mm -hmm. he's going to have to catch those things like it was a punt return back in the day. Wow. wow. Okay. Oh, remember, because well, Hard Knocks, when he was at the Cowboys, that's right. it was just like they were yep. sending jugs at him. Oh. Boom. Before anybody else was doing it. Oh, it was actually live punts? All of those were live punts? Yeah. Okay. Much more impressive than just a jugs machine. <laughs> yeah. This is before anybody else was doing Boom. Four of those things. Boom. 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 Five of those things. No way. Can't you didn't get sick. this, right? You dropped Boom. them all? Boom. What? Whoa. Come on, bro. I would have done the same thing. Fuck off. He just yelled, <laughs> obviously. So you'll have to do that with beer cans being tossed to you from Connor to start the whole thing. You uh, you think you're going to be okay? I think we're going to be okay. How long have you been doing that? Was that the first time they caught it on camera, obviously? How long before that have you been doing that? Well, shout out to Coach Stewart. Bill he, Stewart, rest Bill in peace. Bill Stewart, rest in peace. He used to make me do that way back when I was in college. And um, I could catch like eight balls of the college footballs. The NFL balls are a little bit bigger. But um, he was like, yo, Pac, I would start off practice with one right here and always catch the next one. Were you a right tick catcher? I was a right side catcher. Yep. And um, it made, the, made it so much easier when I was just catching one ball. So we would practice that warming up. And then um, right before we go live, he would say, see how many you can catch. So it became a thing. And, and I started doing it everywhere I, um, everywhere I went. Who was that punter there, number one? He was a foreign guy, wasn't he? Yeah. He had something happen to him. I forget what happened, though. He used to murder him all. He used to fucking murder Crush him. Crush him? Pretty good at it. Foreign, like Australia or foreign I, Europe? I don't know. What year was that back? Just think? in my head, I'm thinking he's yeah. not from here. Oh, wait. Remember? Oh, wait. Oh, no, I see Oh. John? Oh. <laughs> What's that guy's name? I Look should know up. this name. Pretty fucking accurate on the punts. McBriar, maybe? Bad. Yeah. McBriar? Matt? Matt McBriar. Yeah. Boom. Bert, shout out for you. Go. Where's he from? Ireland. McBriar. Yeah. What um, happened to him? Australia. He went to Australia. Australia. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. All right. I was in there. Yeah. 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 Of course. I don't think said. I ever met him either. This is me just, you know, mm -hmm. watching. Student of the game. Yeah. Just student of the whole People game. Trying, trying to learn how to do this whole thing. Uh, that was incredibly impressive. Then everybody else started doing it, obviously. And yeah. now it's just like a standard content operation. Mm -hmm. You think you'll be able to handle five beers getting tons of you? It's been a long time since you're that hard enough. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that was yeah. on standard def there, Pat. I don't know. <laughs> Different objects, too. Yeah. Uh, we had some breaking news coming out of Anthony Richardson's pro day. He just uh, hit the roof with a ball. Okay. Is that good or bad? I'm doing think, what? I don't know. I think he threw a deep ball and it scraped the ceiling. Oh, baby. Arm talent. Out <laughs> the window. Literally. Yeah. Out the fucking window, this guy. I wonder if that was on purpose or not, because I did see at the beginning of the whole thing, he was sitting on his back. Yeah. Sitting on his ass, just throwing like pat and go 30-yard balls. So I think there was a setup today for this workout to say, hey, Anthony Richardson's arm is bananas. Everybody sees him be a freak athlete and do all that stuff, and he ran faster than any quarterback ever. He jumped higher than any quarterback right, ever. Right. He did all, a lot of things more than any quarterback ever at the Combine. His arm, although it wasn't able to be displayed last year because of lack of talent potentially on the outside, Side, offensive strategy for the Florida Gators as a whole. We are not going to show that. Pulling up the actual video now. Okay, we were just watching. Just see, he looks very comfortable. He looks awesome. He does. Both his thumbs, too. He, he looks awesome. He he posted on his Instagram story him wearing cowboy boots, and there was. I mean. Oh, okay, so low roof. Geez, very that low fixed roof. Florida. Punter does. can never get any practice in this first, place. First time throwing it there? Or? Yeah, what? 
Well, I mean, he wanted to hit a deep. I mean, what do you want? They didn't have that in Napier's offense. Okay, that particular. Good point. Good point. This was an NFL throw. Okay. So I mean, are you shitting me? How does this wow. guy get any work done in here? Well, and also, how is that their facility? Is That's what I mean. Is this a Gatorade commercial? That's left foot off the roof right there for most punters that have ever picked up a football. But fucking rocket out of Anthony Richardson's Look great. arm. I mean, we're not talking about some, you know, Small run score. down pro grade. Yeah. You guys won fucking like three national championships in the last ten years. When they went, who who they? Well, yeah, they may have had to vacate those. Actually, I'm not what? sure. <laughs> that show, that team needs a documentary. They yeah. do. They Big do. Time. They need a. That was a hell of a team, right? Bro, there. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Think about Percy on that team too. Nobody even really talks about it. He's like what yeah. the most explosive. Yeah, yeah. maybe one to play the game too. You're talking about somebody differently, obviously, on the yeah, team. Yeah. He was unbelievable. He was very good at the he football. Was. He cut out a dime. The Ponzi's. Cooper. Ponsies. Riley Cooper. Yeah. Yep. Obviously, with everything. Mm -hmm. Reggie Nelson. Tabo. Yeah. Tabo. Hernandez. Her yeah, we already yep, talked yep, about that. Yeah, we brought him up earlier. Yeah. We had talked about him. Joe <laughs> Joe Hayden on that team. Urban Myers there. Was Cam Joe Newton. Hayden. Yeah, Joe Hayden. Yeah. Yeah. Cam Newton and Cam Newton Hayden. before he got he had to go to JUCO. Oh, on that team. Oh, so he goes Florida, JUCO, Auburn. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know if it was mm -hmm. I thought it was JUCO, Florida, Auburn. Mm -mm. It was not. He was on that team. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What a team, bro. Pretty good. Unbelievable. <laughs> Pretty they built good. that facility. They did. Tim could yeah. never, you know. No, oh, no, mm -hmm. no way. You kidding me? <laughs> that was so rude. Tim Tebow did Probably not deserve that. Probably why he couldn't that. judge a fly ball. Because he couldn't see a ball coming down from any height at all. Yeah. Oh, Makes sense. <laughs> I thought he couldn't see it because Jesus would peer through the closet. Well, that happened, too. He just did a backflip. Yeah, he just did a full backflip. Oh, all the boys. Whoa. You guys are pretty that explosive. Was after, yeah. huh? Florida, <laughs> Florida's got a... That was after he did the old... Uh, the Zach Wilson made famous oh, roll, roll out, left. Bro. How do you think you lose by sixty to Oregon <laughs> State when you got all those guys on your team? Honestly, how how's that? I how mean, they suck so bad this year? I mean, you could you argue it's maybe coaching? What's your problem? Yeah. I'm j I'm j I, I hope you're not talking ill of fucking Billy Napier right now. I am, unfortunately. Listen, I, I'm not saying that that's the reason, but this is college football, and I, I think coaching matters a little bit. You know, I mean. That same team, you take them to Kirby Smart or Nick Saban, are they getting beat by you know seventy in the Las Vegas Bowl? Are they even playing in the Las Vegas Bowl? Probably not. Well, I mean, he's trying to build a program for sure. Yeah, yeah, feels yeah, like start. Good luck out there. Yeah. Good luck out there. Let's respect Oregon State, okay, Ty? They got I'm dogs. Not disrespecting Oregon State. Oregon State's a team. Best season be. ever, right? Yes. Yeah. And they're mm -hmm. only getting better, especially in the pack. And yeah, they got a new quarterback. Oh, oh, oh. sick, filthy. Is this one and one into the ceiling? No. I mean, how can you know? Shout out to Ian Rapport down on the lights down there. Hey, uh, will you call Rap actually right now? Oh. See if he's there. Is he there, you think? Get some, probably. He might be. Get some deets. Oh, no, he's going he to Miami. Today, oh, so uh, maybe. Saw on his Instagram store. Heading to Miami on the surface for Gainesville. Booth. Oh, yeah, yeah, much higher. Yeah. Right? Yeah, he's a long way from that's like an actual six hour drive, maybe yeah. five hour. Like, I think Florida's fucking long. It is. I, I don't know the area as well. Gainesville is way up there. Mm -hmm. Jacksonville ish, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Oh, only Tom. We don't talk to Tom. Okay. Uh, That's what I after thought. we talk Sorry, to Tom. To yeah. Goodell. Uh, let's moment. talk about some other stuff before we are forced to talk about baseball because it's MLB opening day. Hell and yeah. Jet Passing is joining us literally any moment at all. Allegedly, Baker Mayfield was pursued by the Ravens uh, during his free agency thing. This is before the request for a trade, mm -hmm. before any of that. He was allegedly in conversations with the Baltimore Ravens. I saw a massive smile out of Tone Diggs' face as soon as this came up, mm. and he was hoping that this would be a conversation piece today. What does this mean, you think, in your eyes, Pac-Man? This means that they knew maybe the Lamar Jackson situation was going to come to a head? Do you think they just were looking for another backup, even though Snoop Huntley just made the Pro Bowl and had done very well? What do you think this means, that they were allegedly in conversation with Baker Mayfield? The Ravens have not come out and said that. A report just came out and yeah. said that. Uh, Sports Illustrated reported about it. They're pretty, I mean, Wall Street Journal and New York Times. I mean, who knows? Yeah, right. Because you can still get sued. Mm -hmm. We've learned. Yeah, right. So what's real and what isn't real? Who knows? But this is a pretty big little piece of information, I think, when it comes to the entire Lamar Jackson saga, don't you think, Pac? I just think this is so fucking disrespectful to a Lamar. Um, 
I get this as a business, but fucking Baker Mayfield. <laughs> what? You fucking bring Baker Mayfield in. Uh, that's what we're doing. We're going from Lamar to fucking Baker Mayfield. They pay, think, uh, well, if you look at what. Are we really trying to win or, or not? Okay, so if you think, though, that Bucks paid him $8 million? Yeah, I think. Up right. to eight. Up, right. up to eight million or whatever. It was so like the, four or five. So the amount that Baltimore was probably offering was less than that, I would assume. It's not like they were I don't think any of the money was potentially, although three million, four million, still eating into what you could pay Lamar Jackson. In my eyes, the way I read it is like they were a little bit worried that there's Lamar not playing football for them. That's that's kind of what I took from it. For sure. But I might be fucking wrong. But Baker Mayfield. <laughs> That's the best fucking thing you can bring in. Like that is so disrespectful to Lamar, bro. Maybe I it's just it might might it might just be me. I'm sorry. Well, with Huntley too. Like they've won with Huntley. It yeah, but they're probably like just in case Huntley gets hurt. I mean, that's probably they're just probably trying to bring in a veteran backup who they thought they didn't have to pay much. I don't think they were ever thinking that Baker was going to be better than Lamar. Eh, maybe I don't know. That's maybe. All you're but that's why you have to assume that they're operating under the assumption that Lamar's not going to be there because you're not going to bring Baker in to be a third string quarterback well, when you know he said like I I'm, I want to go somewhere where I have a chance to play. Like that why, makes no sense. Why would you get Baker? You seen what he can do in this division? He was trash. No, oh, he took the Browns in the playoffs. Yeah, first playoff. Beat, beat right, one playoffs year. They beat the Steelers Thank in the playoff. That was the back. one year. Besides that one year, besides the year that they beat the Steelers, tell me another year that Baker may have, have, have done well, anything. He had that day. Thursday night football debut. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, God, I was sick. Yeah, unbelievable. Pew, 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 pew. Mm-hmm. Shots. Hey. Beer was, Bud Light was open yep, in uh-huh, every single right. cooler in the city. Mm-hmm. That was a big moment. And then the next year after they made the playoffs, remember? Stefanski had him throw it 60 times after saying his shoulder yeah. definitely, him, definitely affects his accuracy. We're going to have Chubb on the bench. Baker's mm-hmm. going to throw it 60 Seven times that game, shit didn't work. against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. And then also, Stefanski, OBJ, big dap up. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah that was tough. And they ran That's the town. big question. My big question is like, what the fuck happened behind closed doors? Let's pivot away from this. Let's, <laughs> let's revisit this, though, with uh, AJ, who I believe is a Baker... Oh, yeah. I think he's a Baker supporter. Baker Stan. For sure. I'm really? excited to hear what he has to say. If he has any thoughts on it, joining us now is the voice of baseball for the entire next generation of baseball, which is currently in a new era of baseball. The pitch clock is in. Superstars galore. The World Baseball Classic seemed to matter in pop culture. To break it all down, what this MLB opening day means to the world of baseball, senior insider for ESPN of the MLB, the Jet, Jeff Bassett. Yeah! Holy shit. Boys, <laughs> it is it is great to see you. And I'm off center right now, so I'm going to go and slide. There we go. Slide, slide to the left. Slide, slide to the right. Hey, I got I got to say, um, it's opening day. Like, life is great. I don't care if you play baseball today. I don't care that Connor looks like a complete scumbag. He's looking great today. I don't care that Ty looks like someone who's playing, like, dress up as your dad for work day, if his dad actually worked for the Yankees. You're a grown man, and you're wearing a full uniform, right? If you have baseball pants on, son, I I wish I did. I wish I did. I can't find any pinstripe pants anywhere. Tone's beard is looking good. Thank you, Gumpy. I mean, I don't know where Gump is, but he'll be back. Yes, okay, he will. Hell oh, yes, he okay, will. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Batman Jones is in the house, too. Yeah. Oh, upgrade right there. I love this. This is a good day, boys. It's great. Hey, it's a great day, Hell Jeff. Yeah. The guy that you said was playing dress up, he cracked open a nice, cold, oh. wide light. Wide. As soon as the show started, he's celebrating opening day as if it's a holiday. I assume that's what the entire baseball community does. You're suited and booted in a hotel. It seems to be about uh, 95 to 105 bucks a night, but you look amazing. <laughs> you look absolutely amazing, and we appreciate you. All right, let's dive into the MLB. Hey, the, the big st- the shower was so cold. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> been there, been there, been there. Yeah, that also had the the sliding sticky thing. Oh yeah, sure, for it, sure. You probably had to move a little bit this way to get to this way because this is where the shower head is. Been there, done yeah. that. Cr- crusty towels. Oh, oh not great. yeah. Hey, that's, that's great. Best one. Hey, that's baseball, baby. Yeah, we know what that is. That is. 
That's based baseball oh, yeah. program. Uh, they just said you were bopping back there. That's yep. probably why I was a little crusty. If not yours, then the person that was in your room before you or another room where they grabbed those towels from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Potentially some kids on there need to hang on them. They're the future. Now, Jet, speaking of the future, <laughs> baseball, uh, the pitch clock. This is the big story, right, coming into the season. I think it's what has me the most fascinated with this particular year. The game's going to be quicker. That's what we're learning from uh, spring training here in preseason, if that's what it's called. And how much is it going to affect the game and how we're going to kind of view it this year? I, I wrote this a couple days ago, Pat. Uh, the pitch clock is like liposuction for baseball. It's just taken all the fat out of the sport. All of a sudden, you have spring training games that were going three hours and one minute last year. They're going two hours and 35 minutes this year. So the notion that you're cutting oh. 26 minutes out of the game, and it's not like a good 26 minutes. It's the 26 minutes where essentially pitchers were – fussing around on the mound and batters were stepping out and changing their batting gloves. And the the whole thing had gotten out of control because frankly, this is what happens when you try to optimize sports. And baseball was like the first sport to really emphasize optimization. And one of the areas that they optimized was the mental part. Like if you're a hitter, you have a process. And this process before every at bat and during every at bat, you got to go through it. And if you're a pitcher, the same thing. Well, the problem was in in trying to reach this optimization and trying to make themselves better individually, they forgot about the most important thing. And that most important thing is the fans. And it's the fact that sports at their very core are an entertainment product. And baseball was just not entertaining enough. It's the reason, frankly, why you and plenty of those in the studio don't watch it. But this I'm game back. that we have now, it's going to be quicker what? It's going to have more action in what? it. It's what? going to be a more fun game. Hell yeah, and especially with sports gambling coming into its own here, only legal in 19 states. It's going to be, everybody's thinking, 35, 40 states over the next six years. So if you can really optimize people enjoying watching your sport, I think it's only going to grow the value, which obviously grows the game and grows everything like that. The whole thought of them not thinking about the fans while they're just trying to be the best versions of themselves, both the pitchers who are taking their time, the batters that are taking their time, because they're just trying to do their absolute best. And in their minds, they think they have to do all this shit to be the best they could possibly be, exactly. to have a good career and everything like that. When, when you're like a massive sport, popular entity, like, you can get away with that type of shit. But if if you do all that and then you're still, you know, not producing terrible electric moments, like, that's a combination of, like, oh, people are just going to start tuning out. The whole, what, they have to be in the batter's box with no more calls with, like, how many seconds in? And then if pitch can go right at that moment. It's, like, it's going to be, like, gamesmanship, I think, the batting, which I think oh. adds another layer to it all, Jet. No doubt. And and baseball has always prided itself on being a thinking man's game, right? Like there are these tiny little areas of strategy that you can go and uh, really use to your advantage. The, the clock rules are going to work like this. When there are no runners on base, it's going to be 15 seconds to deliver the pitch. And the batter has to be in the box and alert, which means looking up at the pitcher, with eight seconds left. So really it's like an eight second clock for the batters. Uh, When there are runners on base, it's 20 seconds. The, The reason that this works the way that it does though, Pat, is because when they first did testing in the minor leagues, you know, seven, eight years ago, uh, they had a pitch clock in place, except the clock reset every time somebody step off for a pickoff move or just stepped off the rubber. And all of a sudden they were taking advantage of that every time. You are limited to two step offs when there are runners on base. And if you do a third step off and try and pick off the guy at first and don't get him, he gets to advance a base as well as everyone else because it's a balk there. And so there is an incentive now, like go to the plate get this thing rolling, get the pace moving. And when you add the fact that the defensive shifts in the infield are completely gone, that infielders can't have their feet on the outfield grass, so their feet need to be on the dirt at the beginning, all of a sudden, left-handed hitters are going to be able to hit that ball to right field like they haven't been able to over the past 10 years because of the overshifting. And so you can do baseball now instead of the home run being 40% of the scoring as it was last year. You can have a single. 
You well, can I've, steal a base, and well, there are going to be twice as many stolen bases this year as there were last year. Yeah. And then another single, that scores a run. You're going to have plays awesome. like a single to right field with the runner on first base and the right fielder who has usually the best arm on the field. It's going to be him one-on-one with that runner going around second base. And I'll tell you, the throw from right field to third base where a guy's trying to get him out there, it's an exciting play. And that's what baseball is going to have more of now, Pat exciting plays. So it's just more stolen bases, you said. Uh, more hits, right? Yep. There's going to be more hits, yep. which is success. Even even in football in our sport, like the defense, it's a great, great athletes, a lot of strategy, mm-hmm. but like all the research has shown, like nobody wants to see them have success. People at, want offense. At training camp, you know, teams playing against each other, Colts offense versus Colts defense. Colts threes put up like a 60-yard touchdown against Colts ones defense. They're cheering. You know, it's like, well, those yeah. threes aren't going to be on the team. <laughs> yeah. That is your team that you are <laughs> cheering against. It's just naturally people like to see success happen. So the no shifts, I think, is a big deal, right? Huge. So that's a big deal. Huge. The pitch clock, you said it's 15 seconds, and then by eight seconds they got to be in if nobody's on base. What You said 20 seconds if people are on base. Do they have to be in by 12 then, or is it still no, eight? No, it's eight, it's eight still. It is okay. eight still. So And that's where you're going to see the strategy. Like when there are runners on, is the pitcher going to hold – Hold, 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 and let the clock tick down to one. But then maybe the next pitch, is he going to let it go at five or six? You know, pitchers don't want to become predictable. And that's why the variance of timing is such an important thing. You know, pitching is nothing more than an exercise in trying to throw off the timing of the hitter. And the timing of the hitter now can absolutely be thrown off if a pitch, uh, if a pitcher manipulates the pitch clock correctly. Ty has a question for you. Jet, we're obviously going to talk about Shohei quite a bit this year. And Are we? Who knows what's Hell. going on with the Angels? What do you think has to happen in order for, like, do you think there's a good chance that he gets moved by the deadline this year if the Angels kind of play like we everyone expects them to? And also, who are, like, one or two guys you expect to have, like, a big breakout uh, year this year? Like, I'm very excited for Anthony Volpe, obviously, but you should. Be. Who, yeah. Uh, Okay, that makes me feel good. But who are uh, a couple guys who you think are going to kind of be the faces of this like next generation? So the World Baseball Classic tie was really interesting because I've known Shohei Otani for like five years now. Oh, and no big deal. <laughs> I, I, I have I have never seen him as joyous and as happy and as engaged as he was at the WBC. And part of that is playing for your country, right? But A bigger part of that is he was finally winning. He was playing in meaningful games. This is a guy who really cares about championships. And because the Angels have been horrendous for upward of a decade now, he's never even played in a playoff game. And so if the Angels are out of contention by August 1st when the trade deadline comes, I think that he probably will move because they understand that if they don't win this year, there's no way that Shohei Otani is coming back. Not when the Dodgers are going to be on him, not when the Mets, the Yankees, the Giants, the Mariners, all organizations that have either won in recent years or will be winning in future years. uh, You know, the money's going to be the same or just about the same everywhere. Like if the guy stays healthy and produces, he's going to make 500 plus million dollars and there's... You know, I, I'm not going out of pocket here by suggesting that he could go to $600 million. That's how much Dang. teams love Shohei Otani. As for breakout guys, uh, Corbin Carroll with the Arizona Diamondbacks is just one of those players who I think the new rules are really going to help. He's fast, like fastest guy in baseball. He's powerful, plays a really good outfield. Oh, He's yeah. rookie of the year favorite. Yeah. And uh, He's a dog. for Moved. you know, for uh, for Connor right here, M- Masataka Yoshida, Boom. Boston Red Sox. He is, uh, he's my other Rookie of the Year pick in the yeah. American League. And yeah. coming over from Japan, he can really, really hit. Another left-handed guy who's just going to spray the ball all over the field. Uh-huh. I think Connor thinks that he's the reason why Shohei is going to want to come to the Red Sox. That's right. Right? That's what you've been pitching? Yeah, it's Yoshi, and then there's another guy, too, that they got who was also on that national team for Japan. Yeah, but Boston is going to have to pay him $600 million. You heard what this guy said. No big yeah. deal. We're one of the you know faces of the MLB when we're good. When you're good. Yeah, just like any team in any league. <laughs> Ever. Uh, we have a question coming to you from Canada. Gumpy! Hey! Hey! Happy opening day, Jet. <laughs> Happy bunt day, my friend. What's up? Oh. 
How many bombs is Yoshida going to hit today? And why is he plus 900 to hit a home run today? Great question, Gump. Thank you. Actually, let's get on that. Uh, I, you know what? I'm going to put him down for one. And he's plus 900 because it is really difficult to hit a home run. And I don't think people understand how much power the guy's got. Yes. He's like my size. He's like 5'9", 170. So wow. he's he's not five, cutting nine? a big Here's figure. Your answer. Five nine. Bad yep. cleanup, dude. He's going yards over the monster. Plus nine hundred on a five nine guy to hit a dinger, huh? Let's go, Gump. Come out swinging. <laughs> Drake, Drake at the WBC. Death shot. Hey, Gump. We love God. you, buddy. What a beaut. What love a beautiful you, surprise. Jet. I mean, you, you Jordan look Jordan. hale and hearty right now. Hard. I mean, the the whole the whole vibe here is just great. This is opening day, guys. Hey, 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 cheers! Opening day, couple bob lights. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! All right, Gumpy, we love you. We'll see you soon, pal. Cheers, boys. Love you. Uh, Tony Diggs has a yeah, question. I love that. Hey, that That's had great. to do it. Had to do it. Had to do it. Obviously, because what are you dunk happy bunt day? Is that yeah, way? Yeah, he did. Just uh, fucking. Yeah. Going right for his jugular, right when he gets on. As Gump goes, hey, Paul, good to see you. Yeah, like exactly. the whole thing. And yeah, then... but now they can slap the ball the other way, Jet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> fucking Jet didn't like singles. Man, you were in his head there for yeah. a bit. Yeah, oh, a little, still, yeah, a little yeah. while. And then you just brought up a moment that you were in his. Oh my God, Gumpy has not forgotten. No, I thought bunt cake was like something going on up there in Canada. You know, I thought it was an inside <laughs> yeah, thing. Yeah. I'm like, oh shit, this Boxing is back. Day, fun day. Yeah, I thought this was you, this was you going back in time to when uh -huh. you just oh, murdered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, how come Jet? How come nobody's bunting, pal? <laughs> and then <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, Gumpy. What are you, 80 years old? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was the. He called him Grumps. Yep, yeah, he did. Oh my God, that was Grumpa. That was a burial out of nowhere. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, that was kind of the first atomic bomb that the Jet has dropped. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out you, Jet. Yeah. We go, Jet. Fight the payload. How about him taking a victory lap, too? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Immediately pops oh, yeah. in gum. Yeah, he buzzed the tower. Yep. Let's get yeah, he did. Yeah, he yeah. did. He did. He did. You did. did. A little bit. A little bit. That's awesome. Uh, Tony has a question for you, Jet. So, Jet, without the shift uh, and with more stolen bases, obviously that's probably more runs. Is the pitch clock leading to less runs? Statistically, all this together, am I going to be betting more overs or unders, do we feel, this season? You would think that the pitch clock would lead to fewer runs, right? Because guys need to be in the box and they need to be ready. And the pitcher, it's like Max Scherzer said, I feel like I have the advantage now. I'm dictating the pace from the mound. But if you go and look at research in the minor leagues where they did this testing throughout all of last season at every level, scoring actually was flat and it might go up a little bit. So I, I you know, I would not be surprised to see more runs scored this year. It's just going to be different kinds of runs. It's just going to be a different offensive game. And I, I think that's the thing, guys, that's worth pointing out here. When's the last time we saw uh, a professional sports league overnight overhaul its complete game the way that Major League Baseball is doing right now? I think the answer Football is like kinda. 1956 with the with the shot clock. I guess overnight. I guess overnight's a little bit different, but the NFL certainly over the last decade has changed toward, so yeah, many rules. Over the last 20 years, I mean, way toward passing. Like the run game is, you know, minuscule. But you're talking about one speed. play that changes everything. Just mm -hmm. boom, like that. And, and that's what baseball is doing. And listen, there's risk in that because really? the reality is, guys, there are going to be screw-ups here. The umpires are in charge of just about everything with the clock. And I don't know if you saw. Uh, oh, yeah, these uh, guys. Yeah. Stay oh. That real mood, though, gets kicked yeah. out. What's that? How does that even happen? Kick that guy off the tour, Doug. Nah. Why is he there, Jet? It was. I, I don't care that he got. Honestly, I'm glad that he got run because it made it even funnier. Like it made it, it made it even better. Like the moment already was great, but umpires, they, they need to have discretion and they need to have feel. And you know, what? umpires, generally speaking, they're umpires because they are rule followers because oh, they love, love rules and love, love enforcing them. And so they need to know that, listen, the game is going to be managed through them and it's an enormous responsibility. And Pat, at some point this season, we're going to see a game end on an automatic ball 
or an automatic strike. Yikes. Like it's bound to happen. There are 2,430 games in the season. Oh. We're going to see one of those. And I'm just yeah. urging fans out there like, how many? It sucks. <laughs> it's a bat 2,430. My God. <laughs> a lot of games. Too many? Is that what? 2,000? Cut that in half. Yeah, I, I, I listen. We could have five thousand, and I would still love it. It's big. hell yeah! I, I, I yeah. want as much of it as I can get. Yeah, uh, we're oh, yeah. we're gonna have one of those moments though, where fans are gonna look at it like, what the hell is Major League Baseball doing? And we have to look at that as the anomaly that it is, as the outlier that it is, as something that over the course of a season, it's going to be a tiny, minuscule part of it. Right. But it's also something that Major League Baseball needs to understand. If there are parts of the pitch clock that need tweaking, and there might be, because how rare is it that you get something this big right the first time? If there are parts that need tweaking, MLB needs to be open-minded, and they need to listen to the players and what the players say, because the players are the ones out there doing it, and they're the ones who are going to have the best perspective on what works and what doesn't. Yeah, you got to be nimble, I think, whenever you're trying to introduce a no brand doubt. new style of sport, I think, and hopefully they'll be able to do that. That umpire, though, we need that person to have less power. Get him out. <laughs> Not more. We need less power on that particular one. But I enjoy the thought of you saying, hey, 2,430 games, shit's going to happen every once in a while. Like, let's not judge the entire sport off of just one incident. Exactly. Let's not overreact to 100 tweets when there is 10 million people potentially watching. That is a small Boom. number. Sounds like that's what we're trying to set the standard for this season while also adjusting. Baseball's in a good spot. Let's go. Baseball's in a good spot. Like last, last question for you here, Jet, coming from Pac-Man Jones. Jet, last question. Um, you said about the players. My question is, um, have they got any – Thing from the players. I know I'm quite sure the players like to get out early, so they like the time pitch. But some of the older players might not, not might not like it because of the recovery. Um, so what, what yeah. are the players saying back as far as the time? You know, I think most hitters and pitchers wish that it was 20 seconds flat mm. and not 15 when runners aren't on base. I think they would like a little more time. The recovery is like a real thing. Baseball's you know, in a way for pitchers, especially like stamina is going to be extremely important. And I'm curious if this is going to cause starting pitchers to throw fewer pitches oh, or no. to come out of games earlier. Aren't but they I already think doing the, that? I, I, Aren't they already doing that? Yes. Old buddy had what a perfect that, game last year. And then they benched him like six yeah. or seventh inning. Mm -hmm. Right. Didn't that happen? Here's here's a hundred percent. And I think here's the interesting part of a, it maybe what we look at as an unintended consequence, but maybe it is intended. The problem in recent years in baseball, in addition to games going so long, is the lack of action, right? And the lack of action is because pitchers are striking out hitters way more than they used to. And they're striking out hitters more than they used to because they throw harder and at max effort. Spider. If you're having to throw a pitch yeah. every 15 Bad. seconds, hmm. all of a sudden go in max effort for six, seven, eight, nine innings is a damn near impossibility. So maybe you're going to dial your stuff back a little. Hell if the yeah. stuff gets dialed back, it's easier to hit. If it's easier to hit, there's more offense, more runs scored. And all of a sudden, another problem is solved <laughs> without having to legislate, say, like a minimum number of pitchers on staff. So uh, baseball has been seeking elegant solutions to all of its problems. This may be an elegant solution mm. that deals with any number of them. That's amazing to hear. I'm happy for baseball. You know, maybe there'll be more Tim Wakefields coming out. That'd be, be awesome. nice. Remember they had that show uh, teaching mm -hmm. the next yeah. uh, knuckleballer? Oh, yeah. Because if people are throwing, you know, maybe they'll be, you're saying there's potential less juice on some of these pitches because you're not able to recover as fast or want to last longer. Might change the style of pitching. I mean, if you have an 87-mile-an-hour slider that you can throw after a 102-mile-an-hour fastball, I guess you definitely do that. But there will be a whole strategy change just because this pitch clock. Baseball's in a great spot, as are you, Jet, except for the hotel you're in. But I assume you're going to a game. <laughs> and uh, what are you doing today? Are we going to see you on TV all day, I assume? Yeah, I, actually, I'm in Bristol right now. So I'm heading into uh, <laughs> nice. the office. going to be uh, Sports Center Baseball tonight. Uh, and we've got White Sox and Astros tonight as well. So, uh Tune in. If that it, listen, if that's your first exposure to the pitch clock, um, watch a game. It's really interesting. If you've seen baseball in the past, it's going to be jarring, but 
after an inning or two, getting used to it, I think people really are going to like it. Hell yeah. Let's I go. can't wait. We appreciate you for uh, making time on this very busy holiday of MLB opening day. Ladies and gentlemen, Jet Pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the man. Yeah, hey, yeah. do you hear what he said? Basically, this one rule just changed everything that mm -hmm. they have a problem. Because we are about that action boss. Of course. Mm -hmm. You yes. know what I mean? Need it yep. fast, too. Everybody on earth is. Need it right now. Yes. I'm scrolling. Action. Not good enough action. I'm scrolling See again. you later. See you, see you, see you. That's just the way the world is. So you got to have something, especially for new fans. So if they're going to have action, and it's both going to benefit the pitchers, it sounds like, and also mm -hmm. the hitters. Now, granted, who knows who's right in this whole thing and what the actual yeah. outcomes will be. But projections are baseball's good. It sounds like baseball's Let's good go. all of a sudden. And now what, where the infielders have to be on the infield and the shift is kind of taken away, there's going to be more diving plays and stuff like that from the infielders because there's not six guys on one side of the field because everyone's pulling the ball all the time. So there's going to be more top plays and stuff like that too with the, with the gold glove. Oh, yeah, I've seen some of those photos when I watched <clears> when they were out at the farm when they're doing the Kevin yeah, Foster night. Yep. Yeah. yeah, there it is. Yep. Field of Dreams night. And they have like that sky shot. Mm -hmm. This is my first. I didn't. I didn't grow up in the baseball culture. I apologize. From Pittsburgh, the Pirates fucking suck. Yeah. Have for a long time. Will forever. There wasn't even a human on third base. They had oh, yeah. everyone to the right. It was completely shaded. Yep. Yeah. Boom. Boom. There's another one. And that buddy's old cuz there. Now, I've played a soccer when you're trying to score is a hit it where they ain't. Yeah. You know, and there's a lot of in football go to where they aren't. So this. This particular batter just has no fucking shot of hitting this thing. To the, like, what, how do what happens? Yeah, some guys are just pull hitters, so they just like they ain't got it in their bag to just, just fucking slow down a little bit. Lay the bunt down, or yeah, or if he yeah. if he can't lay a bunt down, then he's fucking messing with his swing. He's probably gonna strike out, or he's gonna hit a weak pop up, and you know Bregman can just slide over. But like this is especially you know like. A lot of guys like who are big, like left handed, like power hitters, like that. This is what's been killing them the last few years is like you'll hit a, you'll fucking rip a shot in between where Correa and Altuve are playing, where like normally it's a base hit, you hit it really hard, but then a guy like Altuve is throwing a guy out from that point in the outfield. So now nah, can't do it. Yeah, yeah, can't can't shift anymore. Can't yeah. visibly disrespect the batter more than I think yes, ever. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. This, this is like whenever they send two returners back. Yeah. So whenever they send two returners back, like punt versus uh, punt return, sure. they send two returners back. They're saying, we have no, this guy has no idea where the ball's going. And he, like, uh, we don't know where the fucking ball's going. So they'll put one at like 30 yards and then they'll put one at like 45 yards. And it's like, all right, any shank short you get, any long ball you get. And it's like, you see that going to the field, it's like a massive shot at mm -hmm. the punter. Like, never want to see that happen. Don't think it ever happened to me. Great news. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Would have felt very disrespected. <laughs> Put the fucking ball down the third base line. What are we even... What are we... I, what are we doing? Just fucking hit the ball. Slap the ball the other, the other way. way. What are we talking yeah. about? Just fucking bang. Isn't that what you... I, I mean, I played baseball one night. Right. Dead red and go up. You could have done it. I played Thunderball. Yeah. We yeah, just put the ball... Exactly. You can slap, slap it the other way. way. Just fucking <laughs> boom. Are we not aiming? What? what going out. Going so out. So you're though. telling me this dude is just... Blind, I'm fuck. I got one swing. This thing is just going. I only, I only know one way. I'm ahead of it. Is it, it yeah. only the older guys they doing this too? No, 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 no younger no. guys too. Oh yeah, it's They're, certain, certain guys are just pull hitters. Like you just, you, you know, can make the majors being just a one. Oh yeah, one side. With the, the pitcher the, helps like heavily. A lot of home runs. Yeah, the, the way the dimensions are in field, like Yankee Stadium, like has a short porch in right field. So like if you're a left-handed oh. hitter who is a power hitter, like. You're gonna. You That's know, where you're trying to aim. Go. Exactly. For it. Exactly. So you're a pull hitter. Like it, it, it's a lot easier said than done to go the other way. Because when guys start, you start fucking with your swing, and then that just leads to more strikeouts. Especially when these guys are throwing harder and they're breaking stuff is is nasty. Okay, interesting. Because I just seen Ichiro just fucking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, Ichi was yeah, the, I mean, the king put... of slapping it anywhere, anywhere he, he wants, putting it where they ain't. Yeah, just like Jason Kendall. I mean, Big, Jason yeah, Kendall sure. used to go out there with no gloves. <laughs> well, yeah, that's and right. he just. <laughs> Wherever he wants, yeah, he, he could slap the ball the other the way. Mayor. The mayor, that's how yeah. we actually yep. mm -hmm. slap the ball. Slap the ball. In it. Yep. So not everybody can just slap a ball. That feels like baseball, not even one hundred and one. Like that feels like baseball, high school baseball. Like just make contact and direct, but just that's not real. That's not reality. No, definitely. Not. I'd say like in high school, if people are slapping the ball the other way, most of the time they're just late. Like mm. it's like a like a real skill to be able to like hit well to the opposite side to of the aim field. shots. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. I just learned something. I did not know that because I've seen this a couple times and I've yeah. gone. My head immediately goes. 
Jesus Christ. Just Shots fired. Yeah. yeah, hit it left. I mean, I guess if you're just trying to fuck with this guy, like it's basketball and you have a psych out, mm -hmm. makes sense. Because all I think about is the batter walking in and just going, what the? Oh, my God. They're literally every human is. If I could just put a ball right there. I am in a good spot. Well, and that's the thing with like bunting too. Like a lot of the like, if they shift like this, like sometimes like a guy who's up there who's hitting into the shift, like he he's not a guy who's bunting, so he goes up there and tries to fucking just bunt one down the third baseline, and his fingers get all mangled, and boom, this guy's out for two months because he breaks. Oh my god, so it's, that's what I'm saying. The mental game here. Oh yeah, that's being played by lining everybody mm -hmm. up on this side, saying you fucking stink, pal. Yeah, <laughs> that is, I mean, it's potential physical disaster. Anyways, they changed this. This is thing of the past. Yeah, can't yeah. You ain't never going to see this again. It's yep. over. Congrats to the batters that were getting bullied by fucking, you know what I mean? Yeah, give yeah, my I like Anthony Rizzo to hit a homer today. Because Boom. he's not going to be scared. Well, just because that, that's what they do. Like, I mean, we're playing at home, Yankee Stadium, like I said, the short porch. Uh, and, yeah, they just they shift him like you would not believe. And he hits piss rockets right into the shift quite a bit. All right. Well, look like he'll be getting on base now. Rizzo. Well, just like uh, who, was, who was it on Team USA who was just hitting bombs foul? Trey Turner, uh, Schwarbo. Schwarbo is yeah. big. Schwarbo had five home runs and one at bat. Yeah. Beast. That commentator, dude. Joe Davis. Oh, well, how do you know? <laughs> right away. How do you, it was unbelievable how quick. Because I, oh, run. We needed it. Yeah. We needed it. We home needed home. Yeah. one. And well, we got one. Yeah. We got one it. from Schwarbo. That fucking guy. That was mm -hmm. impressive. Yeah. Let's get to a break. What a day, MLB opening day. What unbelievable. Day. Here we go. Pumped up for it. First Baseball pick. matters. Three minutes. Baseball matters. Yeah. World Baseball Classic Brave. got us ready. Who? Braves. Hey, they won a couple years ago. They lost all their players. Yeah, they're bad now. A lot of people picking the Braves to win the World Series. What? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Brave. Good call. Good pick. <laughs> pick. Apparently, they are the highest bet team on opening day since in like 20 years. The Atlanta Braves? Well, the Atlanta Braves. They're playing wow. the Nationals who, who absolutely fucking stink. Well, I remember they had an opening pitch a couple years back. Yeah. Through the fucking cheese right down the middle. Yep. <laughs> A lot of people say that started a curse on the Nationals. They had to trade their best player after that. Bryce went to Philly. Yeah, and, and then Juan Soto. Juan Soto. Went to San Diego. We know baseball. We're a baseball yeah. program. Another reason not to trust him. Normally yeah. talk about football. Anthony Richardson, I guess, had an incredible fucking day. He said he seen that Will Levis yeah. hit the roof at his place. So he said if he, wanted, he just wanted to see if he could put a hole in the roof. I like that. I like a little competitive. Yeah. Match it. Everybody's talking about how good this guy's arm is. And he said, I got a cannon. It's like, let's, we'll see. Well, Florida's got like a two-story high building here. Yeah. Florida quarterback Anthony Richardson asked if he hit the roof of the Gators indoor facility on purpose on the SEC Network's bound and said, I'd seen Will Levis do it. Thought I'd see if I could put a hole through it. Mm, this dude's yeah. a dog. Dog. He needs to this take, dude is a dog. He needs to take his shirt off and do the uh, the same pictures that Will, Will Levis did. He needs to put the seat. weights down, okay? Will Levis? Yeah. This dude's a fucking jocked monster. Yeah. Man. He's playing linebacker? This dude's jocked. December is the worst shape of his life. Look, he had a 10-pack, 8-pack. Yeah. He's a pig. This guy looked like a pig in December. Gross. He did. 200, yeah. It is disgusting. And then here we are in March, 230 fucking pounds of twisted steel. How do your arms, arms get steel. that much bigger <laughs> yeah. if you've only gained four pounds? His back. It looks like he gained 30 pounds of muscle. Yeah, where was all his fat in 226? His you know? nutsack must just be fat and heavy. Is that your immediate? That's, that's my guess when you look at it, because where, where, where else? that weight going? Yeah. Where else was, gonna be? Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. But that's four months though. That's about right. Four pounds, four months. Yeah, that's what I looked at. Yeah. He was doing but, combine training too, which is yeah. like full go. Ass. Yeah. I mean, that's absurd. He he how, looks hilarious. He's what from Mass? Is everybody from? Like the uh, Connecticut. Connecticut. Nice haircut. Yeah. Or went great, to school in Connecticut. Great fade. Talk shit. Looks like that. Probably going to be a Colt. Yep. Probably going to be many, a Colt. That may will. How many QBs for Colt today? All right, let's get to a break. A.J. Hawk will join us on the other side, as will T. Higgins. Hell yeah. Of the Cincinnati Bengals, staring down the last year of his contract. Can't wait to hear where his head's at. And also, thoughts on changing the number. Mm -hmm. What's that going to mean for the mojo going into the mm -hmm. season? We also have an easy carry contest submission coming from Pac-Man Jones for Bud Light to potentially win 15000 or be in our final eight to win an autographed title belt and another $1,000. Anybody can enter the easy carry contest. All you got to do is put the hashtag easy carry contest. Contest mm -hmm. yep. at Bud Light and record yourself doing something awesome to get a beer from the fridge to wherever it's going to be drank. That's right. Previous obstacle courses, Thunder courses that we've had in here, uh, Boston Connor mm -hmm. had four, 16 beers on them. Yep, yep, 16. 
Unbelievable work. Ty Schmidt had five tall boys, mm -hmm. one over top of the net. Today, we got to jump over a table, roll across a crash pad, juggle a pickleball, do a lap around a football and deliver the beer. This is all after catching mm -hmm. five beers that are going to be tossed in as if they were like a blunt return. Mm -hmm. This one's timed, too. And we got a minute to do that. Okay. Pack, how do you feel? Make sure they're cold. <laughs> Always. Lonely guys go beard and broke my heart. That was not actually Luke Combs' song. We were singing that, Do Not Give Us a Strike, although it did sound pretty similar to the original right. version. Yeah. Luke Combs' new album out. Yeah, wish that song would have been on it. <laughs> it's on the last one. He might be in town, too, right? Luke Maybe. Combs coming this weekend. Yeah, that's right. Saturday night, Indianapolis, Indiana. He has a couple bangers on that new album. He got a couple bangers. A couple yeah. bangers on that, that new album. That Fast Car mm -hmm. song. Fast Car, which is a cover, obviously. Oh. Incredible. It's a banger. Yeah. The part, the last song, really hits home. It's almost like uh, a turn of page type song. Yeah. About his life. <laughs> yeah, just the story. Not the story. actual song. Okay. The story of the whole thing. still crush beers with the boys if he wants to. Yeah. That's good. growing up and getting old in mm -hmm. between that. Yeah. That's a good song. I think he has bangers on there. Yeah. Hell yeah. I was just hoping that every song was Long Neck, Ice Cold Beers. I do, wish, me. I do wish there was one song on there just about like that. slamming beers. Crushing beer. beers. Uh, the whole thing. Drinking exactly. the 30. With the boys. If He's, he wants to. He says that in the growing up and getting old, mm -hmm. but there's like a much deeper meaning. Yeah. Right. We wanted one mm -hmm. shallow yeah. hammering beer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Give me another fucking beer. Yeah, how's the keg? Is it tapped? You know, like, right. we, we wanted one of those from the little yeah. mm -hmm. party one. That's for the next album. That's is right. Is your neck Hopefully. long? Is your beer cold? Boom. Tone needs to be in a writer's room. That's right. Even though I do believe Luke Combs writes all of his own songs. He's written he a bunch of other people mm -hmm. and made bangers. Let's get to a break. They will be cold beers back. Very cold. Yes. Tim will be opening day. How can it not be? <laughs> yeah, that's right. On the other side, A.J. Hawk will tell us all of his thoughts on every team in the MLB. Can't nice. wait to hear that. We'll also take some phone calls at the Five Energy phone line, 1-833-432-3663. Go to 5hourenergy.com. Use promo code MACV to receive 20% off your order of incredible five-hour energy shots. I took one of these berries this morning. It was. Ooh, extra was strength. Safe. Haven't had a berry in a while. Was Very sticking good. with the Hawaiian breeze. Sure. We were out of the Hawaiian breeze. Had to go back to the OG, the berry. Tastes just as good as it did the first time I ever tried it. Hell yeah. Delicious. Hell yeah. All right. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. Take five. 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 Joining us now is a man who might be the largest celebrity in the history of Earth. And I'm not just talking about his size, obviously everybody does that, but could you imagine a time when this man walks in public that a bunch of motherfuckers don't say, holy shit, that's Shaquille O'Neal? Mm. That has been his life for probably the last 30, 35 years. He's handled it perfectly. This man is a mastermind whenever it comes to business. Obviously on the court, he's the most dominant player of all time in the history of basketball. Four-time champion of the world, Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah! yeah. Hello, is Pac-Man there? Hell yeah. <laughs> What's up? Pac-Man, you know the uh, statue of uh, limitations is up. I can tell the story now. Can I tell it? Yeah, you can tell the story now. Hell yeah, Shaq. Welcome to the show. Thank <laughs> yeah. you, Pac. This is great news. Okay, so remember when uh, Pac-Man had that altercation in the uh, airport? <laughs> He was really sticking up for me. Pat, I just want to say thank you for always being my bodyguard. And you whooped that dude ass because he was disrespecting me. And nobody knows the story, but I, I appreciate you very much. I appreciate you. you. I, I, I've been keeping this secret. I ain't want everybody to know our business. Yeah. Hold on, this is Atlanta Airport chicken in hand. Motherfucker, that yeah. fight that we Popeyes. lost? Popeyes, yes. That, yes. that was the stick up for Shaq? Yes. Yes. What do you say, Shaq? Guy said something to you? What happened? I don't know. Pat, man, just say, hey, man, you don't talk to Shaq like that. And I just had to get on my plane. And the next thing I know, Pac Man put them paws on me. <laughs> <laughs> You've sold printers. What? Pizza. What? what? Icy Hot, what? Insurance with a Cartoon. Yep, what? yep. I mean, you're you have a prolific Rolodex of business. When did you know that was gonna be the case? Because it's inspiring to all of us. I wanna let you know that. I didn't hear what you say. Could you repeat all the all the stuff that I sell for? <laughs> <laughs> I think there's like 10 more too. I don't think I listed off all of them. No, no, just uh, go ahead one more time. I think it was printers. What? what? Pizza. What? what? I think it was insurance with a cartoon. What? what? Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> now there's Novex Biotech GF9. You are a business savant, though. The shoes, obviously, we've all heard all the stories of, oh, your shoes are too expensive. Then you buy into companies and say, fuck it, we're going short. When was that like a focus for you? And how did you know that was a gift? 18 years old, I meet Magic Johnson and he tells me, it's okay to be famous, but at some point you want to start learning about business. First thing I bought was the dummy's guide to starting your own business. It intrigued me a little bit. And I said to myself, okay, I want to, I want to be the only big man that's doing that. But in order to, you know, be, be successful in that world, I had to be successful in the other world. So I really had to dominate and really had to win. And, Are you a supermodel? Cause you have the sexiest <laughs> jaw. Like, you know? Hell yeah. That's real Sean. He, he, he's on his GF9, but the other stuff, I think. <laughs> you had a quote, uh, you said in an interview years ago, you said like, my thought process begins where normal humans apexes. And I just want to say, did you come up with that on the spot? Do you still say it? Because I actually steal it and use it in real life still sometimes. I always give you credit though. Had a baby, Andrew. Uh, another confession is I wasn't really born. I was found on the train. <laughs> <laughs> a, a lot of people think I'm an alien. And a lot of times these thoughts just come to me. I'll just go outside and these thoughts just come to me. I realized that in order to be the best or to be perceived as the best, you have to have forward thinking. So I just, you know, growing up in a drill sergeant environment, my dad wasn't satisfied with good enough. We had to be damn near perfect. So whenever I score 30 points and, you know, somebody said, oh, he had a dominant game. I said, no, you missed 12 free throws. You should have 42 points. You should have did this. You should have did that. I was always trying to, you know, better myself. When did you so, know Kobe uh, was yeah. a dude? Was it like immediately upon seeing him? You're like, oh, this is a guy? Right away. I knew that uh, he wanted to be great. I knew that he was very passionate about the game. And I knew that if something was done he didn't like, he would voice his opinion. Kind of reminds me of Pac-Man. Pac-Man and I have the same relationship. We haven't always seen eye to eye but the respect is there. Like, hey, Pac-Man, you shouldn't do that. Motherfucker, don't call me in it. You're right. So, you know, Pac-Man's Pac my little brother. I'm his older brother. You know, I think the respect factor is way more important than the I like you, I love you factor. You know, we've had many conversations. I love Pac-Man. He loves me. And I love Kobe. You know, we had a lot of disagreements. But if I had it all over to do again, I'd probably do it the same way because he pushed me and I pushed him and, and the respect was there. You know, people always say, oh, well, you didn't like each other. We didn't like each other. If you go back to the first championship, 15 dollars people in the arena, about a hundred people on the floor. I put my hand up. Who's the first person jumping on? Look at it. Look it up. You don't have to be all lovey-dovey all the time. You just have to have, have, you know, have respect. The last question here is you get back to your rehab. Connor has it for you. Yeah, Shaq, speaking of that, a lot of times... No, no, I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to the dude in the fucking cowboy hat. He ain't such a dog. <laughs> Tone Diggs. He, he has a gambling yeah, yeah. show every day he's preparing for right now. Tone loves you, too. Shaq, I appreciate uh -huh. that. You guys are on the set, we just talked about the show. You ever say anything just to see if you get Ernie off of his game? I don't like that question. Back to the other guy. Right, cool. Connor is uh, awesome. this guy in the uh, other hat. Awesome. No, I, actually, I, actually, you know what? You guys may think Charles and I are the funniest. Ernie Johnson is the funniest guy on the set. I got to tackle fucking Pac-Man Jones. Yeah. yeah. No, a lot of people. Belt. I didn't get to hit the end of that shit from Darren. I could imagine. Yeah. You should have heard what I was what saying on the other the side. Kicker fucking tell you. Yeah. You weren't. You weren't on my side of it. You should have heard of the shit I was talking. I mean. I was one oh, he, he, gone. oh, he's he gone. Two. He's gone. Cut oh, back. Nope. God. Who's in there? Oh, one. Oh, Get over oh, here. Get over here. <laughs> right there. What about What's that up? conversation right there? Right here. Yeah, it's about fucking to happen. Yeah, well fucking. Yep. Yep. Gotcha. <laughs> 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 What a moment. You got the quote Jackson about to run onto the field. Ricky Jean Francois. What? And then here's me and her. Boom. Me and Jarrell Freeman, Sergio Brown, yeah. Andrew Jackson in back there, Western Kentucky, Dante Moncrief. That was a hell of a crew. We had a squad there. That was Dog. the year we really did some shit that year. That Andrew Jackson guy right there, I think he's the hardest hitting human I've ever seen in my life. Really? Right there in the back. He had gold grill up top <laughs> and bottom. Once he found out that we could do the middle onside kick every play, he wanted to do it just strictly so he could Kill. torpedo yeah. person right in front. One of the most just like fuck it guys I've ever encountered in my entire life. Loved everything thing about him.
Why? Let's go. This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? What the fuck? Oh! AJ, oh! Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our humble abode. The Thunderdome. On this MLB opening day, Thursday, March 30th, 2023, Hour 2 shall start now. Baseball! Is a sport. Hell yeah. yeah. In America. That's right. Amen. That people certainly know exists and has known that it exists for a very long time. But right now, baseball is in the middle of a resurgence. With the interest level of the World Baseball Classic, now it's being followed by a better brand of baseball. This year could be the year that baseball catapults itself back into relevancy. Uh -huh. Hell yeah. Good luck to the Toxic Table at Boston Connor. More specifically, at Ty Schmidt today as the Yankees oh, yeah. take on the Giants. The Giants. Right now, I think it's happening. Yeah, it is. Baseball could become a relevant sport again. That's a big deal. Quicker? Too. Yeah. I think everything Huge. about it could become great. 2,430 games, though. People are going to forget that they like the sport. By the time we get 1,000 fucking games in, we realize we're nowhere near halfway yet. Nope. We still got another 200-some games to get to halfway point. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of the sport. Jet Passon said, give me 5,000 games. I agree. Yeah. Saw him go 6 to midnight as soon as I mentioned the number again. 2,430 times baseball teams will step on the field mm -hmm. and play this year. Yep. And then at the end, it'll come down to potentially one game. Potentially. On whether or not you'll get into the playoffs or not. And then it's a series, and then we're off and running. Then we're talking about baseball again. Mm -hmm. right? Well said. These games are going to be quicker. There's going to be more highlights. What? There's going to be more runs. What? The pitchers are going to be able to do more things. What? This is going to be the best year of baseball. One half of the hammer. Damn. Cowboys, 10 digs. Do you agree with that? I can find no arguments with that, Pat. 2,430 games is so many fucking games. Absurd. On the stage, in the studio, for 14 years was an NFL quarterback. Had 16 games through his career, I believe. The NFL has moved to 17. What? They're going to move to 18. What? They'll never be able to get to that type of number. But 2,430 games is a lot of fucking games. Pac-Man Jones, don't you agree? Uh, totally agree. Could you imagine that? That's so many. How do you stay up for every single game? Joining us now is a guy who... If he had to, 2,430 football games, he'd lead with his forehead every single time. That's right. He'd stay up for him. No concussions documented on this college football national champion, Super Bowl champion, Ryder Cup champion. Absolute stallion of a father in Ohio of 10. Mm -hmm. Almost has as many. I don't watch that Waco stuff. Oh, yeah. Wild. Pretty nuts. Wild. Just finished it last night. The first half. What were you going to say? I was going to say, well, him and his wife might potentially have the same amount of people that are in the Davidian compound. compound down there sure. at Mount Carmel. Oh, COVID survivor, A.J. Hawk. Yeah. A.J., we know you're trying to create your yes. own cult down there, obviously. Mm -hmm. you and Look Laura. at both guys here, man. And we, exactly, <laughs> yeah. we very much appreciate that your two families have come together in the state of Ohio. The ultimate Ohio fucks are being created over there, and the state of Ohio is very good in your family. Did not mean that as a shot. I meant that as a good thing. You know, the Davidians had ended very, 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 sure. very poorly. Yeah. Very. Yeah. Worst case scenario. scenario. I took it as a compliment that you were comparing me to David Koresh. Absolutely. <laughs> as you <laughs> said. What? Because of conviction? I mean, I, don't, I, mean I have no other way. It's, I, I, don't, I choose to not be offended by your comment. Okay, thank you. As long as everybody knows that, I didn't mean it as a fan. I meant like, hey, you got a lot of kids. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of kids running around that house, house over there. He's very busy. Impossible to get a hold of. Oh, my God. You he, kidding me? He's a, it's impossible. That's because he's busy. And we get an opportunity to speak to him every single day. And we're very lucky for it, AJ. We appreciate you. It's great to see you. Let's dive into some things we've already talked about before T. Higgins joins us here in a few moments, uh, potentially. Baker Mayfield was allegedly being kind of talked to by the Baltimore Ravens. This is before the trade ask, I think, before the franchise tag of Lamar Jackson. What does this mean to you whenever it gets reported? And obviously, Sports Illustrated is a pretty, you know, deep history and sport yeah. company that I think seems like they have information that would, they would, yeah, I feel like Sports Illustrated knows. Yes. Mm -hmm. So let's assume that this is being true because it is reported. What does that say to you? For me, it says... Okay, there's a chance Lamar Jackson's not going to be here. We need to have two quarterbacks. We got Snoop uh, Huntley, who obviously mm -hmm. made a Pro Bowl. Wasn't like 
obviously first string pro mm-hmm. bowler. No. But they won some games, played some football, and he's a player that it seems like everybody likes on the team. And then we need a veteran quarterback because Lamar not, might not be here. Is that what you read into that? Is that how you heard it? And what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, I, I took it honestly as, yeah, if Lamar goes down for some reason when he gets back here, we would like to have somewhat of an experienced veteran. And Baker does that. But you're right, with Huntley there, it doesn't quite make sense. But what was the deal they were offered him, too? Like, it couldn't have been crazy. It would have had to be lower than – we'd assume it would be lower than what he was offered at Tampa Bay, even mm-hmm. though Tampa, Florida, has other perks that maybe Baltimore doesn't have. Like, for instance, maybe Lamar Jackson there and Huntley there. Down in Tampa, it's a vastly different situation where he wanted to prove it opportunity for, like, $4 million or $5 million, yeah. up to eight potentially. Mm-hmm. To, uh, to be a starter again. It's just fascinating. It's kind of another rick, ripple effect of this whole Lamar Jackson, Baltimore Ravens situation because he asked for a trade. They were already seemingly planning for him maybe not to play. Oh, we got a little bit of a barn burner kind of brewing here. And will anything surmount from all of it? I have no idea. Yeah, I still just – I don't think it makes any sense to think that they would go after Baker if the, there wasn't a thought that, hey, we're not going to have Lamar next year. Like, you're not going to go after Baker – to be a third-string quarterback when you already have a guy who went to the Pro Bowl, and yeah, you can argue that he didn't deserve to go to the Pro Bowl or whatever. Whoa, whoa, whoa! And dude. then, and then thinking that Lamar's still going to be there, like they're operating under the assumption, hey, we got to figure something out because we're not going to have Lamar next year. So what's Baltimore without Lamar? It's it's Huntley, right? And then Huntley, yep. And then he'll just have to prove himself, and he's, then he's got a one-year, two point six million dollar contract next year. Oh, so they'll be in the exact same situation. Yeah, place is on fire. My Baltimore. Oh, it does. It feels like Lamar Jackson's not going to play football next year. Because by now, wouldn't you think a team would have already offered him something that he would want to do? What are your thoughts on the pack? I don't want to say that he wouldn't play football because we haven't seen nobody as far as thirty-two and a half million a quarterback a that set out an entire year that was getting franchised. Yeah. Um, but we already know Baltimore is. is sh- is sugar with Lamar and shit without him because it shows. Like it don't matter that that's not a plug in system where you could just plug a guy in and you can have success. Um, that whole offense is built around Lamar. Now listen to this conversation that we had earlier today. Obviously, Lamar has the capability to be a dog with his arm if he needs to. There's a little read, a little outside read with a uh, end around happening where he was able to take it. Imagine and. Kyle Shanahan spoke about his quarterback situation um, out at the league meetings, and he ended it with saying, like, we would trade John Lynch, potentially, if the deal was right. We'll listen to talks for everything. Here's Kyle Shanahan breaking down their quarterback situation, which we kind of brought Lamar into afterwards. Kind of fun to think about, though. Here's Kyle Shanahan speaking about how the Niners are looking at the season with their three quarterbacks that they currently have that could be great, and also how they view the entire roster as a whole. I mean, I feel feel in a very good situation at quarterback to where – we went and drafted a guy that we really wanted, and we don't feel any different about him now than we did three years ago. We took just it's been unfortunate he's not hasn't gotten a play. Um, he was going to get a play this year, and I think people were going to be very impressed with him. So we, but that unfortunately got hurt. Now we sit here, and that opened up opportunities, and we got another guy who can play very well. We got the Sam Darnold who can play, and <clears throat> I hope all three of these guys are with us, and I don't want to lose any of them. But. We'll listen to anything. It's just like, we'll listen if someone wants to trade for John Lynch. And if someone wants to trade for me, I'm sure John Lynch will listen. Uh, we'll listen on anything, but our goal is always to see how good we can make our team. And we feel we're in a very good situation at quarterback right now, not just with three guys who are capable of being starters, but we also got three guys that have allowed us to build a very good roster. And I feel any of those three, with how our roster is, can get in, play at a certain level, stay healthy. I think we can win with any of those guys. So Shanahan, so Shanahan talks about his confidence in him, but that that line about with these three guys to our roster, we're able to build. Brock Purdy was Mr. Irrelevant. You, his contract is vastly different mm-hmm. than somebody who's a first-rounder. If he comes back and has success, we chatted about this, they're going to have to pay him probably after year two, and he's going to want a big deal, especially if they have great success, and they're not going to want to pay a guy going in his third year what a fifth year. I mean, that is – that's a whole situation that's brewing in the future that they hope that they have to kind of address because his contract is nothing. That's like league men almost for young people. Then you got Trey Lance. He's a first-rounder, but he's still on his rookie contract. Sam Darnold, I don't think they had to pay much to get him. Nope. So whenever you talk about the contract sizes, they can spend money everywhere else. 
Them also talking about how much he said we. Sounds like Shanahan is definitely a part of a lot of the decision making. He said, like, if somebody wants to call about John Lynch, like, we'll listen. If somebody wants to call about me, I'm sure John Lynch will listen. Like, I'll remove myself from the situation. I'd be a little bit too close to the sun to have it. They're doubting. Could you imagine Lamar Jackson as a San Francisco 40 fucking Niner dude? Could you imagine that? I mean, we, we yeah, start talking Kyle about Kyle Shanahan and that defense. Yeah, yeah. I could. It'd, it'd be pretty amazing to watch, but I don't know how probable this is going to happen. Is there a chance? Or are you just trying to float it out there? No, we're just saying they would listen to anything. They <laughs> yeah. Say. So they probably talk about everything, yeah. right? If they listen to anything, they probably talk about everything. I Trey would Lance, like Brock Purdy in the trade. Yeah, Trey so Lance Lamar's for sure. Over there. Well, I don't know. Like, this has not been alluded to by anybody but us yeah, yeah. while we're on CBD just earlier. Right. Right. Just spitballing. We're just spitballing, you know, because Aaron Rodgers, people are like, is he going to end up back in San Fran mm. now that there's a potential chance that he's available? And with the way the Niners operate, like, They've been very open. Like, we listen to, like, a uh, guy from Philly, he's in on everything. Howie Roseman. Howie yeah. Roseman's yep. in on anything. Brandon Bean said he's like, I'm calling about every situation. There's some GMs that are just in on everything, and John Lynch seems to be one of those guys. And more and more they talk, they're like, we talk about everything. We try to explore every option to make our roster as good as it could be. They had to have had a brainstorm session about maybe having Lamar. Could you imagine Shanahan oh, thinking about oh drawing God. up plays? I want to be fair. Oh, my fucking word. Like, just... Obviously, he'll be able to make all the throws that you would have to make in that style of offense. I mean, they've passed the ball eight times in a fucking NFC Championship Ooh. game and won the game. Yeah. But him just being an added running back, whenever they have uh, wide receivers playing running back, fullbacks playing running back, and tight ends playing running back, yeah. and the designs happening, there where the ball, nobody has a clue where it's coming from. Leverage and misdirection is you. This is just like you think about that and you're like, holy shit. The Niners might get, are they going to get? And then you hear Niners fans say, well, Trey Lance doesn't deserve this conversation to happen. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, Jackson we're talking about Lamar Jackson here. Do the, do the Niners have anything to give up, though? I doubt it because they spent all their first rounders. Well, and Trey Lance has, I hate to break it to, no value to anyone, anymore, anywhere. That's the only sell they have, too. Hey, we got a young guy who's Trey Lance who can, you know, kind of move around. He was good in a couple packages, and he's 22. You think they're having these conversations, though, AJ, at all these places about potentially having Lamar Jackson, you think? I think so. I think they. I would hope that these teams at some point sit there and like, hey, like there's different times when they all sit around with the people they trust. Like, hey, let's float some ideas out there. There's no bad ideas. Like, hey, I'm not going to get mad at anybody or say you're stupid or let any of this leak, but let's try to figure some stuff out. Throw some stuff at me. Hey, nobody's bringing an umbrella to the brainstorm. <laughs> That's right. Okay, let's, uh, let's just hear some I No ideas, bad ideas. Some ideas might get passed over quicker than others, though. <laughs> like, you know, that type of situation. Yeah. Hey, I, I assume they're doing it in Colts. Right? After, yeah, you know? oh, yeah, especially after no what doubt. Ballard said. I assume. Before overall. Hey, Ballard did say some shit now, he didn't did. he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, no stone unturned pretty much is what he's saying. We're not closing the door on anything. Zach Kiefer told us that the other day on Feel the Beat, but actually from the horse's mouth and everything else going on. Then you got to combat that with Jim Mersey saying, I'm an owner, brother. I don't want anybody to have fully guaranteed mm -hmm. contracts. I think it's bad for the league. I don't think it's good at all. Is that a direct public negotiation with Lamar Who? happening, you know, because that's how we've been learning about Lamar's angles on stuff. Like, are the Colts interested? Are they just going to go through the draft, see who's available at four? They don't get somebody they like? Boom, we take yeah. Tannenbaum, you know. Sure. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. We trade up to get Will Anderson or sure. whatever instead of a quarterback. Uh, so, you know, I, I think there's teams that are still in play. How I'll just how, be, who knows how to work out. How we know he won't fool a guarantee. We don't know we what don't know that. Lamar no. won. We don't know that Lamar, at all. Lamar, if you could do us one favor... Write us a tweet. Tell us what the contract was that they offer you, or just tell us what you want. Yeah, or tweet it out. Just tweet out, like, uh, you know, because he was he was putting to bed everything else. You're telling me for 12 sure. weeks, yeah. I didn't think about money, and I did, like, and then I just decided late in the season, all right, I'm going to think about money now. I'm not going to play. He said, stop saying I sat out for money. Like, that's, that's bullshit. Stop saying that I get hurt. Like, that whole thing... It, their facility got an F minus or something. Yeah. yeah. And rehab facility, recovery, Training everything like that. Right. Real deal. That's a real weapon. Some teams really try to take advantage of and some don't. So like he said a lot of things now, just like he kind of alluded to it, right? He said one thirty three wasn't enough. Yeah. Right. Yes. But that that's that was it. But then they it. had the weird wording for the other what ones too. Like the what if it's over two years was higher. Yeah, what if it's just a two year hundred mil? And he's like, Bam, I'm getting back to free I'm getting to free agency when this cap continues sure. to go up. Maybe they, they work it out that way somehow. Yeah, have they done any – have they talked to any teams that have pitched ideas? You know, How much are they talking? To, that's what I want to know. Throughout every team in the league, how much, like, how much conversation has gone on about teams exploring right, exactly. trying to bring him in? And what's the number? Because obviously it's talked about amongst the owners what the number is. 
What they think the number what, is. What they think the number is. And there's one GM potentially telling another GM, like there's a chance that the Ravens GM mm -hmm. is saying to another GM, like we offered him um, this, he didn't want it, he wanted guaranteed money because they're talking to each other every day, business-wise. Yeah. yeah. Hey, what's the holdup? You know, other GMs are calling going, how come you guys haven't been able to get a deal done? They're really the the informant of information, the people that weren't They're paranoid too, though. They're super paranoid, just like coaches. So I would imagine, even though they have close relationships with a lot of different GMs, True. they're still very guarded and throwing out smoke signals too all the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've experienced but, that in the current conversations I, I'm in right now. When Izzy came out and said what he said about what the oh, Ravens yeah. owner said the other day, it didn't look like they was hiding too much of shit. Yeah, he said right. that upset the owner <laughs> yeah, a little better. Watson. Yeah. The Watson. Is this the yeah, normal The Watson outlier. contract being totally – Fully guaranteed. Our owner was highly upset with it. He don't believe in it. Yeah, he said on Bernie Kosar yeah. and Hilton Banford. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah, sure. Me. Bickford? Hilton? Bixford? Oh. Are, we sure it's, are we sure Hilton is the first name? It's in Ohio. Why don't you tell us yeah, the answer? You yeah, you should know. Hey, okay. Cleveland. I think Bernie's a legend. I love Bernie growing up. We yeah. love Bernie, too. Bernie did not steal the show in this particular clip that we no, saw. No. Hanford Dixon. Hanford Dixon. Dixon. God Dixon. damn, dude. That's You're a tough so one. Close. My brain, so the way my brain operates is it just, as soon as I see somebody, I just associate it with somebody I've already met whenever I was, you know, like growing up through my life. Mm -hmm. So whenever I run into people, it's just like that person pops up in my brain. Normally, remember people's names. I ain't never fucking met a ha Hanford hand. Nope, Hanford. That's Hanford. gonna be a tough one, dude. Fucking, yeah. That's gonna be a tough one. Strong to remember. Name. It's a great name though. Yeah, and Fantastic. his laugh. I mean, moving forward, you just you gotta just know that's the Hanford Dixon laugh because he w he fucking lost it. I can't remember what was said. He but was talking about the owner. Man. He was. With he Ozzie. was. Yeah. He he stole the show. I mean, you're almost thinking mm -hmm. for a second. Who's this guy on the left? That, That's oh, Bernie Kozar. Oh. Holy shit. Because oh. Hanford Dixon's stealing the show here. Hey, and we appreciate them getting that quote because you're right, Pac. They did kind of inside voices leaked outside voices almost, you yeah. know, because nobody had really publicly mm -hmm. said that the owners have stayed completely away from the conversation yeah. about guaranteed contracts. Other than Ursa saying, I don't like it, brother. Mm -hmm. And he, he actually said, as an owner, I do not, mm -hmm. which is almost telling the world, like, of course I don't fucking... You yeah, know? how could I? Of course I don't. But then obviously Ozzy's saying that this happened and then it's like, okay, now we're starting to hear like definitely it's a conversation and how could it not be? Yeah. You know, if you had <clears throat> modus operandi for so long yeah. to be these deals that this is how the percentage that's guaranteed, this is what is incentive based, this is how it goes. We bump it up as the money continues to get bigger. This is just how it goes in this whole thing. And then, bang, a guarantee happens out of nowhere above everybody. The owners, you would think they'd be like, hey, this hurts all of us. Mm -hmm. We're going to try to keep it what it was. They were able to do a Tyler. They were able to do a Russell. Mm -hmm. yep. Who knows what's going to be able to happen here with Lamar, but we don't even know if that's what Lamar wants. So business-wise, you can understand why the owners are doing what they're doing. But also, one of them just has to be like... We'll take the MVP, just yeah. like Haslam did exactly. with Deshaun, right? Yeah. They were out of the conversation. Then he said, fuck it. We want him. $230 million guaranteed. Someone. Tell him whatever he wants. He's not going to play 12 games. Fuck. Doesn't matter. Whatever. We got a guy who can play quarterback for the first time in a long time. We had a quarterback that won a playoff game for us, and everybody hated him. And he yeah. got hurt and I, ran over I, Jay out I, of town. I thought that would be Carolina because Haslam's a new owner who's, who's desperate. Tap. New owner, I don't know. A lot of money. Kind of, who could be a lot of money? Could be. I thought it was gonna be Carolina, but it doesn't seem like that. It. Offense doesn't feel like it's the. You know what I mean? Frank. <sighs> I don't know if Frank Reich's running that offense. No, no. You got Thielen. You got Thielen now. Miles Sanders. Hell yeah, DJ Chark. Hey, Matt, Matt Ryan, Defense is good. Aiden Hurst. Yeah. Matt Ryan and Phil Rivers could fucking move. And and Wentz when he had those two broken ankles, he could. Move. He was all yeah. over. How do you run? How do you run again, Pat? Who? Carson Wentz. <laughs> he just had fucking two ankle boots. He had two boots on. He just got to gotta fucking pop around. Like stilts. You're literally bopping heel to heel. Mm -hmm. There's some breaking news out of a sport that we never talk about. Oh. Aaron Judge hit a dinger. Hell oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Already. Yeah. Already. Oh. We can't run this at all on the show. They will shut us down quicker than anybody. The MLB knows how to ex get exposure. Baseball should not do that. No, yeah, well, they will. Yeah, they will. If we run this right here, Manfred would actually Let's go. hop into the algorithm and would. stop our entire company. I do believe that is how they hit. Allegedly. Yeah, Please, baseball man. is the worst for all hot. Like wow. basketball, get away with it. Golf's baseball like that will too, take right? you down. Oh yeah, golf. Yep. Go oh yeah, mm -hmm. golf so will get your ass too. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, I did, I did fight back. You, you smacked hmm. him right in the mouth. I didn't. I just said that nobody's watching for the golf in this particular video. Yes, your golf is on in the background, but this video is not being watched because <laughs> of that. Yeah, it's irrelevant. You know what I mean? Like, this is, and I think there's something. They lifted that strike real quick. Yeah, they did. I actually won. Yeah. And then I had, uh, then I, it opened the door with the golf yeah. people. It was mm -hmm. a good one. But I was not, like, thrilled. I'm like, come on, bro. Come what on. What are we doing here? Promoting it. What are we doing? Well, it was a great moment. It was. You know, when I start doing those videos of me commentating over stuff, there's some times where I'm just, you know, <laughs> might take my Advil PM. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. In a spot. What? Maybe some vitamins. What? Maybe a Bud Light. What? what? And there's some times where I really get rolling, and I'm just like, oh, yes, this is awesome. The internet is made for this moment. Mm -hmm. And I try to, like, go and make it as much and as possible. And some of them go, bro. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that one went yeah. quick. And they were not happy that no. that was going as quick as it was going. Not at this all. This cannot be what everybody's seeing from our tournament is what they said. So I actually understood where they were coming from as well. You know, it was like, uh, I apologize. It was a nice moment. It was a nice, I don't think baseball has had any of those moments with anybody ever. I think they take you, they take you down. There isn't like a, hey, we understand what you were trying to do. Like golf did that with me. Mm -hmm. I think it was like a good moment. Baseball, I think they're very much like a take that shit down. And don't, we don't want anybody to, we don't want anyone to see our product. Is that what yeah. they're saying? Don't promote it. Dude, it's an interesting balance. Like the NBA has this issue right now, right? Because yeah. the ratings are allegedly low, but on social, it's fucking huge everywhere. So, like, if the NBA was to cut down on social, I think they would become irrelevant because nobody's really watching the television games or whatever. So, they need the social. But also, they have to, like, figure out, and maybe they have. I don't know. I don't pay close enough attention. I just see the highlights. They need to figure out how to profit from the digital space that they're dominating, you know? Because, like, yeah. NBA has great Twitter, Instagram. I mean, Unbelievable. NBA, huge. I would assume TikTok were never really on their snap as well. Like, all that shit is huge. Every player is his own brand. It's like yeah. a... Huge thing, but the TV ratings aren't what they are. They just got to kind of figure that whole thing out, and I think they'll be able to do that. Well, and it's like the same thing with baseball, like the as as basketball, like the the clips like that are really what drive all the engagement. You know, like if you're watching a basketball game, like oh, there's a lot of just like 15 foot jumpers that guys are making and stuff like that. But then you see, you know, LeBron having a, a massive dunk or Aaron Judge hitting a 500 foot home run, like. That's the shit that's going to get, you know, millions and millions of views on Twitter. So you would think that they would be like, hey, that's fine. Let's disseminate this to as many people as we can. And hopefully people will see that and be like, you know what? I'll go check out, you know, the Hold third on. inning of this game. So let's talk about this. Okay. Let's do some brainstorming for said sports. Here we go. So you just have to have the commentators know in a moment when a moment's happening, <laughs> drop in. Mm -hmm. Like, hey. Oh, bat like a red zone? No, almost? like as they're calling the play almost. You know, they should have the MC oh. like back like in the as they're ball. calling okay. the play well, almost. And that's know? but that's what's tough with like baseball and with basketball is like, you know, I mean that's the first first inning, his first at bat of the game, or like in, in basketball, like having the wherewithal to be like, okay, there's six minutes left in the third quarter, like and just knowing like as something's about to happen, like, oh, okay, I gotta step this up a notch because this is gonna no, be No, not massive. step it up a notch, just be like uh that home run provided by just in the call. Oh, okay. You know, you could drop the uh, ads in Sketchers. those moments. Brought you that home run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you could you could add those. People would love that. You think people would really like that? The old no. school baseball people? No, but also you can mute it and everything. But I think just like how do you sell to your advertisers, right? Like, yeah. hey, this is how we could do it because the TV rating is what they sell on. Mm -hmm. And it's like they're not getting anything from the. Yeah, they're not as high. Bro, the only thing I follow on the NBA is the internet. Like, yeah, and they get millions of views on the. Who's internet. doing highlights? Who's doing highlights? Yeah. Oh, Luca had a fucking hell of a month. Yeah, That's I mean, all I know because I seen his ass <laughs> in my timeline. Jaw dunk. Boom. Yeah. Jaw went missing. Yeah. Yes. Jaw's back. Like that's how I literally just kind of follow along with it. I think baseball is going to have to figure. This. I don't know why. Maybe we'll be. Able Those to sound it. sounds like it's going to be more exciting though, from what Jet said. Yeah, maybe they're evolving. If maybe we'll quicker. be able to get some. Maybe we'll be able to. Is going to be more words. homers though? Is this going to cause more homers? Because that's what we need to get people involved. Yeah, juice the balls. Bring back the juice balls. Juice the guys. Juice, juice the, guys. the guys. Juice oh. the balls. 
What do you think? He said juice the guys. He doesn't care about player safety at all, this guy. Ridiculous. Juice the guy? No, I was AJ. Yeah, I'm like saying that. do it in the do it in a safe well, manner, I guess, I mean, or whatever. But with personally. a doc. With a doc. I, right? yeah. I want the juice in baseball. I don't want it in, like, daycare workers. That's not where I want my steroids. Amen, brother. Who? That was, that was doozy. doozy by way of Tom Brady. Uh -huh. I, that was AI Tom Brady. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we listened to the hour set. Bro. It's unbelievable. Tom Brady's got <laughs> AI Tom Brady's got He's good. Bang. Timing, too. Yeah. Yes. yeah. A lot of I mean, AJ would like to. Look out, Chappelle. And he just powers right through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just boom. It was one after another. He's like Mitch Hedberg. Right. Yeah. It's just bang, 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 Doesn't bang, stop. bang, joke, joke. So now you can't believe anything, can you? Any video you see, you can't no. believe anything you ever see, huh? So, I mean, the first thing you think of is like, okay, Tom should literally just have an AI write his stand up. Yeah. Yep. It was and really it, good. Yeah. It was unbelievable. And then he sounds just like him. Sound exactly. It's all stuff he said, though, right? Don't they take it from all stuff that you've said publicly? I don't know. No. He was talking about the diarrhea. The yeah. creator, the the creator murder, watching, you, uh, watching you poop and jerking yeah, off. Yeah, a lot of so. shots at Arby's. Uh -huh. Yeah, Arby's awesome. took two massive shots yeah. early in like the first. Do they, do they sponsor his podcast? So like, there's another thing. AI could get richer than us too. They could take up all the ads. True. Which they are kind of already are. Mm -hmm. Let's slow that down, like Elon said. Yeah, it's a good move. <laughs> Let's slow that. Mm -hmm. Let's slow. Did you see that, AJ? <laughs> oh yeah, he's he's worried, huh? Yeah, I mean, six months stop. They want to stop development on AI for six months. We need to catch up, okay? They're starting yeah. to, you know, how the tortoise and the hare thing. Yeah. These computers are real dumb for a long time, weren't they? Us humans, we were so much smarter, so much smarter, so much smarter. We've gotten to a point though where this hare has learned how to fucking run, yeah, mm -hmm. much faster than we could have ever imagined, and it is already passing us. We need six months just to catch up, and then what? They're going to put a pause on it like every other year? I was exactly. Say, How's this even? Why six month pause? This is like a two week inside, right? They're not pausing. Yeah. Why would anyone pause just because Elon told him to? You think people are going to stop? It was also Steve uh, Wozniak, mm -hmm. yeah. I believe. Yep. Oh. Cats out of the bag, bro. They ain't stopping. I think There's Ballmer nothing they can do too. now. Ballmer said it, too. I don't know. It was pretty good. That might be too good. That Tom Brady thing? <laughs> yeah. Legit. Kind of scary. Look at yeah. the Tom uh, Tom Cruise deep fake dude uh, is really good too. Haven't you seen him? He looks like him, talks like him, all that. He's like a doppelganger. Yeah. Great one though. Great he one. Is. If Tom ever needed a stunt, which he would never. No, he would not. We understand he would We've never done do this. Uh -huh. We don't even need to go there. That's the next step. If this guy really wants to like try to fool people, go fucking jump off a cliff. Ten times. Exactly. Yeah. One day. In one day. Keep doing it. And then I'll be like, oh, whoa, is that Tom Cruise? I'm, I'm not sure. All right, let's go to the 500 phone line. We've talked enough about stuff that we don't know enough about. But I feel like we do know. Hey. We definitely know. Look at us. I think we added to, we contributed to society in the mm -hmm. conversation. Absolutely. And check out Dudesy, because it is fucking hilarious. Yeah, and also you're supporting Will Sasso, which right. we should all do. Yeah, exactly. Everyone's. Much mana. Much, much mana. Much mana. Much mana to Will Sasso. Mm -hmm. AJ, you know Will? I don't know him personally, but I've been a fan for a long time. Me too, man. Yeah. He's the best. His Italian. Oh. oh. Mm -hmm. He does a lot of good impressions. His he rock. Arnold. He does Arnold. I remember he did Arnold back in the day. He hasn't pulled that one out, I don't think, in a no. long time he, on the internet, at least. Yeah, right. He's got an Adam Sandler. You yeah. know Will Sasso Pack? No, I don't. All right. You're missing out. You are. Much mono, who's? <laughs> Much mono. <laughs> <laughs> How about him doing The Rock? Oh, my God. I, I don't know why he hasn't brought it back. It was such a home run, but maybe it's I like, wonder if he thought it was maybe disrespectful yeah, to The Rock. Yeah, potentially. Because as I, I was think. looking at it, I'm like, this is hilarious. And then I didn't want The Rock to think that, like, I'm <clears> laughing the at The Rock it. loves it. The Rock loves it. He has to. He gets it. Does I, he? I agree. Does he's he? not saying, like, terrible things about The Rock, is he? No, he's just kind of hitting kinda all the classics. Off his yeah, yeah, all the classics, <laughs> which we do all, every yeah, day true. as well. It's a compliment. It's a compliment. It is a compliment. We love The Rock, dude. Terramana, he pulled it out of a bag at the oh, restaurant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did. Did you see that? Yeah, it yeah, was frosty too, though. It was a, it was frosty like it'd been in the freezer. It was one of those like uh, meal oh, with prep. filler things. Yeah, with a cooler in the it. Insulated. Oh. He does not he was, pour. He does not do light pours either. Dude, he hammers Terramana. Oh yeah. Does, yeah. Have we seen him finish? Yeah, he, he does it on a live. Mm -hmm. He'll do the full. He was doing pop. shots before the Oscars. Everything that. of mana. I love that. Guy. He yeah. should be. He's having a good time. Yeah. yeah. Joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, is a man who's probably having a better time than he's ever had. Just changed his number. Also going into a contract year for the Cincinnati Bengals. An absolute dog. dog of a wide receiver who was drafted at the first pick of the second round in the 2020 draft. Came into the league during COVID. Has been an absolute baller ever since. Wide receiver for the Bengals, T. Higgins. Yeah. Yeah. What's going on? What's hey, going on? Hey, we appreciate you joining us. Obviously, Pac-Man hit you up to join us. You are the man. Thank you for taking time, pal. 
Yeah, I appreciate y'all for having me. Where are you at right now? Where are we? Uh, are we back home? Are we in Ohio? Where yeah. are we right now? Yeah, I'm in Ohio right now. Nice. You changed. I had to come get some of those jerseys for my family. <laughs> okay, yeah, you changed your number. Big deal. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah, what went, what went into the process? Obviously, the number five is sick. You look awesome in the photos. We're probably going to move a lot of jerseys this year before the next contract comes in. Why did you make the decision, and how easy was the process? Well, I mean, uh, I was always number five in high school and college, so I just wanted to go back to, you know, keep the legacy going or whatever. But, um I tried to get it last year, but they they want me to pay way too much. Okay, so that's, <laughs> hey, that's still a thing, right? Yeah. That's that's still a thing. You have to buy out all the jerseys that they have right now, is what they said. Is that real? Yeah, that's real. How much? How much was it? What was the absurd amount of money? <sighs> Listen, it was about two fifty three. Are you two hundred fifty three thousand dollars? Or like you wouldn't change your number? I, 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 that's what I want to say. From from what I remember them telling me, yeah. That was a lot. Damn. Rookie contract. Yeah. Hey, yeah. You want to change your eyes? That's cute. I don't think yeah. so. Yeah. I, could, I, could, I could play at 85 another year. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the right play. Go ahead, AJ. T, how's that, uh, how's that new indoor facility? We got that nice bubble that everyone can see when they're driving by on the highway. Did that help you guys out this year? I feel like it did. Yeah, we had to practice in uh, su- such cold weather. Uh, this past this past season, It was we got some weather. So, um yeah, it was very helpful this year. So, You guys have accomplished so much so quickly. You're a young crew, right? You're going into your contract year, and obviously we all know the situation in Cincinnati. Where's your mindset? Where's your head at going into the year? Obviously, contract year is normally everybody's best year, and obviously it's a great time to prove to everybody how great you are, what you have done in an weapon-littered offense over there in Cincinnati. Where's your mind frame going into the season, and what are you thinking about? Yeah, right now I'm just preparing for the season. I'm not really uh, worried about the, the contract. Obviously, I want to get a deal done, but uh, I let my agent handle that. And, you know, right now just for me, get my body right for, for next season. Pac-Man has a question for you, T. Uh, t- a two-part question. What's up, my boy? Um, first, you have played in a lot of football games. Um, you guys have been to AFC Championship back-to-back what? years. What? That's a lot of games on the body. First, I want to ask you, how is the body? And second of all, how is it playing with Joe Burrow? To answer number one, uh, body feel great. Uh, just started back training. You know, uh, got my little vacations out the way. Uh, so just started training. Um, first day killed me. <laughs> uh, had to get all the toxins out, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, uh, playing with Joe, man, it's, I mean – he makes my job easier. You know what I'm saying? So, where'd you guys go? Beach? <laughs> where'd, you guys, where'd you guys go to the beach? Where are the toxins from? What we do for the off season? Oh yeah, definitely went to the beach. Um, kicking it to LA a little bit. Oh, uh, all the good stuff. I have a good time. Now you're back into it, and you know, whenever you have Jamar Chase there, okay, successful in college. Obviously, Joe successful in college. You were a national champion in college. It felt like the Cincinnati Bengals are building like a college locker room. Is that the feel? Is it like a co- – obviously, you've been nowhere else. But it feels like your team has really grown up together and have continued to remain tight. Is that an accurate assessment from the outside looking in? And why do you think it's like that? I mean, for sure. Um, I mean, the guys that we're getting, we just, we just want to win. And obviously, we started winning the past two years, and everybody's just coming more and more together as a family. And it definitely feels like a college locker room, for sure. You guys, guys are young. And so, I mean, we just, you know, just having fun. You guys play cards? What do we do? Cards, cornhole, ping pong? Ping pong. That's the game. Ping pong, cornhole. How are you? You uh, you compete or are you kind of watch on the side? All right. So, oh, listen, we got some we got some guys that some dogs in ping pong. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can run that one. I'm definitely going to put myself top five. I'm going to just say that. Oh, wow. really? How's McPherson? Oh, yeah. McPherson a player? He's pretty good. Yeah, he's pretty good. Oh, he's not. He's not top five, it sounds like. Who's so- one? You probably Joe. Is it go no, it go Trent Taylor. Okay. Joe Burrow or T B at number two. Uh, Mitch Wilcox is really good. Dog. Dog. Uh <laughs> it, it, so T B and Joe, you know, they Two what's, or three. What style? Are they going spin? Power? Are they a backboard? What's uh, what's their style and what's your style? See, my style, I, I like to play a little defense. So, you know what I'm saying? They they like the power hit and stuff like that. But, you know, I can't do all that. I just play defense. No, yo, you can get there. Yeah. Hey, come on. All you need is one. You I mean, hey, if the opportunity presents itself, of course I'm going to kill it. 
Of course. But, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's what you do. How about cornhole? You ever dance, uh, dabble with the bags? Oh, no, nah, yeah, I ain't no good with that. <laughs> you get your ass beat every day, you get run out? I get out when the uh, uh, Trent Irwin. Oh, hey, he's a cool dude, huh? Yeah, he cool. People's he, guy. Who's somebody on that team we don't know, you think, that should, we should? Um, Definitely Stanley Morgan. Who's you know that? Who's that? He's a, he's a receiver. He comes in, he... Play mostly special teams, but if you if you watch him on special teams, he takes it so serious. Like he he all about his business. And then we come in on offense, he does what he needs to be do does what he needs to do. So, dog Stanley Morgan, beast. absolute dog. How's he at ping pong? Not good. He getting there. Oh, he stinks. Up his game he stinks. A bit. Connor has a question for you. Yeah, T. The name is kind of lose me right now, but the pseudo the pseudo GM for the Bengals, um, Duke Tobin. Duke Tobin. Yes, he basically said like, yeah, a lot of people are coming at me to get T. Higgins. Guess what? If you want T. Higgins, go find your own fucking T. Higgins. How is it like <laughs> to hear something like that? And then also, is your agent saying like, hey, we heard what you said, so let's maybe bump that number up 10, 20 million. <laughs> I mean, yeah, man, it was good to, you know, hear him say that. Uh, make me feel like they want me here. And, man, hopefully we can get a deal done. Okay. Well, T, we appreciate the hell out of you joining us. What's the rest of the day look like? Uh, it's just an opening day. So uh, I'm going to go out there on the banks and, you know, have a little fun with the with people. Ooh, Big five. You a baseball fan, huh? Uh, they got to beat the Pirates, though. <laughs> the past few years, they haven't been winning. Listen, Pirates. they don't beat the Pirates today. They, that's Pittsburgh, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, T. Oh, yeah, they got to beat them. We got to right. For sure. Yeah, no doubt. They will. Shut up. Listen, man. the Pirates haven't been good for 20, 20 fucking years. T, how long? You said the uh, Reds haven't been good for two years. The Pirates have sucked for 20 years. Going to win today, though. Know that? Going to win today. They better. They better. Who, Cincinnati or Pittsburgh? Cincinnati, bro. Oh, Pittsburgh's got a, they got a head. They're swinging a hot bat right now. Oh, yeah. McCutcheon's back. Too. Not going to happen. <laughs> Look out. Back. Is that one chain? Uh, what, what do we have there uh, in the chain? That's a nice. Oh. oh, it's my best friend right here on the chain. You know what I'm saying? He lived through me, so. Hell yeah. He passed away not too long ago. Hey, well, rest in peace to him, and congrats to you crushing life. We hope you continue to enjoy it all. And I know you're not thinking about the contract or anything. We've thought about it a few times. Yeah. You're about to get paid! Yeah. Enjoy the hell out of yourself. We appreciate you, ladies and gentlemen, T. Higgins. Yeah. Sure, appreciate that. Hell yeah, man. That was a good chain. Yeah. That was yeah. a pretty good chain there. Good yeah. dude, huh? Yeah, laid back dude. He's, he's, he's one of a kind. How'd you meet him? Great dude. Well, when he first came to Cincinnati, um, I had a chance to meet him. We've hung out a couple of times. He come to the gym and train. Um, Your gym? Yeah. Um, but you still run the gym? No. Got out of that business? Yeah. Smart. Yeah. He catch mm -hmm. any balls over you? Uh, he's a big dude, bro. I don't think people know how big T is. Like, length. Um, yeah, lengthwise, like, and hands. Like, I, I have a video of him and Man Man together. Man Man just now outgrowing him, but T six five, I would say. Damn. Yeah. Man, man, big boy, man, man, yeah. That is Chris, six Little foot Chris. five yeah. freshman. Chris Henry, yeah. He runs four four. Yeah, freshman in high school. Yeah, Buck disgusting tape on Huddle. Okay, unbelievable. You should see how cool he is too. I got a chance during a Facetime to see him. Yeah, always looks so cool. It's like, oh, this guy's gonna make so much money playing mm -hmm. whatever the fuck mm -hmm. he wants to do. Dog. Absolute dog yeah. too, huh? What, what did he say, right? Yeah, he didn't want dog. to get taller because then he has to go play in the NBA. Yeah. yeah, he's 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 praying to God that he don't get two inches taller. It's not too many six eight receivers in the league. Uh -huh. We looked him up. AJ, why is that? What would you do? Because you guys just aiming for ribs with that head head of yours? Is that why? I don't know why. I mean, I think somebody could do it. Somebody could could be a six seven receiver. And I mean, maybe they have a little trouble getting off the line, being all lanky and tall. I don't know. Figure but it out. if anyone could do it, he could. He's a freshman at six five. Dominant. I can't imagine watching how unfair it must be to watch him play against high school kids. Bro, some of these high school highlights that you're watching, it's like, okay, the biggest guy on that field, the strongest guy on the field, the smartest guy on the field is also the fastest guy on the field. And it's like, that's some of these highlights at some of these places. It's like the, the guy who's bigger than the offensive lineman and the defensive lineman also faster than everybody else on the field. People put up some numbers. Yeah. Sure. I couldn't even imagine what Man Man is about to put up in Ohio because football matters over there, too. It's good football, right? Like, Oh, yeah, especially yeah. Cincinnati, yeah, no question. Yeah, they care. They care. It's big time. And they'll throw him the ball. 
and they'll take advantage of it. It's not mm -hmm. like he's just going to sit out there and be wasted. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Because we had a guy ran four three in West Virginia. I didn't fucking know. That's, That's right. right. Guy, he, freshman guy. I thought he thought he's brand new to the team. Now he's going to be like top two round, probably wide receiver taken off the board out of West Virginia. He's like, how do we lose so many games with that guy? Can we not just put him in a little bit of motion? It was similar to Dang. Florida, right? What? Yeah, the coach might be a don't know slap we, dick. What's your guys' don't deal? Know if the guy at the top is the right guy. In yeah. Charge. Why are they talking about Neil like that? We're trusting the climb over here. I'm back on board. Okay? Right? I put my hiking right. boots on. Not a whole lot of people want to, you know, take six years to climb Everest. But Florida you want to is do it spending in a money. Weekend. We're just now starting <laughs> to spend money, so that's a whole different conversation. What do you mean? Go on and uh, so what I'm saying on is players? Florida, Florida been spending money with NIL deal. We at West Virginia, we're just now starting to spend big money. Oh, we're just starting right. to figure out the game that Ohio yeah. State's been playing yeah. all these years. <laughs> Several huh. miles behind the eight ball. Wow. What do you think, AJ? They're all trying to catch up, man. That's the problem. But I guess I think what could happen, if, say like a West Virginia is trying to turn things around. What if you just took all your resources you had in NIO and you went after like this five-star recruit that you knew you probably weren't going to get? But you could lure him away, give him a couple mil, yeah, and start. then that kind of starts the process of that guy is a superstar, and then we let me surround him with some talent. Yeah, yeah that's what we want to do. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like easy. what Dion yeah. did. Yeah, that's what it's going yeah. on in Colorado right now. Yeah. We don't we don't know all the behind the scenes payments, yeah, but it does Dion, feel like Dion. five star in every single position yeah. at every single level is like, yeah, oh, fuck Colorado, never been. I heard it's beautiful. Bam. Yeah. Out there is Buffalo. They have no numbers on their jerseys first few days. And then they're probably going to do some damage. What are you saying, Todd? Well, that's the difference is Dion is, you know, uh, first ballot Hall of Famer, top of the top, and Neil Brown's a uh, hayseed with a bull cut. What's your so, problem? I, mean, I don't know what's what you feel. Is he really uh, oh, is this guy's true. Deal? I don't what know if I've seen problem? Neil Brown. Dude, obviously Ty hasn't either. That's not what Neil Brown is. That's kind of what he looks that's like. Exactly. Come on, Neil. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Yeah, all Good right, luck, Neil. Neil. For right, you. Can you define can you define what a hayseed is for somebody that doesn't know? Uh, if you just listen to someone talk with their their twang, you know you can probably say, oh, okay, this guy's probably a hayseed. Yeah, but I have a lot of friends that have a twang. Every once in a while, Tony has a yeah, twang. But I grew up around a lot of hayseeds. It's a term of endearment. It's not a <laughs> shot across the bow. I mean, let's get that straight. Well, that's like with. when I say old whites. It's not every older white person. It's it, a select group. Exactly. Bingo. You're saying hayseed is a select group of certain things for sure, which is certainly slanderous towards Neil Brown. Neil Brown didn't deserve that. I mean, look at that bowl cut. Boom. I guess you could call it a visor cut because he leaves the visor on and just says, hey, just snip around it. Boy, a little sweet, man. Hey, Neil, let's go. Does he? Got that mic. Got that nice mic on. We had a uh, special teams coordinator at the Indianapolis Colts who introduced to me the microphone. I'd never seen it before. Makes sense in theory, you know? Sure. Boy. There was a couple of tech issues, and I'll tell you what, there was not a lot of people that were with the shits as the tech issue <laughs> mm. was having, you know, certain like quarterbacks and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, that were doing their own thing potentially. Uh, sure. And then they're getting this guy blasting in their ear, and then a, you know, like the mm -hmm. shriek whenever oh, you get worst. too close or there's an echo. Yeah, take the fucking mic off. <laughs> okay. I've seen, but some coaches live and die by it. Yeah. Like some coaches, it's like their actual strategy. Need like it. Head coaches on the microphone for the whole head practice. Coach? I think so. Really? I think I've seen. Not like college practice. You've been to college practices. They have. I, I know they'll like be playing highlight films on the jumbotron. They have dudes doing like play by play, like they're they're an MC and event at college practices sometimes. For practice? Yeah, they doing that. Yeah, oh, yo, the, it was. It yeah, was, young wideouts looking good in seven on today. Like this guys, shit was real, amazing. Like where like they go from right here looking at special team helmet. Move the chairs right into the drills that they was had on the board. Boom. Everybody look up at the board. Look, you did this wrong. Boom, boom, boom. Run back through it. I thought that was with all the shit they got now. That seems pretty crazy. efficient. Yeah. 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 That seems very can imagine, efficient. Can you imagine, like, before we go out for team, we're in the defensive meeting room going over a certain set, AJ. It might be doubles or whatever. And then we go right on the field and go over those, those set – of plays and go back and watch them, I think that would be that would that would yeah, huge. That's cheating almost. Yeah, and you have all that time too. I think every single day, like it might not seem like much, but that all compiles and adds up all those reps. And then you all of a sudden you turn around, your defense, your team is really good, and you got eleven guys playing on the same page. I hear a lot of you super smart football people say like the walkthrough is normally the most important part of it all. I mean, I 
I, I might Huge be wrong. Part. Yeah, walkthrough is like normally like a massive piece of the learning it. You hear a lot of guys say, I got to do it and see it to kind of. Sure. So being able to have the film and the walkthrough. Final formation. Basically at the same exact time. I mean, that's like a weapon. Hey, that's what Neil Brown's fucking doing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Babe, Neil. Hell yeah, Prime Neil. starts this year. Hell, we've been climbing. Who, well, it was still at the bottom, though. Year. What's that? Who do they open up with? We got a fucking big one, dude. Probably Pitt again, right? All right. It's against Pitt Maybe it might. It's, it's Pittsburgh Panthers. Yeah. Is uh, that okay? Oh, Yikes. That's a big one. It's in Morgantown, I assume. You tell me that's yes, a rivalry it is. game. It is a rivalry game. Hell yeah, it's a big one. Shit, Bert. Yeah. We got to win that one. Beat us, <laughs> For the good of me. Let's yeah. do that. Yeah, let's get a win. You know, it'd be nice. Mm -hmm. It'd be nice just to be able to do that. Is Our jersey still there at Pitt? Yeah. He's a good coach, Chris man. Bickle? He's not just the head coach. He's the head coach presented by Chris Bickle. 19. Of class, the Pittsburgh Panthers. Class, class of 90, 90, 97. 93. Please, 93. 97. That's 97. The, 97. Sorry, that's the official oh. title of this guy. He's oh, the head coach. Oh, no. Good oh, luck. No. Week two tilt. Oh, good boy. luck. Okay, so we start with... Penn State at Penn State. Okay, uh -oh. happy foul. We are Penn State. They're all going to do that. Yep. Fireworks. AQ is going to be insufferable. You guys are going to start 0-6. No way in hell. We're you guys are going to start 0-6. We're not losing the we're Duke. We're the Dukes. And the Dukes? we're not losing the fucking Pittsburgh. Boom, we're 2-1 and one after week three, you fuck. Oh, what are you oh, even God. talking about? I don't know. You, you want to start Wait till you see what we do against Texas Tech, too. We ain't fucking worried about oh, nothing. We're home. we're home for three straight weeks. Look how comfortable the boys are about to get. The recovery is about to be bananas. You want to start your schedule with three PA schools? You guys aren't going to have anyone on the roster healthy. To All right. Yeah. Some tough guys yeah. coming around of Pennsylvania. There's a lot of tough dudes out of Pennsylvania on West Virginia. Virginia's team. TCU, okay. Good luck. Yeah, they lost. We're Duggan. fucking hot. We just got done beating Duquesne's ass, yep. Pitt's ass, <laughs> and Texas Tech's ass. And then all of a sudden, we're going down to the horn toad. Good luck, Sonny. Hate to break it to you. Mm. And then at Houston, I'll tell you what, we got it. We're good. That's we're that's climbing. Man, that's three. Yeah, that's, three, a three Dana, that's a Dana rivalry game. <laughs> In Houston, too. They got a lot of NIL stuff going on. Yeah, they'll be re ready to go. Damn, that's a, a lot of oil money. Uh, oil money down there. Right that's great. It's that, dangerous to Oklahoma State. Uh, which they ain't got any more players, right? Boy, they got a tough schedule. Yeah. 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 That might be the hardest schedule. They got SEC. All right. Oklahoma. Yeah, you're goddamn right. We're Big 12 football. What do you think this is? Ended up with Baylor? This isn't Big 10 where you just can stumble into a Northwestern on a Saturday, okay? This is the Big 12. You guys need to come into Big 10. That is. Well, allegedly, the Big 10 didn't want us. That's what I heard. Did you get BYU in the – no, not yet. No way. That's a non-conference game. BYU is coming to Morgantown, though. So much of the devil. We'll see, okay? <laughs> we will see. Right, Temptation yeah. could potentially arise. No offense to BYU. I understand you're very professional, especially at such a young age, because the way you live your life, Morgantown's a different animal. Yeah, it's so <laughs> Oh, it is, eh? I know they went down to East Carolina. Remember that? Yep. Sure. Or Coastal Carolina? Coastal Carolina. Coastal, 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 right on the be Myrtle yeah, Beach, uh -huh. right? They were in Myrtle Beach. Yep. yep. Thought to myself, oh, I wonder how they'll do in Myrtle Beach for the first time. Kind of looking around. Myrtle Beach got a lot of options. They don't even fuck with that because if they get caught, boom, honor code violation. Good, You're not a BYU Cougar anymore. Get you're the out. fuck out of here. And I know, and most people will probably never, ever give in to temptation. They don't. Know, especially in that religion. I'm Mormon. But every once in a while, you know, like Morgantown, you know, all you need is a couple people getting a little peeksy, you know, and all of a sudden we got maybe some inner team issues. They love bunk beds. What's that, pal? They love bunk beds. You can shake them, okay? Bingo. Right, what does that mean? Oh, if you. I'm sure if we were to piece this together, it would be something incredibly toxic. I would like to let the BYU folks know that I'm a fan. I am a big. Mm -hmm. Austin Cauley told me the entire breakdown. Not necessarily my religion, but I do appreciate the fact that it's your religion. Yeah, if absolutely. that makes sense. The breakdown of the religion or the bunk beds? He didn't tell you about soaking. So I've not heard about the bunk beds or soaking. Yeah. Soaking's not. What are the bunk beds doing? You, you get a, your roommate to shake the bunk beds, so soaking turns into sex. Yeah, no. I didn't know that. I didn't oh. know that part. What is this? Sex about I don't think yeah. I understand what you're talking about. They're, like, they're not allowed to have sex, so they just put it in, and then their roommates shake the bed. Oh, so it's like teamwork. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So they're trying to create an earthquake. Yeah. Whoa. I'm not doing yeah, it. Not yeah. <laughs> the universe. Holy shit, stop it. Okay. What a move. I mean, it is. She fell on me. What does it say? Necessity is the mother of ingenuity. That's and that right. seems like that is what they have figured out. Maybe the bunk beds are a thing. If it wasn't a bunk bed, it might be easier to move. But. Yeah. Normal bed, yeah. Yep. I mean. 
Either way. You tell me, just need a, just need a kind of, I mean. You need a sturdy base. Does he need a sturdy base? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Happy we're breaking down religion. Is that real? We do not know if that's real. I'm pretty sure. I'm 99.9. <laughs> I could see it. Earthquaking, of course, okay. A yeah. uh, variation of soaking. An unmarried Mormon couple go to the top bunk Boom! on a set of bunk beds. <laughs> the Mormon guy puts his penis into the Mormon girl, <laughs> but holds still because if he thrusted, that would be having sex technically. Don't move. Which Bingo. is a sin. A Hold! Third, a third person then gets on the bottom bunk and kicks the top bunk the so the couple can experience movement but they will be in the clear because it's not them doing the movement. <laughs> God told them it's okay if somebody's kind of kicking your ass while it's all kind of happening. Peter and Molly tried soaking but found it rather boring. So they asked their friend Jack to help them with earthquaking. Boom. Simple. Different levels. That's that's straight Makes out sense. of their book. <laughs> and then when they're done, they wash it down with an ice cold Coke. <laughs> that caffeine is bananas. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's new to me. Hey, BYU, doing their thing. That's how they roll. Hey. People are very creative. Yep. That is a good question. We do have if it's access in there, it to a counts, I feel like. BYU grad normally. Yeah, you call him right now. Should we? I think, is this something we should call and ask about? Might not. He might be doing you it. Gotta right ask. Don't mean to be disrespectful. These are just things that we have learned. In our, these are things that are happening in the real world. I'm, I just learned this today. Yeah. Yeah. There's a word for it. Let's call, question. Him. Let's call him and see what he's doing. I can't wait to drop him into this. He's, there's no way he even sees what's going on right now. He answers his phone, if he does. Mm -hmm. Being an off, incredibly yeah. good person. Boys, what's going on? Looking so cool. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to be like, hey, real quick, earthquaking. How are we doing it? When are we doing it? <laughs> Is that a thing when you were you in college? Kyle! <laughs> My guy. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> You're the man. You look so cool getting <laughs> after it. This is not a fake workout. This is a real workout. It appears as if that was real sweat, right? Yeah, I'm not trying to be like Will Compton and say 10.2. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa! You both get after it, obviously. You both are incredibly handsome, and you're both, you know, getting ready for next year's NFL season. That's right. Hey, we, we wanted to call and ask you. You're literally the only human that we could call and ask this question to. <laughs> literally the only one. Okay, so I, I want you to think of that as an honor. Okay, because it is. You want me to ask him? Please don't. Please, it's not the Asante thing. No! no. no. Well, no, 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 it's not that. Vastly different than that. Although it would be good to get your take on yeah. that at some point. Sorry, this is bad. that's bad lighting. My bad. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I don't know if you're going to want to. Okay. That's perfect. You look like an angel. That's great for this. Yeah. So, earthquaking. Is this a real thing that happens at BYU? Do you know what this is? Bunk yeah. bed. <laughs> is it, we just learned about it. Kyle, you're the only human we could call. Have you heard of this? Is this a lie? Is this all on the internet? What is this? I believe it's called soaking. Who's doing it? So soaking. soaking. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this, it is true. Yeah. It's a known thing. <laughs> hey, I don't know. I followed all the rules, bro. Oh, ah, smart. Oh, yeah, yeah, smart. Yeah, That's the type of guy you want on your team. That's right. All right. We. Oh. Hey, you know you're playing West Virginia this year in Morgantown. In Morgantown. Oh, that's going to be easy money. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you haven't been good. You haven't been good since uh, my guy Pat White, Steve Slayton, Noel Devine. And you were a punter. Yeah, so we were great. And we're hey, but they get after it, though. They're badass when it comes to, like, partying. But I don't know what that is. I went to BYU. Well, that's why it led to the soaking thing. I was wondering if there's a chance maybe some of the guys might give in to temptation a little bit in Morgantown. Gives us a shot. Because you guys, I would assume, are going to be ranked a much better team than West Virginia going into the season. Everyone is. I Relax. Uh, most. So. Please. We're trusting the climb. So I thought maybe a little temptation in Morgantown might be a weapon for us. Is that anywhere close to a real thing? Or is that even a thought for anybody on the team over there? I mean, honestly, it, it, it's in the back of our mind right now. I think we're just focused on spring ball. If you want to tune in, I'm actually doing the sideline reporting on BYU TV on Friday, doing the spring game and the alumni. I'm trying to be the next – Pat McAfee 2.0 on the sideline type video. So Hell yeah, dude. Let's go, Kyle. BYU TV, where is that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you think about how many people are going to be soaking while watching Kyle. <laughs> so many. <laughs> It'll be awesome. Go ahead, so, AJ. So many. So many soakers, dude, just soaking. So many. Kyle, what, were you, what was your, uh, what's your relationship like with BYU now? I don't know if this conversation changes anything for your Friday view. And also – I don't even That's want to awesome. actually. I can't even yeah. ask you a real question. The soaking part. So they <laughs> soak, and then they kick the person that lays in the bottom bunk, kicks the top bunk. I don't think that's 
good enough movement. Like you just be getting kicked right in your cakes. Like, why do you? Why would you do that, Kyle? They're doing that. I don't know. I didn't participate in that. That is. You ever hear anybody you know. do it? <laughs> now, Pat's acting. You might get something there. Yeah, Pat, Pat might be doing it right. <laughs> is that what it is? Um, it's a good win, this man. is all. This is, you would never do this, so you don't know, obviously. Mm -hmm. And nobody that the we've other ever. One, I think there's called that, and then there's like scraping zippers or like Whoa. fire, oh, like what? starting yeah. fires or oh, something nice. like Kindling. that. Kindling, yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah. All right, well, um, so I guess Morgantown won't be fun. an issue then. <laughs> Bunk beds yeah. though, might be a problem. Yeah, set them up. All right. But back to AJ's question, we can't yeah. just slide them no, off. No. I, I'm a little, you know, after the last couple of years or. My whole career, I haven't really been involved. Being on the East Coast, they play all the late night West Coast games. But this year, I was able to be on the West Coast in LA, and I got to watch a lot of the games. And you know, it was a little disappointing this year because, you know, as you at Ohio State, you were able to watch them in the national championship, and you had a little pride um, in a good way. I, I had a pride in a bad way just because how the guys played. Um, oh. You know, there's a little – this NIL money makes a little – I mean, I'm, I'm happy for the kids, but yeah. obviously you guys see this, them be a little spoiled at times. And so I think it creeps in a little bit. And you want them to represent the guys that have worked so hard for them to get where they're at today. And I think that's for Pat. I think that's for you, AJ, for all your alma maters, just to represent in a positive light and play badass football for the guys behind you that paved the way. Yeah, the style of football, I think, is something that, like, when we're watching West Virginia, too, it's like yeah. the way we would lose games there for a bit, it's like, and the way it would look, it's like, ah, that is not what we should be, It'd like, be as West Virginia. So I think it's like figuring that out and then also being able to recruit, which BYU's got monsters. Don't they you got, guys, you guys just have monsters everywhere. They like, got run on this year. Though, yeah, which, which, they, they, have, they have a good donor section for sure. <laughs> Just like Ohio State. All right, we apologize for taking out uh, time of your workout. Happy that you took No, a break. I just finished, so good good for you. Thank you. Hey, any more hole-in-ones? Any more hole-in-ones out there? Nah, I played like shit the last time yeah. I played Pat. Yeah, I'm just too. trying to get that consistency. I'm trying to get on that ACC tour like you and your boy right here and, you know, compete, compete. Hey, Kyle, I think uh, – they let me in there, so I don't know if you have to be that good at golf. I think it's just uh, you got to be lucky Long to down. know A.J. Hawk because he's been there for 16 years. Is that how many years it's been? I think like 12, 13. You guys, a steward like of the geez. fucking tournament. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Over a decade. Oh, gee. Only time I play golf all year. Yeah. Oh, only so, time I play golf all year, so, except for my simulator in my basement yeah. when I do play 36 I, I do holes. hit a couple down there. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And then, and, then, and then he's on the course with Aaron, too, you know, yeah. getting all the secrets. Kyle. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. You're 100% right. AJ hits a ball. 370, I think he hit yep. it up there at Lake Tahoe at the altitude. His driver. He swings. He falls while he's swinging. And you're like, okay, so at some point this guy is going to spray this into the trees or it's going to go the other way. He hits this fucker flush and it just goes forever. Three different of the people that work there and volunteer there, and there's a lot of good people that work at that tournament, uh, and I think they've probably uh, been doing it a long time. We heard three different people go, that's the furthest the ball's ever been hit on this hole. Yep. Like, is this every fucking year, AJ, or what's the deal? This guy's a golfer, Kyle. He's a golfer golfer. Sneaky, sneaky. Like, my handicap's a 16. It comes out and it shoots like well, a 10 handicap. He's one of those guys. Yeah. Bingo. That's a big part of the Bingo. conversation in the golf world. Yeah. I mean, that's yep. a big part of the conversation. We appreciate you, Kyle. Keep kicking ass, pal. Lesson. Hey. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, Kyle Van Noy. Yeah. yeah. All right. So you got to have a good, you got to have a good mate. Yeah. yeah, they need yeah. you. You can only you can only be the you're the only bottom bunk person that can get any work done. I was just trying to think like uh, how's this gonna go? You know what I mean? <laughs> and how tired are those legs gonna oh, get? Yeah, boy. you're putting in a lot of work. So tired. You need to you need to find out who in the crew grew up as a kicker. Hilly town. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, biking. Yeah, Jalen Hurts would be unbelievable at it. Boom. Yeah, yeah, maybe Scott the weight room. Yeah, yeah. see who's squatting what. Saquon Barkley. Just yeah, walk around. Look at dude's what if quad. You're fucking tired though. Like, 
Yeah, you're gonna hey, have to go quick. This yeah. is on you. Uh, hold so on. tired. I got a cramp. Yeah, I guess it's gonna be quick though, Pack. Remember, they're doing this just so they can have intercourse. I was gonna say they're not used to it, so they're probably shooting their goo pretty quick. Yeah. Which how could you blame them? Yeah, exactly. They're getting their ass massaged by a couple of feet. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you're quaking. And then mm -hmm. they're you, you know probably what I mean? get like seven terror guns. <laughs> yeah, use Good. that. Just three people underneath yep. with uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, let's get some phone calls. Headphones on. Big thanks, Kyle Van Noy, for answering our question. Yeah. yeah, legend. Have you ever seen a, a bigger situation of there's an adult and then there's a bunch of kids? <laughs> that kind of just happened, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Working That's, out, right. okay, getting better as a human. Mm -hmm. Hey, tell us about this. You know what I mean? Him, earthquaking. Yeah, like that is. He knew it, though. He's a dog. Yeah. Soaking, you mean? Yeah. He knew. You guys thought I was making stuff up. Tone, congrats, bro. Yeah, Tony. You should take a victory lap. He was probably wow. so excited. Kyle looked so excited to get that call. To chat on the show, to talk a little football, and that's what you do. <laughs> that's what you do. What we we, we need to know. He's our he's our journalist for we, that. We yeah. talk college football. What do we mean? We did. Yeah, yeah. And he got a, a pub in for what he's doing this weekend. Yeah, yeah. Be hey, on TV. Listen, West Virginia taught us how to soaking. Bingo. Mm. Spe on that note, West Virginia, when BYU comes to town, mm -hmm. bunk beds only. All of those hotels. <laughs> yep. Let's at least let them think there's a chance. Set them up. <laughs> You know what I mean? Some of them. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, no, it just it would be great if they somehow did that. In their hotel, there's bunk beds. Like, yep, that's what we do. Home field advantage. They also have those <laughs> motels. You put a quarter in the bed, and it just oh, shakes. Oh, yeah. We yeah. got yeah, a lot of those, those in Morgantown. What's that? Those would work. That's what they need to bring those back, those vibrating beds. Hmm. Probably good business to be had there in the BYU community, yeah. the Mormon community. <laughs> yeah. If you have those beds, kind of been – I don't think we've seen them in a long time. No. In 30 years. There's probably a warehouse full of them somewhere. <laughs> Could be a big yeah. comeback. Could be a big comeback. Yeah, I wonder if they even know that they've missed the mark here on this entire community. Their demo is right there waiting on them. I mean, Holy shit. Million dollar idea. What if you actually... All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the phones. I was thinking of a bed that actually like mimicked the motions of like a full. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We can sell at least 10 of these things. Yeah. Mm hmm so the parents don't know the kids are doing it, but all the parents did it. Is soaking generational, I assume, over there? I Definitely. Don't know. <laughs> Definitely. What's up, AJ? Sure. I don't know. I don't know if it's like something that dads pass down to their kids and they tell them tell them about their stories. Hey, I didn't pump once. Not <laughs> one thrust. I don't think that happened. <laughs> it probably probably evolved. Started in like a rocking chair. Before I got married to your mom, I didn't have one Not single one. pump. <laughs> Not one. A lot of bopping. Look at us. 30 years later, we're still together. <laughs> yep. This is our problem, though. We're not mocking it. No. We're just talking about yeah. something that's real. That's not just. That's not strictly a Mormon thing, too. That's anyone trying to not, you know, bang before they're married. There's a lot of things that happen in a lot of religions, if you were to look into them, and the amount of people that believe in some things that are like, really? You could really start mm -hmm. judging, I think, everybody, if you were to. The Mormons certainly have a few of those mm -hmm. in their history, but they believe just as much as everybody else believes. So I enjoy the conversation with them. I will talk to anybody about their religion because mm -hmm. yeah. how impressive it is. Like, think about what they're doing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, they, whole lives. Other humans around them, they're just walking mm -hmm. around. Their friends are just bopping that aren't in, right? You do sports. Yeah. <laughs> just bop time, bop time. Oh, we're losing our virginity. We're doing this. Mm -hmm. And that, the amount of discipline that a teenager has to have to make the decision to go be like, no, we're not doing that. Actually, sure, I'm gonna go Bob. I was looking at your quads. I was wondering uh, next time. <laughs> what are you? What are you doing tomorrow night? All right, there's forty thousand people watching. I couldn't help. Couldn't help but notice that your quads are gigantic, sir. I'm gonna need you. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, we, this is not. This is just reality. Yeah, dissecting it. Yeah, we were just talking about this. Means no disrespect. Kyle Van Noy, literally friend of ours. Yeah, he believe like we I mean no disrespect at all. But people are going to get very disrespected by this, I think. They shouldn't. We don't mean, we're just trying to open up eyes. Yeah. yeah. Was zipper rubbing over the pants hand jobs? I think they're actually. I think it's like OTP yeah, creating friction. Yeah. The zippers. Yeah, because it's called kindling, right? Like, yep. Or whatever it was called. Mm -hmm. What is that thing that you take out in the woods and they say is easy, but it's actually impossible? Flint. flint. So they, they call that flint? Is that what they yeah. call yep. that, you think? Yeah, mm -hmm. the flint in the flint. crotch. Striker. Let's go. Striker. Flint striker. Flint Striker. Yep. That is the the company that makes it. Is that the one you bought? I was I was I was deep in the thought. I was thinking about if you were to cage a kangaroo on the bottom bunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kangaroo jacked out there. Thinking. That's a that was the best that was way. To pretty good idea. That is a good idea.
kangaroo sales have <laughs> skyrocketed in Utah. You give them, you get to snort coke and then trap them in the bottom bunk. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Cocaine roo. Oh my god. Hey, How did that cocaine bear do? Right, it did well. Pretty, pretty well. Yeah, I think yeah. so. People said it was good. It was exactly what you thought. Yeah, Bill said it was like the best movie he's ever seen. And then I heard somebody on the internet say it was the worst movie they ever seen. So, mm -hmm. so it's a movie. Yeah. Okay, got it. <laughs> I have not finished Avatar. Too. It's out there though, you know it is. AJ, did you dive in yet? No, I have not started. I don't know if I'm going to, to tell you the truth. What? What the hell? I mean, I will. Maybe if I if I have a long flight, I'll download. Maybe that'll happen. It's kind of I'm bounce. not really. I don't. Avatar doesn't grip me the same way it grips you. I uh, like it. I enjoy it. It's not like it. It didn't transcend my life and change my life. You could always watch it okay. on your flight to Australia okay, to buy your yeah. room. Thanks. Jeez. Okay, I'm I want you I like Dumb and Dumber transcended yeah. my <laughs> life. You had Avatar depression, like the people said that you wanted to be one of the people. Well, I was being toyed with. Hey, new movie coming out next year. Yeah. New movie coming out next mm -hmm. year. New movie coming out next year. It was the first movie I'd seen where that. And I've talked about this enough. I don't need to create demand. He's smart. He creates demand. James Cameron, just like the iPhones. Oh, hey, new iPhones out. We got 7,000 people waiting in line because they only have 20 iPhones. No, they don't. They got a billion, but they're smart. They create demand. Yeah, bingo. Well, he was kind of pissing me off, though, yeah. to be honest. I mean, he created yeah. demand, but also Cameron. kind of pissed me off. Like, let's get these out earlier. But now I'm being told there's 10 more coming yeah. Yeah. in the next couple of years. And he mm -hmm. makes them back to back now. You ever see Avatar? No. It's too long. What about the first one? No. No, it's long. Come on, long too. man. You haven't seen an Avatar, a single minute of Avatar? No. Come on, man. You're Wake up. Out. Get with it. You're missing out? <laughs> Sorry, bud. You're not see? missing too much. What? Whoa. Whoa. Shut up. It'll be all right. Have you seen? It's a good movie. It's good. The whole story's cool. <laughs> Everything's cool. What is it? Pocahontas? Yep. Dancing with Wolves? Yep. Um, there's like movies, I Burn guess. Golly. I don't know if that's the case. <laughs> the past. John Leguizamo is getting hunted on an island. I don't think that is... Just like the Navi. No, it's not what no. I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about... Best is a great film, but... I'm talking about the storyline is... The story arc. We're trying to, and then there's yeah. love, and then there's a comeback. Mm. Like, right. Avatar was the first one that I seen mm -hmm. that had that storyline, because I hadn't seen those movies of the past. So I think that's why I liked it so much. I'm like, oh, this is brilliant. Yeah. And as soon as I got out of there, everybody was like, ah, oh, there's been 45 movies like that. Okay? And I'm like, well... Do they have a ride in Disney World where that's fucking awesome? No, I don't, don't think so. Are people speaking their language Nine now? Nine movies? A man called Horse in a Proto Avatar. Great, okay, great. Obviously, movie. you've seen that one. Atlantis, oh, The Lost oh, oh, oh. Empire, is surprisingly similar to Avatar. Okay. So good. That movie's unbelievable. The Last Samurai and oh, Avatar. Critique. That's a good movie. I like that. Just critiques. <laughs> So, uh, Connor went as uh, DC in, yeah. in, in The Last Samurai. I, got, I do remember that. Yeah. You looked awesome. Yeah. Nate Captain Aldrin. Major Sergeant. Yeah, Nate Aldrin. At that. Play in the Fields of the Lord is a lesser seen influence okay. on Avatar, obviously. The Emerald Forest takes the going native story to the Amazon. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Princess. Mm -hmm. Bill. <laughs> Has anyone seen any of these movies? Uh, hey, oh, Tony. Tone. Fern Gully, the last rainforest that was remains a great sharp. Movie as a kid. Pocahontas is Disney's Avatar. I've seen that one. And Dances with Wolves. Yeah. Is Costner. Yeah. So my first one was Avatar. Those other nine that you guys have all certainly heard of. <laughs> yeah, right. What type of fucking movie <laughs> critics are you guys? I've heard of a couple. <laughs> no way. I watched Fern Gully a lot as a kid. Really? Dances with Wolves, I've heard of. Atlantis Classic. is a great film. Yeah, these, they're basically, if I remember correctly, they are deforestizing the forests and the fern gullies right. are not happy about it. Yeah. <laughs> no. That's what we're for. Pack, you seen any of those movies? No. What's your, you just don't want to see any of them, huh? No, I just haven't seen it. Hate movies. Hey, if you got a good right. six to seven hours, you can watch that Avatar series. Yeah. <clears throat> Succession's going to be good this year. Yeah. I'm, when Joe drives you here, just watch it on your iPad. Boom. Smart. I don't want to watch Avatar. Whoa! Oh, Whatever, dude. You don't get it then. Sheesh. They're over there in Pandora, dude. Yeah. Searching for unobtainium. Yeah. That's right. What if that's how the real world is? That'd be cool if that was the actuality of what it's going to happen in another yeah. place. There's a chance. <laughs> Let's go to the phones. What's real and what isn't, though? How'd they come up with that name? What's that? Unobtainium. Well, because it's uh, yeah. unobtainable. Uh, uh, Bingo. Bingo. It's kind of like calling an orange an orange, you know? Yeah.
Uh, funny enough, right. you just said what is real. Uh, I just saw something on the internet, and I forgot this. This is an internet report. Apparently, there's an ocean underneath our ocean that's bigger than the Pacific Ocean. Oh, Rogan posted that on his IG. Yeah. Yes, that's where I saw it. Yes. He said, oh, not me up 2 a.m. Just finding out that there's an ocean bigger than all the oceans yes. underneath the ocean. So, and then he went down to Salt water down there? If it's natural water, it'd be cool to get down there. If it's, an, if it's natural water, then we don't have to worry about all these water issues then. We well, can use that. Lava ocean? People say that that's where you go to when you go to the North Pole. That's how you get in. What's your deal? That's just what they said. I thought it was Antarctica. Why no, would there be an ocean else. inside the thing, though, just because that's the way it was created? Are we supposed to tap into it at some point, you think? Probably. Were all these things, like, left here for us to tap into? And we're like, nope, don't do that. You know? Yeah, I mean, because it's possible. But if tells. we tap into it, are we getting these otherworldly beasts that we're going to Whoa! That's where oh, the kaiju come from. They, exactly. There's a beast in the mountains in Turkey. Well, that that was definitely real. <laughs> hey, we hope everybody takes care of the earth, is what we're saying. Yeah. Yep. Let's go to the phones. Michael in Arizona on the 500 phone line. What's going on, Michael? How you doing? Keep it moving, boys. Respect. Hell yeah. Okay, so I'm a Niners fan, and uh, I believe Trey Lance is a dog and a sleeping horse oh. down there. But um, <laughs> they say that he's going to have to compete it out with Sam Darnold. And just, I don't think I've ever seen Sam Bro. Darnold play well. So do you think that if Trey Lance gets to start those first two or three games, He's got a shot at like proving himself as like the starter there. Interesting, great question there. Uh, obviously, Shanahan's happy with all three quarterbacks that they have. He has said that on the record to Josina Anderson at the league meetings just the other day. He talked about how they're in a good spot and the way they can, can uh, construct the roster with how much they're paying these three quarterbacks. Obviously, Mr. Irrelevant, Brock Purdy, not commanding a lot of money. Trey Lance, still in his rookie contract. And Sam Darnold, at this stage of his career, they didn't have to pay him that much, so they're able to use money other places. How do you think that all pans out over there, honestly? Because Sam Darnold, I think Ian Rappaport said, like, hey, Darnold's probably the starter if Purdy's not healthy enough by the uh, start of the season. And that surprised us because, like, Trey Lance, we assume, would be the guy, AJ. Yeah, that does surprise me. I would imagine if Trey Lance is healthy and he's playing well, they absolutely would, will give him the opportunity to be the starter. Like, they, if Brock Purdy can't go, they are in a weird spot. But I do think, going back to Sam Darnold, I think we will see a different Sam Darnold with Shanahan in the system. I don't know if he's going to get a chance to play in the regular season and do much, but – I think it's a great move for him to, to get with Kyle. He said, we can win with any of them. Yeah. yeah. That's what Shanahan said. We, we feel like we can win with any they of them. They want Trey to go, though. They drafted Trey. They traded up. They're getting Trey. They, they need him to go. They want him to be the guy. They really liked Trey then. They still like him now. The situation with the injuries that kind of happened put us in a spot is kind of how sh Kyle Shanahan, he said the world would be impressed. We would have been impressed if he would have been able to keep going. Kind of tough. I mean, that was a tough scenario for Trey Lance, and it has been. But he might never get to see the field. Like that might that might actually happen. It's which is wild to think about for an entire rookie contract, which is kind of like the Jordan Love situation. Yeah, I think David Lombardi was the one that said like they view the quarterback position in San Fran as like the running back position. Like you can just plug and place and win. But remember, what, why'd they trade up to three then? Well, that's yeah. the thing. And remember what Kittle said about Kittle. Trey Lance going into last season before tight end you. Like Trey Lance is the guy. He reminds sure. me of Josh Allen sometimes in practice. Like the only way for him to get to that level though is for him to play these games. And now they're thinking about starting Sam Darnold over him. Yeah, like, we don't have that thrill though. Darnold. Yeah. yeah. Like Shannon yeah. didn't say that. That was a yeah, report true. from yeah. 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 I don't think we had enough we've had enough film to really dialect his game yet. Um he got hurt early. He haven't get had zero chance to play. You're talking about Trey? Yeah. In that monsoon game against Chicago, we cannot No, you know, no, no. It no, doesn't no. count. That's tough. I thought you were just going to bury Sam Darnold there. Sam Darnold, another guy that people say haven't got a chance to really see him play because he was under Adam Gaze. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then he went to Carolina and just a turnover mm -hmm. factory there. And then at the end of the season with Steve Wilkes, he was somehow creating some highlights. That's the only thing I saw. I didn't watch the games. Shame on me. Should have watched more of the Carolina Panthers at the end because they were a great story. But I do remember him making some plays. Mm -hmm. And then you start thinking about Shanahan's offense. It's like, can he make a slant throw? Can he dissect the defense and the offense and know what the right situation, because I think Jimmy G did that yeah. very well and it never really got talked about. And it's like, do they have enough confidence just to be like, fucking any quarterback can win here. And that would be a wild move. If it's an open competition, though, and he gets beat out by Sam Darnold, like, it's over. Like, what else is that, you know, like, are they going to be saying the same thing? Like, you know, unless Purdy can't go and something else is wrong with his and Sam Darnold gets hurt. But, like, if it's an open competition and he doesn't do what he needs to do we're to get not the saying, starting job. We're not no, saying. No, like, just this is hypothetical. But if that were to happen, like, 
there's really no turning back from that. And why would you bring in Sam Donald? I guess because people are going to be healthy or, or he want, he's bringing in Sam to be a backup and know he's going to be but, a backup just in case Trey gets hurt again, which has happened, which would make sense. But we are forgetting – what was that secret sauce they got midway through the season? Brock Purdy. Mm -hmm. No, the running back. What's his oh, name? Oh, yeah, McCaffrey. McCaffrey. Yeah. McCaffrey. So you can change everything when you got his ass at running back. You got Debo Samuels, and you got a lot of other pieces to it. Now, before McCaffrey got there, we wasn't so high on his offense. Agreed. Mm -hmm. um, but when you got him back there, yeah, now you can plug and play and figure out what you're going to do long term with Trey. And if it's not going to be him, you can go ahead with the older guy. But I think Mr. Irrelevant is the best out of the three. I had a chance to see Trey earlier this year in camp when they was in OTAs. He was healthy. Um, Mr. Irrelevant, he's special, man. Hey, he is he's a dog, special. man. That's wild. He's special. Not, I'm not picking no sides. I have no pull with neither one of the two. But he was special in camp. He, he carried the team up tempo. And um, I remember John telling us, hey, Guy there, he 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 he's, he might be one of the watch. So I think I think I don't know. I, I think it's interesting. But long as they got Debo and and McCaffrey back there, you could plug anybody in and play with that. Kittle, as long as they're accurate, right? They yeah, have to be Kittle. accurate. Yeah. Have to be quick. Have to know what they're doing. I think that's the thing that Brock Purdy had that people yes. just were so mm -hmm. impressed by. He knew what to do, and he was incredibly accurate. George Kittle became. Wasn't really that much of a weapon before Purdy got on this season. Yes. Not that Kittle hasn't always been just an absolute beast, but this past season, to Pac's point, we were wondering if McDaniels was the genius. Remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It oh, was yeah. McDaniels Early the on. genius of that offense over there because the Miami Dolphins, what they were doing and what the Niners were doing without him. And then all of a sudden, Chris McCaffrey certainly helps. He threw a touchdown in his first game as a fucking mm -hmm. Niner in the middle of the season. Brock Purdy comes in. They just kind of ignited fire and became unstoppable. And then the most unlucky first quarter in the history of football happened to them and the season's over and now they got to ask so many questions yet again what a fascinating run Shanahan's been on over there because I think his record before this past season like he, he was like 500, 500 yeah not yeah. great he, but you think like hey he's been in the Super Bowl he's done really good things but then when Jimmy got hurt they lost a bunch of games mm -hmm. when they got kicked out of their stadium remember they got yeah. kicked out of their oh, yeah. city they lost yeah, a bunch of games it was like a full it's been interesting for Shanahan over there and it sounds like they feel like they got the pieces but could you imagine Lamar Jackson? Oh, they yeah, they wouldn't be able to get him. Wouldn't be able to get him. Wouldn't be able to get him. But that well, would be bananas. The craziest part with Lance is he's going to be 22, and if he doesn't play football this year, what's that? Five years without playing football, and the kid's 22 years old. Like, how, how does that even make any sense? Yeah, he played what? How many games in college? At like three. 2019 was yeah. his last game. One season, and then because um, COVID. Like yeah, she's 2020. Uh, the game. spotlight game or whatever. Yeah. Like, so wasn't it 17? Is it 17 games? Is that I what he played? Less than that. Yeah, I think it's less than that, too. And his whole post-high school career. Yeah. Jeez. That's not a lot of games. No. And then when he gets in, he, the Bears is a monsoon. Mm -hmm. Not even a game. Yeah. yeah. That's not a real game of football. Got to play in all weather, It breaks his life. Yeah. Uh, no. So he played 16. You're right. He played 16 in, that, in his sophomore season because they go through the playoffs uh, as, as the bracket or whatever. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then the one game as a junior as a showcase. And so now... Jeez, a waste, dude. Now it's in 2020. Hey, this is a Jordan Love situation, though. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Not that Jordan Love got hurt, but, like, haven't been able to see Jordan Love really play. No. And he's almost through his entire contract. People are going to view this as a wasted pick, maybe, especially if they go all the way up to three and he never gets to play. John knows that. Shanahan knows that. But there are circumstances that arise that kind of force their hand. But in the end, if it doesn't have success, they're going to be judged for it. So it's a fascinating – like, honestly, it's an interesting thing. They go all the way up to three. That was a big fucking move. Yeah. Yeah. Three first-round picks, I think, right? That I mean, was like, in this draft, I think their first pick is, like, 99 or something mm -hmm. like that. Like, they – they mortgaged the next three, four years to go up and get him. Yeah, because it was this year's first round, last year's first rounder, and then the year before. Pick. That's why they won't be able to get Lamar. Mm -hmm. mm. What about Aaron? What's going on with Aaron? AJ, here we go. AJ. Is he going to San Fran? Where's he going? You tell us, dude. You know. Is, is anything going to happen before the draft, honestly? you That's a great question. Do you think uh, so? About not only Aaron and Lamar. Are, does any Help is there me. any reason for any of this to happen before the draft? Lamar, I think after draft makes more sense because like Colts probably in on Lamar. If at four they don't get, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I, mean, I see that. Aaron. So I after just, the draft, probably Aaron though can happen any time. Yeah. I think Aaron happened happened before the draft. Should, has but to. I mean, someone's got to budge though. Like right, either the Jets or the Packers. One of them has to blink. Florio and said they have the no Pack reason to. Yeah. Florio said the Packers did though, right? You know what Florio reported yeah. the other yeah. day? Yes, kind of. But obviously they're hooked. They're they're hooked on other stuff if they still haven't figured this out. It it makes sense for both teams to get it done. 
Audio. You tell us what you're hearing. Go ahead. I'm not hearing anything. Oh, uh, it's too quiet. It feels too quiet to me. Oh, really? Oh, really? Yeah. Really quiet. Mm hmm. What's that mean? Nor the quiet before a storm or. Mm. No, I don't know. That's a good question. happening at all? Just it seems like nothing's happening. I don't know what's going on. I haven't been reaching out either. So. Oh, you too good? Wow. Mm. Oh, no. You don't want to talk to your friend anymore. This guy's too good for Aaron Rodgers. So quiet. It's almost deafening. Wow. Holy shit, dude. Wow, let's go to the that fans, means. I guess. Hmm. Pretty crazy. Is there any pre-post June 1 things with Aaron's trade contract? Yeah, yeah they post. can designate that shit. Yeah. Post is split. And, and <clears throat> for the Colts, after these last two pro days, I mean, shit, you're getting Will Levis or Anthony Richardson. Do you see Will Levis? He's on that stuff that you're on, it looks like. The workouts I'm talking about, nothing right. else. Yeah. He, <laughs> is he looks good, huh? Jocked, dude. He is... He didn't need to. He didn't need to even do this. No, yeah. in December he's in the worst shape of his life. Disgusting. Yeah. Pig. Mm -hmm. Nice downlighting in that second shot too. I like it. What's that mean, AJ? What are you talking about? <laughs> like downlighting shows the shadows and everything. All your striations. Smart. Oh hell yeah. Striations. Oh, what, what do you have uh, in Look your gym? Quads too. That guy could get you some uh, <laughs> some whatever you call it. Bed bunking. Whatever you want to do. <laughs> Soaking. Soaking. Little bed bunk. Uh, Soaking with the bed bunk. <laughs> You're right. Now that we he see take quads. The bottom bunk, he'll take that bottom bunk for about 40 minutes. <laughs> take the hell out of that this thing. guy's been such a good friend for so many people, man. This guy with those quads. <laughs> Unbelievable. Has made so many moments. Striation, the fact or state of being striated. Arrangement of striations or striae. A minute groove, minute groove, scratch, or channel, especially when one of a parallel series any of the alternate dark and light cross bands of myofibril of, of course. striated muscle. Of course. Knew Great fight. This place is awesome. We're starting to really use some words. Yeah. Big ones. What did you use this morning? Synchronization? Mm -hmm. Synchron. Synchronously? Scree, scree, scree. <laughs> Bro, this guy had one of the greatest morning tweets I've seen. Yeah, it was unreal. Used synchronous. I don't even know what the fuck the way he. It was, it was good. Every player on a team is a piece to a puzzle. Yeah. That's including the coaching staff. Mm -hmm. When dealing with puzzles, you typically find that each piece is uniquely shaped with a variety of colors. Next. Pulling it up. Oh, wait. Turn the page. Mm -hmm. I didn't know there was a the second part to this tweet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's the, that's yeah, that's the, the only part word. I saw. The SAT word. Oh, oh my God. You guys missed the show. I yeah. only saw this part, too. The show is the second tweet, AJ. It's like synchronized. Oh, with yeah. us, I think Liberty. Piven. Yeah, I think Piven enjoyed his appearance yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll get to that. <laughs> Obviously, find that each piece uniquely shaped with a variety of color. Those colors fit into certain positions in order for things to work synchronously, correctly, or as they should. No individual piece is able to complete the bigger picture without the other. Wow. Earth, Earth, Earth. Hell yeah! Actually, yeah. I think, yeah, you're right. I think it's this one. Yep. Yeah. It's true, man. Very true, though. That's a fucking beautiful piece to describe whenever you're trying to build a team, bro. That's yeah. really good. Yeah. Good good word from the dictionary. Putting it all together, man. So what you do? Did you <laughs> we Google it? I like to do this every once in a while. No, I didn't Google that exact piece. But I Google a, a little bit of it, and then I mix my little top spin on it. There was a word that I used in something about my business is very... It was like needy was what I was trying to... I forget the name of it. It was in my first long tweet, mm -hmm. that shit oh, that I yeah. say, blog post. Oh, yeah. And I felt so smart whenever I put it out. I just felt so smart whenever I put it out there. And then I got people that were like, just learn this word or whatever. That's a nice little exercise. Try to learn a new mm -hmm. word every once in a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, why not? Good good for desk you. calendars. That's what those yeah. are great for. You know, boom, word of the day. Right there. You flip the page yeah. next day. Boom, word of the day. That's like Stephen A does that. Yeah. Stephen yeah. A is like the words that he'll just drop out of nowhere in the middle of a debate comfortably. It's like, mm -hmm. geez, a waste. Whoa. That's an SAT word there, pal. Those of us who have never read a book kind of uh, struggle finding those new words. So shout out to Google, bro. And shout out to that tweet Google. this morning, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out. Shout Let's out. go to the phones here. Let's go to Jim in Pennsylvania on the 500 phone line. What's going on, Jim? Hey, how you doing? Keep, Keep moving. moving. Sounds like this guy ain't got time. What's going on, Jim? Mm -hmm. uh, I was just wondering, uh, you, think the, uh, you think the Eagles can run it back? What do you think? And also, I think they can. But you think, uh, okay, Jim. what do you think about <sighs> Kelsey talking on New Heights, talking about the uh, kickers? Okay. So mm. I seen a tweet. I will listen to New Heights this evening, obviously. That is normally the time in which I listen to it. I seen somebody tweet me and say, Hey, Jason Kelsey just buried punters and kickers. Do, can you can you tell me what he said? I'm 
I'm one of our biggest fans. I got a hoodie right yeah. over there. I work out in yeah. what, what did he say? Did he try to take us out of the game completely? Is that what he did? Is that what that John did no, over there? No, 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 no. He, he said he just liked to see you guys get hit a little bit. Oh, I ain't, I ain't not wrong with that. Yeah. I would say as much as yeah, I yeah, love yeah. it when specialists get destroyed, in equal contrast, nothing fires me up more than when a specialist does this. Instant respect around the league. Players get hype when a kicker, punter, long snapper, decleases. Oh, we're back, Jim. Boom. Hey, I love that, John. Boom. Thank you, Jim. Hell yeah. And if you're in the NFL, you can talk shit on kickers and punters all you want. <laughs> that is A-OK in my eyes. Boom. To be, that was a pretty big one. That's a great shot. That was NBC Sunday Night Football. Payton's return? Yeah. Pretty big. I think the ratings were big. Yeah, a lot of people watched Ooh, if you'd have hit me like that, I would have been waiting for your ass. Pack, it would have happened, bro. <laughs> that guy ran four or something, too. He I know, he's fast. Fast, fast, yeah. 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 I thought that did happen. Did he think pack, he was yeah. going to run you over there? Oh, like, with that angle, like there's that. no way. Okay, so, like, no. he was an incredible... I'm not. I'm supposed to kick touchback here anyway, so he's not even supposed to have the chance to return it because he was mm -hmm. actual Olympic sprinter who was getting great blocking. Yeah. Trinan Holiday was a dog returner, man. Honestly, he actually was, like... Real threat around NFL there for a while. Okay, we don't have to continue. I mean, geez, at least <laughs> a thousand times we've ran it. The NFL films are going to charge us for that, uh, doing that whole thing. Uh, that was my move normally. Now, when you kick the pack and you go down into the mix, and, you know, he cuts That's back. So Use the sideline. Like coaches say, sidelines never miss the tackle, man. It's smart. I would always bait people to the sideline. Like, they look at me. They look at the space. Blob, a lot of room. I'm the best athlete on the field. I'm going to be able to get around this guy, and then bang, I'm closing. So it was a little bait and tackle. You know what I mean? It was a little, nice. it was a little bait and tackle uh, situation. But there were some guys that just got right around me, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, happens. I try to hey, go ahead and take space and opportunity. What, you try to shake kicker punter whenever you get there, or what are you? Oh, yeah. You, you don't want to get tackled by the punter or the kicker. It's a long day, especially mm -hmm. if that's the last person. Oh, my God. So what happened, you think? Well, it didn't happen too many times. But when um, it did, like, yeah. what did people say? Did people say stuff like, "Yeah, yeah on the sideline"? You, you, everybody in the meeting room gonna know if I got tackled by the kicker. Whoa, whoa, what's especially this? In, especially, what is uh, this? Yeah, this is bullshit. This right here. What is this? What? Are, what is this? Got me. Oh. Foxy, don't put this up. Oh, whoa. Was this preseason or when was this? Foxy, probably. That's the only reason. No, those are all our guys. I think this is probably think this regular is season. playoff. Oh, man. When Last we played Joe. Oh. Oh. oh, wow. Down in there. That's inside of 30, I think. That was bigger than the holiday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's big down there. Hey, what's going on? I don't know how you got up. Hey, good to see you. Thank yeah, you. Boom. Oh, there's boom. You didn't play the rest boom. of the game, right? Boom. Josh McNary, Andrew Jackson, Andrew Studebaker, Dequel Jackson, Corey Redding, Cole Anderson. Bjorn, Ricky Jean Francois. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. That was yeah. a hell of a crew there. They had a hell of a crew there, yeah. Hell of a crew. We had a good time. We were very tight. Jarrell Freeman, I think, was also on that team. CFL legend who led the NFL in tackles. And then somehow I think he got hurt. We had a good team. But did anybody say anything after that? Like, was there ever a conversation? I felt really athletic. I won't let you know. Well, you hung that one up. I shouldn't have probably brought it out, but I'm saying I got to the 30 yard line. 35. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, yeah, still a good return. You know. uh, how do you feel about the Eagles potentially running back? Those Johns over there got nothing but football players. Jason Kelsey's back. The tush push is still in play. Jalen's only getting better. Big Batman, little Batman still on the outside. Sirianni's still got a brain. I think they're still going to do great. Don't you agree, AJ? Yeah, Why? I mean, barring any huge injuries to their big-time guys, why would they not continue their run? I mean, Jalen Hurts, like you said, he's only getting better. Kelsey's still there. He probably had – the best year of his career so far in what year? What is he, 14? 15? How long has he been playing now? Forever. Forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. They're so good, yeah. yeah. Obviously, I like what uh, I like what Sirianni has going there, too. It feels like they uh, feels like he's in his right spot right now. Town, if the Washington Commanders get a quarterback, not that they don't have a quarterback in Sam Howell, but, I mean, Ron Rivera said that he's they're not in, and then who yeah, knows yeah, who, yeah. if they're going to be in or not with a new ownership, which is imminent is what people are saying. Mm -hmm. it, it, it feels like the Commanders are going to be for sale relatively soon or sold relatively soon. So what does the future look like there? You think Lamar Jackson goes there, it changes their odds for the better? Because remember, we've seen the commanders get a new quarterback, pay $30 million to, yep. and the odds did not move at yep. all. But in that NFC East, I mean, there's some good fucking football teams. And obviously yeah. the Eagles aren't slowing down at all. The commanders, what, worst place there? Worst odds in the division? Yep. Yeah. That's really all you got to think about. If they get better, the NFC East could be a real problem. I, and maybe that's the only thing that holds up the Eagles? I'd guess if they get Lamar, they'd probably jump up to where, similar to where the Lions are, probably like 25. Or probably where the Ravens are, probably 25 to 1-ish. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, we were actually talking about that the other day on Hammer Don. Um, that maybe even the Giants be a sneaky 
good value pick for that division. I mean, they played well last year. Eagles lost some guys off of a off of a Super Bowl losing run, which sometimes a Super Bowl loser doesn't always make it back to the playoffs. Um, but yeah, I mean, you get Lamar, you're gonna jump way up there. MC East is very good though. Remember how shitty they were? Oh yeah, yeah just two what two three years ago. The least yeah. very good. Hey, great graphic by Dirty here. Yeah, how about Dirty? That's a great graphic, baby. Appreciate that. A lot of numbers, a lot of arrows, a lot of things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Takes a lot of time to piece that whole thing together while you're staring at a computer the whole time. You know, with no blue. He needs one of those blue glasses. He needs the blue, blue light. Needs blue, light. blue light glasses. I got blue light contact lenses. Whoa! Oh, that's a real thing. Yeah. Kidding me? That's nice. Holy Bubbles. shit! Wow, that's next level, huh? Yeah, that is next level. That's like up in a. That's a, that's far and beyond. Yeah, that's some high technology. Oh, shit. That, remember, they were talking about that thing that Google was creating, where you could just Google put Glass. It, yeah, the Google Glass was that going to be a contact at some point? We thought. Probably. I think I so. That. Yeah, still think it's on the way. Like the phone in the hand. Is that going to happen? You never know. I could see it. What do you mean? It's like a surgical implant. Yeah. Boom. Right and then it just pops up, and you're just oh, fucking you just around with it. The screen. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. So many butt dials. Oh, God. That would suck. Let's go to the phones. Let's go to Parker in Florida on the Five Energy phone line. What's going on, Parker? Parker's dead. Okay, oh, let's man. go to Jesse, diner in Pittsburgh on the Five Energy phone line. What's going on, Jesse? How we doing, boys? Keep, Keep moving, moving, Jesse. I got something to say for AJ and Pac. Right. Them Reds are getting their ass beat by Mitch Keller on the mound. Today. That's what we're talking about. Let's go, Buck. Oh! Oh! Tell T. Higgins as well. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. Reds it, stink, Cincy. dude. Pirates stink. Right. What yeah, ending is it? Uh, it hasn't started yet. <laughs> Oh, I thought oh, we were really uh, up. I thought yeah. we had hot bats. I, uh, yeah. I heard during spring training. The what an asshole. Who, that, who? Jesse God. from Pittsburgh? That's the owner. Okay. That guy's team is fucking taking the field today mm -hmm. and destroying all of Cincinnati's opening day vibes. That's right. It, wasn't it the uh, opening the day used to start in Cincy, 14, too? I believe. 14. What's that, Bill? Mm -hmm. Opening day used to start in Cincy. That's how bad they yeah. used to be. Yeah. used to be the parade, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it, it's yeah. still the parade. Well, right now, in Ohio, in Cincinnati, you can't go nowhere downtown. It's blocked out. It's probably yeah, it's sweet because people are hundred thousand people suck. downtown. And then what? The uh, owner's gonna go on opening day yep. and say, "Yeah, I like the yeah. fans. What are they gonna do? Be a fan of somebody else? Fuck off!" Yeah. <laughs> Allegedly, <laughs> hey, if we don't win. I'm gonna take them somewhere else. That's just what, the what do you want? You want me to take this team to some <laughs> other city? They I'll want do me it. to. I'll do it. Red suit too, right? You had a red yeah. suit on yeah, that thing. Yeah, like an asshole. That was one year ago, yep. right? Yeah, yeah. Long not not a good look today. You're not going to, dude. Hot bats. You heard Jesse? Hot bats. The guy that is pitching for the Reds throws right. absolute gas. Hunter Green, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Call it. We can't afford to fall behind 0 and 1. You can't. Because the, the Reds, if they lose, what? you know, today. Why am I betting on the fucking Pirates? I hate the Pirates. Wait, wait, no. I'm a Cutchins fan. I don't like Cutchins what's happening Jackson here. Jackson Smith and Jig was older brother is batting in the five hole for the Pirates. Holy shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. O'Neal Cruz. Matter. Hey, I want it. Big Bills, please. Remember how sick O'Neal Cruz was last yep. year? Oh, yeah, dude. He throws the ball so hard from short to yep. first. Yep. Hardest ever. AJ, who do we have? Do you know anybody for the Reds? No, y'all. Sorry. Uh, I'm a big Benito Santiago fan. He's been gone since 2000. Absolutely. So he's not on team anymore. Bronson Arroyo. <laughs> also another absolute Don Casey. Case, the mayor. Is the mayor we got, showing we got up? old buddy, though. We got old buddy at first base. Yeah, right? Joey Votto. Oh, he's, oh, yeah, he's been there forever. Yeah. Oh, we still got Votto? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, he hates Cincinnati, though. What? I thought that was his thing. Uh, Joey like said 20 that? years. Joey said that? Yeah, I thought he was been like, there fuck Cincinnati. <laughs> Why are you doing this? <laughs> That's what I thought he said. He did not say that. That is clearly made up by that ah, person. Right yeah. All right. That's weird. Let's go to the fence. Opening day. Let's go baseball. Here's Reds opening day lineup. <laughs> Jonathan India, second base. TJ Friedel, center field. Jake Fraley, he's a dog. Oh. Right, isn't he? Tyler mm -hmm. Stevenson, Jason Vosler, that Will Myers, stinks. Spencer Steer, <laughs> Will Steer. Benson, Jose Barrera. World Series, here we come. <laughs> All right, Steers let's, let's get the Pirates opening line, uh, oh, opening day line. It actually wasn't bad. Yeah, it was sweet. That's what we're doing. O'Neill Cruz is the future of the league. Somewhere else, probably. That's what works out with the Border. Pirates. Once he gets really good and figures it out, he'll Border. head somewhere else and get paid. And mm -hmm. that owner we showed a picture of earlier will continue just raking money for what could have been. Yep. Boston, Boxy, would you tell me why uh, baseball's ass backwards and stinks? I don't remember, Tony. I believe Foxy you said, was high when I said that. <laughs> they said yeah. the Bucko's the seventh most Ricky. profitable organization in the MLB. Oh, yeah. Uh oh. That came out, right? That's, yeah. yeah. That's not good. That. It's impressive. Then why would you try to win? Exactly. Bing, well, he Bingo. doesn't. He's executed his plan perfectly. 
Yeah. He's running he the business. He even sold seven springs. Yeah. Son of a bitch. Is that the ski lodge? Yeah. Bingo. And Tubin, if you can't stand. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Tubin's fun. At shortstop. <laughs> and the M old crew. Yeah! At left field. Brian Reynolds. <laughs> Designated <laughs> hitter. Andrew the Clutch Cuts McCutcheon. Yeah! One name only at first base, this <laughs> motherfucker, Santana. Woo! Sick on the guitar. Just like the ocean. <laughs> yep. Under <laughs> the moon. Santa's near the moon. Santa's near the moon. You got the kind of love that can be so through it. Give me your love. Make it real. Oh, and forget about it. He had a run there, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Wow. That's his walkout song. You know Santana? Well, wow. fu funny, his name is Carlos Santana. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, they didn't even give him a C there because this is an A plus fucking player. Wow. Jackson Smith and Jigba's older brother, <laughs> yep. who's a dog. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Hayes, wow. obviously, this guy's a player. He is. Mm -hmm. Brian the Hayes, highest, very good. Highest paid fucking pirate for forever. That's Jackson Hayes, dude. Swinsky, obviously, <laughs> going to be out there. And Bay, everybody loves him. Jason, Actual Bay. Yeah. Jason uh -huh. Bay's uh, uh, son. That was uh, Michael Bay. All of the bays, bro. <laughs> yep. This is the best one. Mm -hmm. Second base. Everybody's yeah, hell's a yeah. different. And then obviously Tracy Hedges. <laughs> yeah, and he's trimming them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the three, three, three players. players. Let's the go, Bucko. Second Bucko. Bucko. Jason Candle. It's a good squad. You guys are fuck fuck. You can, Trash. hey, buy out now, three fifty. Nope. After seeing the lineups. Nope. <laughs> three hundred. Buy out. That's after fun. seeing the line. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at this. No. Look at that guy. That's how heavy his actual bat is with that thing on top of it. <laughs> He swings a fucking telephone pole, bro. You want to buy out 250? Nope. All right. That what? game's going to suck. What? Yes. Oh, my Have God. Have you seen the Pirates fucking lineup? Carlos Santana's playing the guitar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Coming from the worst organization in the league. What are you talking about? We have a player that people have heard of. Let's go to the fence. Miguel Cabrera. Everyone knows. Oh, nobody heard of Andrew McCutcheon? Okay, good one. Well, I thought he was like 50. I can't believe he's still playing. He's younger than Miggy. Yeah, same oh. as Miggy. Yeah. Let's go to the phones. Thank you. Especially with what you said about Donardo just a week ago. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Son of a so bitch. Bad. I was asking a fair question there. I love Donardo. I don't know if Andrew no good no more now that they can't slide over across the field. He he's he's a no brainer, but go ahead. <laughs> He's a DH. What are you saying? Right. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's talking about this old man. Are we really? No. Oh! <laughs> oh <laughs> what you yeah. Denardo or McCutcheon? Back didn't know about Denardo. You are you you're not talking about Denardo, right? You're, you're not talking about Denardo. You're, you're talking about McCutcheon. Denardo or Kutch. His old man. Who are you talking about? <laughs> we need to know. Who'd you just say is an old man? Better Nothing. answer real carefully, Pac. Nothing. Who'd you just say is an old man? Rest in peace, Joe Denardo. Please, I do not think Joe Denardo is a part of this. Miss you, bro. Love you, Joe. We did hear you thinking out loud, though, yeah, how you think this Red Pirates game's going to go. <laughs> Joe Nardo <laughs> does not deserve what's going on yeah. right now. <laughs> Could we please get him off the back screen? <laughs> Rest in peace, Joe. Oh, there's AJ. Yeah, uh, of course. Giggling. So like let's get back girl. to who you were actually talking about. Gotcha. <laughs> yes. Okay, thank you. Jeez Louise. Yeah, you better. If he you moved the safety pack. Come on. to talk about the old man? Thank you. <laughs> Whoa. Why would I do that? You're right. Joe Nardo, this guy fucking yeah. knew the ball. Yeah, young man, old soul. Yeah. Andrew McCutcheon, what are you saying? He's 40 years old. The guy can still hit the ball. Huh? Yeah. That's all he's doing. <laughs> what was that? I'm saying I'm, I'm with I'm with the Reds. Can you pull the yeah. Reds lineup back up, please? Yeah, who the fuck were those? This is our year. This is our year. All right, age 500 for you as well. Yep. Nah, I'm good. Not today. Oh, oh. <laughs> I mean, let me see how the boys. Let me see how the boys start out the Come year. On. Then we'll talk. Let me get a feel for the team. Let me see our style. Yeah. Hey, this yeah. might be our best chance of winning today. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it is today. I mean, <laughs> we are playing the Pirates. Yeah, Pirates is almost a guaranteed win, isn't it? You're right, five hundred, huh? The catcher's a dog. Right, yeah, well, I'm in. Let's do it. All right, good. You, you're in. banking on. We don't even know who that guy. These guys are. Oh, oh, Jonathan is he's, he's an all star. He look good. He's, he's got great good. hair. I mean, that's, he's got like the uh, V for Vendetta look. Where's yep. this game at? Is it down PNC? No, or? It's, in no, it's in Cincinnati. Yeah. He's got brain yeah. going on. Forced to start in Cincy. Pirates are going in with their fucking booty. Gross. You know, that's what the Pirates mm, yeah. grabbing, ruining the whole day. Pirates are stealing the happiness right out of that town. That's a big ship of Cincinnati. Yeah, that's right. That's what the Pirates are doing. We're taking it old school. The good when you having a shit bird was probably. Drowsy and raining right now. What's your deal? Nobody's sleeping. Only man. day is gonna be nice is for your wedding, bro. That's nice. Right. Thank you, Pac. That's very nice of you. Yeah. Good it's on. Like rain, rain on your wedding day. day. That ain't gonna happen. No. 
A lot of singing lately. A lot of singing lately. Off season. Let's go back to your question that you asked, AJ. Jeremy Piven and his people hated being on the show yesterday. Is that what we were thinking? <laughs> well, no. I think the song, I, he was confused a little bit during like the eh, 90-second song. That <laughs> if it, was that the tide? He wasn't sure. If it means anything, his only retweet from yesterday was this show. Was uh, it, out of his oh, press good. junket. The toad? Was good. it the toad? Yeah, yeah, yeah he was chance, peeking. He was peeking. There's a chance people think he was actually tripping on that toad yesterday. I thought he was just saying it like as a joke, a gimmick. There's people that were like, did you not think he kind of was? Before Maybe? he got out, I, I did see him lick the toad. Okay, what? I don't think that's even possible. When man. you started singing, I, I thought he was imagining it. Like I think while <laughs> this I was is watching fake. him, this is not I happening. thought he was thinking, uh, are they about to say, uh, what's going on right now? How about man. him taking a it, sip of the tea yeah. Yeah. in the middle of it? There's more toad in there. We start singing, it looked like it had just kicked in on him. He, was like, <laughs> he did, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. The glasses are good high to that whole thing. He had to been fucked up because there's no way he doesn't know live like you were dying. <laughs> yeah. There's no way. We honestly <laughs> thought that song good every human. <laughs> yes. Everyone ever. loves Tim McGraw. That he was the no. longest we've ever had, though. Yes. But you put until you get to the hook. That's the problem. It was all the lyrics and lyrics no. and more lyrics. Everyone more lyrics. knows bull and name Fu Manchu. Yeah. No, nah, it had just kicked in, AJ. That's right. You think? Love deeper. <laughs> Everyone him. knows that. Good for Pip. Pac was singing top of his lungs. I did not hear you singing that song yesterday, Pac. Not any of them yet, actually. We'll get there. Was you up there, too? <laughs> Me? You were singing? No, he's doing a piven right now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Only well, got five minutes. I wonder if we're going to be able to have him back kicks on. In. <laughs> Probably. I mean, Sweetwater's going to crush. And then after that. Yeah. He's Coach Lapchick. Lapchick. Yep. Joe. Yeah, look at us. We got some information out of that thing. Fucking yeah. Ari Gold on the program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he loved you before you was packed. That's what he said. Yeah. yeah. He did. You can get on here. He has sent uh, messages in the past. Yeah. I do believe. Mm -hmm. He was in Indy, right? And he was doing something. He was filming something. Oh, yeah. He came to the studio. Yeah, he, yeah, came, he came to the studio. studio. Yeah. He came to the studio. How'd that happen? How, I, I don't remember how me and Ari Gold ended up mm -hmm. knowing of each other. I don't know. Probably the internet. The internet's the best. Had to have been. And yeah. the worst. But it's also the best. Maybe mm -hmm. when Guy Fieri took that video of you. Could have been. Send it over to Ari. Yeah. Said, hey, man, oh, this guy's famous. I know it. Who was next to you in the other booth? What's that? That night. He's talking about full guy. Like the Gary from Teen Mom. That was Adam. Oh, yep. that Bro, was not where is the toad? The toad? <laughs> this, what are y'all talking about? We the, need to get the toad. The toad is in, I think it's in South America, or Central America mm -hmm. or something yep. like that. that I think. Was, he was up through there. <laughs> so he said it's a, uh, a rocket ship. Of tripping or something. Yeah, like straight that. to nine. Yeah, I guess you go to another dimension or he universe. Looked, he looked pretty happy, though. He said it was like almost dying. I'm, it didn't look like he was about to die. Yeah, you die. know. It's, it's probably probably one of the dimensions. Like 100 times. You think it's just an everyday thing? Yeah. So remember, the M-E-O and the N-H and the N-H squared. <laughs> right. Yep. That thing kind of combines with the Ito and the O-E-T. And then N drops the hammer. That's. And all of a sudden, boom. Pim, pim, pim. Mio, five, Mio, DMT, N H O. Pim, 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 That's pim, what it's pim, all about. Pim, pim. Creative shots. Mm -hmm. Do the whole thing. You smoke it out of that bong thing? Yeah, then what is That's how you make it. You drink it? Is it a t What's the deal? <laughs> What's the deal? We're past baseball. We're not talking about baseball anymore. All right, let's go to the fence. Let's go to Shane in Ohio. What's going on, Shane? Last call of the day. How we doing, guys? First time caller, everyday listener, so let's yeah. keep it moving. Hell yeah. Nice. nice. All right. I didn't hear what he said. So, so, you know, talking about baseball first a little bit. How you doing? I'm a huge baseball fan. Hell yeah, Shane. I would like to see your guys' opinion if the Major League Baseball gods could bless us with more scheduled double headers and a little football lesson for you pat hanford dixon was the creator of the dog pound in cleveland holy oh, shit oh, is that real okay. <laughs> that's for real dog hanford holy shit won't forget his name now yeah. that's a pretty he, big deal hanford dog. is the dog of the dog the pound. dog father remember the dog pound has seen been through it oh yeah team left yeah Get me out of here. Got a new one. That one sunk too. It's forever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then they win a playoff game, and they say, get this quarterback the fuck out of town. Yeah. That's Baker Mayfield. It was luck. 
It was. Did you hear him bury Baker earlier today, AJ? You, I think you're a Baker fan, right? Aren't you a Baker enthusiast, at least a little bit? Uh, I think yeah. I've heard you speak positively about him. Pac-Man was so flustered about Baker even really being a conversation for the Baltimore Ravens, which led to the entire Lamar Jackson situation. Like, oh, he might not play if they're reporting that they were negotiating with Baker. They didn't pay him as much as Tampa, we assume. But Baker Mayfield has a chance to reprove himself out there. Pac-Man thinks he is not a guy. A lot of people think he's not a guy. What are your thoughts on him? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think it's going to be an uphill battle for Bake, no question, in Tampa. But he's getting the chance to be a starter, right? Like, is he the starter right now if we if they took the field? He's Blaine Gabbert when he's not on that beach down there in the Bahamas. Is he still on the Buccaneers? So, no. no, he's a free agent. So he just kind of drifted to the beach with Amendola, Adelman, Gronk, and what? Tommy Boy. Yes. Yeah. He just goes wherever Tom goes. Smart. He looked jock. AJ. Yeah. What's up? We can go and get Brady off the beach right now, <laughs> drinking two Mai Tais, mm -hmm. yep. and plug him in right now with Baker Mayfield, and he would still win the job. We cannot. Yeah. We if 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 Brady couldn't get it done last year, ba Baker is on the downhill mm -hmm. slope. If he can't, come, come on, man. Yeah, new OC too. Yeah, they may draft one of these guys later in the first though, wouldn't they? What is that shirt saying in the back there? Is that a Tom Brady shirt? Who's, sugar who's tits? filming? Sugar, sugar tits? Yeah, sugar tits. Is that, is that a TV 12 tits. merch? It does say yeah. sugar tits. Is that? I was, did you see? I think I saw Lionel Messi there earlier, too, giving a high That's five. Back him. So we got sugar tits there. We got Tom Brady there. Is that Messi? We got Gronk there. Blaine Gabbard, oh, who also retired, oh. getting tackled by Julian Edelman, who was jocked. So Yo, jocked. filmed all of it. This is kind of weird. What? What? <laughs> what do you mean, Ty? I'm kind of what's AJ? What's your problem? <laughs> I'm kind of uncomfortable I I watching this. That. I think it's awesome. I've never seen a football game get this into it, especially with sugar Tom. tits being involved. I like that the boys are oh. just having a good time. The boys are just having beach. fun. I guess, but I mean, they should have played. They should be playing ultimate frisbee. That's probably more fun. Yeah. Yeah, right, look, I'm sure these guys love ball. They watch look how happy these guys are having uh, playing ball. <laughs> I am getting Top Gun vibes. Yeah. I'll say that on the boat, they probably watch Maverick on the way over, and they're like, "Man, Sugar I Tits was like, hey, listen, let's, let's do it." <laughs> Who is Sugar Tits? Why doesn't Sugar Tits take his shirt off? He's the fat guy at the water park who's got yeah. a shirt. I mean, come on, power. If you had that volleyball. shirt, would you wear it every day? I'd show people my Sugar Tits if I had them. Take the shirt off. No, he likes to keep things a little bit of a yeah. mystery. You know, that's part of the intrigue of Sugar Tits. I guess. Who's the guy with the bald head here who's fucking directing traffic? Yeah, this dude plays no security. fucking games, bro. Cup maker. He looks like the thing from Fantastic Four. Security. <laughs> I said, put that, shit Rica? Right. put that Doesn't shit Tom back right in though. Costa Rica. I don't know if it was Costa Rica. I, my wife told me that it was in the Bahamas somewhere uh, because somebody did post Gronk's uh, fiance mm -hmm. posted it with a location thing uh, on okay. Ooh. Which, obvious, I think my wife was doing some investigating, you know. She's <laughs> snooping around, it sounded like. Mm -hmm. But I think it was in the Bahamas, and it looked like a great time. Yeah. I assume that was their yacht out there the Sugar Tits came in on. <laughs> <laughs> probably probably yeah. Sugar Tits' yacht, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Why do, I have to be, why do I have to be such a fucking asshole? That was a good well, find. That was a good yeah, find. You see that? Just reading the shirt. That thing, that thing yeah. was rolling on back here, mm -hmm. and I forget who was talking. And I'm like, oh my god, did that say? Oh, I was probably good. And we go back and it see. Does. It. That, did that steal the show with every conversation about this whole thing? I assume Sugar Tits was oh, on yeah. the front page of a canceled. lot of. Yeah. Oh yeah. I heard Stephen A and them talk about. I heard Greeny mention it. Tom canceled. Why? Sugar Tits. He mentioned the Sugar Tits. Someone's gonna. Yeah, he's objectifying gonna be his friend. By it. By sugar tits? Yeah, someone's going to be offended by it. That guy looks like he's harmless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't matter. Listen, you don't have to explain yourself to me. I'm saying mm -hmm. someone will be. That's the guy's nickname. Yeah. What do we want? Come on. Sugar tits got, sugar tits got his own merch. Yeah. Guy's on the Bahamas. Give him a break. Tom Brady. He's having a good time. I was playing football on the beach with a guy named Sugar Tits. Had hands like feet, but he had great tits. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's a dog, dude. Hell yeah, yes, bro. He is. Wow. Ed Orgeron? Is that her big? <laughs> we don't know who it is, but we do know the Sugar Tits stole the show here today for us. And shout out Dude, to Tom hammer. and the boys having fun during retirement. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. They've been preparing this for years and years. They've talked about it. Now they're playing football on a beach in the Bahamas. Man. Nothing better. So fun. Living. So much fun with Sugar Tits. AJ. We need to get you down to a beach. Only time we get well, to see you play football is Lake Tahoe when you're spearing that yoked uh, guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't play a whole lot of pickup football in my at my age right now. <laughs> Why not? I don't know about you. you I don't know about you. But I would. I love. Problem? 
I was just down. Like, I love being on the beach. I'm a big Frisbee guy on the beach. I love Frisbees. I'll dive into the ocean, make diving catches. Let's say you and the missus happen to be at that same beach at that day, okay, at yeah. that exact time. Yeah. Only a certain amount of people are allowed at that beach, so everybody's little setup is mm -hmm. certainly within eyesight of everybody else. Can't hide. No hiding mm -hmm. in this situation. Everybody sees your jaw. AJ Hawks over there. Sugar tits comes wandering down. Mm -hmm. Hey, we need one more. We were wondering if you wanted to pick up the old football. You'd have to play that, right? You would have to play that. They would have be, to. They'd bully you without a it. doubt. Without a doubt, especially if they sent sugar tits over to get me out of my chair. I am playing. No, I'll play whatever you. I'll, I'll be the snapper. I'll do whatever you want. I bet you that it was a great time for everybody. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. This guy. So you think this like poor guy? He was always just eating popsicles and they're dripping on his tits, and his tits taste like sugar. Is that what? Oh, interesting. I don't, I don't even know how we go back to the uh, the beginning of this guy's nickname, but that's a valid argument. Could I think. be. What if it's not even his shirt? What if it's Gronk's shirt and he just put it on? Put this shirt well, on. He had sunburn. Oh. Yeah. So he needed yeah. to cover his sunburn. Mm -hmm. Hey, if it'll help you play with us, we need one more, Sugar Tits. Will you wear this shirt? You, yeah, that's probably what happened. Could be. Who's the little guy directing traffic? That dude is the real Where? deal. Secure. The shaved head guy? Yeah, he's... I'm betting, because I'm assuming it's real uh, affordable to get to this beach. Oh, yeah, for Definitely. sure. Definitely. For sure. Yeah, no question. No question. Very mm -hmm. easy to get there. Mm -hmm. The one directing traffic. Yeah. Dog. He's, he's a, a guy. dog. Mm -hmm. He's a guy. That one. He's a dog, I feel like. Yeah, he's old. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's jocked. What's the Jeez. place? Imagine if he headbutted you. <laughs> is that yeah. Jock Brady in the back there? Yeah. That oh. Is, that is Jack. Is that Jock? Yeah, yeah. Little, Dang, little he's little tall. Hard to oh, tell yeah. without Tom kissing his neck. No, that, that's <laughs> Benny. Nick. Okay. Is, I'm so sick of all the disgusting comments. That was AI Nick. <laughs> we don't know. What Nick? AI Tom Nick. Brady's hilarious. He is. Shout out so to good. Will Sasso. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you listen to it? Uh, some of it, yeah, I heard. Bro, it's phenomenal. Yeah. So good. He goes into the PTA. Netflix is trying to sign AI Tom. They to, should be. To a stand up special that they're going to animate. Mm hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's the deal. That's what's happening next. Yeah. That yeah, would be pretty easy. He's got an hour right now. He could probably create another hour mm -hmm. tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Just make another hour the next yep. day. Oh, dude, yeah. create 10 seasons. Shout out Will Sasso, dude. Shout out Will Sasso. Much more. Much more. Let's go uh, one last phone call, and then we have an easy carry contest, and maybe we can have 15 winners or so. Ooh. Let's go to Alex in Rochester, New York. What's going on, Alex? Hey, boys. How you doing? Keep it mana. Whoa, um, nice. Wow. Holy nice shit. Maybe no more of a call, oh, Alex. Maybe like yeah. maybe don't need to do anything else oh, on this call. Oh, oh, Holy oh, shit. Bomb. No, no, no. So I got a question oh, for Peck. Oh, uh, what was it like playing on the oh, Titans with guys like Hainsworth, what? Bullock, and uh, Bandenbosch? And uh, Tone Diggs, when are you going on Gutfeld? Bandenbosch. When are you going on Gutfeld, okay? I don't know what that oh, means. Me uh, Fox News. That's, uh, yeah. C oh. yeah, Greg Gutfeld. Oh, yeah. sounds like you got. He meant to say Newsmax. I don't. That's what he meant. What's Newsmax? That's just another step up, I think, in that direction. Okay, so right wing. This is a right wing tone. Yep, sounds like it. Tone, you've been getting called out in some comments, I guess, for being really a right wing lunatic. Yeah. Little do they know that this one's way crazier than you are. Whoa, whoa, whoa this one right whoa, over whoa, here. No, no, the right wing yeah. cowboys. Oh, I've seen Grant. I know. I know the Gutfeld. I, I've seen this, this man. This acting show too far. I'm gonna have to drop it. You taking a cowboy hat? You're laying this old cowboy down no, the rest? Wow. No, no, no. Holy shit. Wow. Riding yeah. off into the sunset. Pac-Man, what was it like with that initial crew that, uh, down there at Tennessee? Albert Hainsworth would go on to get so much money at Washington, but the reason why he got so much money is because how devastating he was in Tennessee. That team that you were on down there, how was it? It was great. Albert was a totally dickhead. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I really don't have anything good to say about Albert. But um, Val, uh, Jesus Christ. Kyle Vandenbosch was one of my best teammates. I love Keith Bully. He's the best. Um, we had, a, we had a good little group down there. Coach Fisher was the best. Man. Uh, okay. Pac, I got a question quick, though, about, right. about Hainsworth. You said, like, you don't have a whole lot of great things to say about Hainsworth, but he got paid after his time in Tennessee, correct? Shouldn't Washington have seen that? Like, hey, this is a guy we probably shouldn't pay? hundred million. Well, you know, Washington has always been one of the programs or, or one of the organizations that don't really give a fuck. They've been trying to win for so many years and can't win. So I think that has something to do with it. All right, I'm happy we're moving past that. Yeah. Money is that a public out. information there? Is that why that guy asked about Albert Hainsworth, what you said there? Oh, uh, it's public 
It should be. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey, sometimes things like that are going to happen. We are very lucky to watch you play for that Tennessee Titans team, and I'm mm -hmm. happy to hear that Jeff Fisher was a guy that felt like fully embraced everything that you were and made you a better person. He's a great fucking fisherman. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That One guy fly fishes. Eh? And good luck to everybody during trout season this weekend. That's right. Launching in Pennsylvania. Tim's heading to the fucking woods for the next four days. <laughs> Smart. Going and trying to catch these things. How to get new waders. How to get new waders. Trout, it's trout season? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Coming out of their holes. He's fly fishing? What's he doing? Uh, no, he's going into a creek. Pal. He's, he's, we're creek boys around here. That's what I'm saying. You can fly fish in creeks. No, uh, I don't think he's a fly fisherman. He finds holes, and he he hits those holes. Mm -hmm. That's right. Drops them in there. Nice. Are you a fucking avid fisherman? Do you? Do you uh, no, I'm wondering. I didn't know there was a trout season. I didn't know it opens up like it's deer season for a week. Well, I'm an avid fisher. I've never seen somebody digging a hole for a trout. All right, it's not. Yeah, he's not catfishing. He's not noodling. You find a spot. Where's where you, Bab? You hit the spot. Put your what pole in. Then you walk down the goddamn creek. What are we talking about? What are you, you ever been fishing Just before? Asking. Sorry about it. Sorry you're not an outdoorsman. Get you two back. I don't days straight. I don't need to be there four days straight to. to oh, fit. sorry. Oh, if The Last okay. of Us happened, you're going hungry. Okay. okay? You don't even know. You don't even know. Tim McAfee's got fucking full spread. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're having the 12 fish Christmas mm -hmm. every time. Let's go. Sweet. Cool. 12 fishes. I'll tell you what, I am a horrendous fisherman. I have never had success fishing. No, no. We saw you catch a fish before. Yeah. One. And remember what happened in that particular situ uh, situation. We were in a shed, on a shed, in a shed, yeah. on Lake Minnetonka, right. in the middle of February. Mm -hmm. Freezing. Free, in oh, a, it was like 30 below wind chill. Yeah. Chill. Potential wolves. Yeah. Shitter outside the tie had to frequent, had no ceiling. Right. Ooh. It was a horror film outside of the <laughs> said shed. Yeah, it was. Inside, though, pretty nice. Had a couple yeah. seats, had a TV, kind of service comes and goes, a light, a heater, some bears. What? And then there's literally just holes next to each other. Just six of them yep. right next to each other. What are you putting the holes? <laughs> Fishing rod. Fishing rod. Oh. Well, Cold. not the rod, Wait. the line. Mm. Tone put his head in. Yeah, I he wanted to see if I could see the fish. Couldn't. They were that big? The hole was that big? Oh, yeah. What are you putting in there, AJ? Did you see I anything? The holes were smaller. Turds. <laughs> what did you, you think? Said he had six. You had like six people, six holes. I wasn't sure what was going on. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. <laughs> but here's the, here's the actual footage. There's oh, one of the holes in the out. corner. Look at the hole. You see the hole? Hole, hole, hole. They're all right next to each other. It took me four and a half hours to That's catch one nice, fish. Last cast of the nice night. It's a nice you have, though. It's a nice like yeah. Boom! Swordfish pulled out of that thing. They call it the Minnetonka Wait. miracle. Sean was in the way <laughs> of the fish. First time I've ever done this in my life. I was jacked up five hours. <laughs> there was 30 other fish caught in this shed. Mm -hmm. 30 other fish by everybody really? else. But me, yeah. It was the last cast. They were, they were shuttling people from shed to side of lake. And uh, I was literally the last one out of the shed. Because I was waiting to catch a fish, there it was. Fucking swordfish. It's a big it. fish. Nice. I don't know if it's a swordfish, but it's a nice fish. <laughs> was what? that? Well, we gave it back anyways because, you know, yeah. we want to help Respect her. Right. Fish. Catch and release. You don't want to eat it? You Thought eat about it. it just because how proud of the moment I was, but. Catch and release. Exactly. Respect mm -hmm. the nature. This guy's a big 10 angler. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking AJ asking questions. Zito just asked if uh, we can run a screenshot of the day. I think the answer is yes. Okay, here it is. Nice. Uh, this happened today for those that missed the show. This was sent by Boots to Passes, screenshot of the day. Pretty solid one. I think AJ's kind of piecing together what's going on there, <laughs> thinking about his cheeks getting booted by my Air Force Ones. Yep. Kyle Van Noy saying, wow, that'd probably be a good tactic. And I'm happy Boots to Passes agrees that that was a game changer for soaking and earthquaking oh, yeah. pretty yeah. quickly. And maybe they already know the trick, but got to find somebody with good quads. Now you know. Hell yeah. I can't believe today's show ventured there. We are the worst. Uh, before we get out of here, let's go ahead and try to give away some money. Hell yeah. Let's uh, set a clock for one minute on the back right here, okay? And then let's set up uh, the e hashtag easy carry contest thunder course for the Adam Pac-Man Jones. Here we go. Go, Pac. I think we're probably going to have to grab the beers that Bye. we are going to be tossing. Adam Pac-Man Jones will attempt to catch five beers Wide. on the stage. All right, Pac. When he catches them, he will then head off of the stage. He will have to jump over the Bud Light table, which is out here in the middle of the Thunderball court. He Once he gets over that, can't drop a beer, will try to get down the crash pad, however he wants to. Mm -hmm. He can walk on top of it. Okay. 
He can front roll on it. He uh -huh. can do anything to get over it, to get through the crash pad, which is a very comfortable crash pad. Then he will have to pick up a pickleball paddle. He will have to juggle the pickleball through the cones, around the football. Then he will have to get up here and deliver five beers to everybody on what? his stage, including himself. And if he's able to do that in less than a minute, We'll give 15 people $500 who retweet this video, say something nice to somebody, and also put the most efficient way to pay them, whether it be Venmo, PayPal, or Cash App. This is also a submission from Adam Pacman Jones into the hashtag Easy Carry Contest that Bud Light is doing right now on Twitter. All you got to do is showcase yourself, AJ. Hey, yourself, you. Get creative, AJ. Taking beer from the fridge to yourself or to your friends. Boom. One winner will win $15,000 from Bud Light. Eight people will be entered into a March Madness-style bracket to win an autographed title belt and another $1,000. Pac-Man, are you ready? I'm ready. Anything to say to him, AJ, before he goes here? I mean, it's not a question. He'll, he'll do, kill this in way under a minute, I think. Okay, here we go. The clock will not start until after you catch all five beers because the Connor could potentially slow it down. Connor better be throwing those things yeah. quick. Well, that's the thing. Don't have to. Not until after you catch the five. Now, if you drop one uh -oh. of them, it's over. We're not doing it at all. All right? Ladies and gentlemen, Pac Man Jones. One okay. beer, easy. No right. problem. Right. Oh, two oh. beers, easy. A little bit of a low toss there from Connor. Yeah, right. Three beers, no problem. Just like he's catching punts back in the day on hard knocks. Okay. Four right. beers, high to the chest. Where's he going to put it? Last beer from Connor. Boom. Right, Success. Go, we now we got five beers in hand. Let's start the clock right now. He will have to go jump over that table without dropping a beer. He has them stacked four in his left hand okay, and arm, pack. one in nice. his right. Nice. Oh, Vert still got it. Oh, He's good. doing a rolling technique. Smart. This Smart. is a smart idea. Now he will have to. Ears. Okay. This is going to be the challenge this is, here. This is tough. Okay. He's going to have to juggle this pickleball. Around a cone course without dropping a beer. Adam Pacman Jones, one of the greatest athletes of all time, has less than 30 seconds to complete oh. a delivery of five beers. Will he be able to get around the football without dropping a beer? Oh. Oh. oh my God! Oh. Off of his face, around the ball. Oh. One beer down, 15 seconds. Oh. Two beers yeah. down, 13 seconds. Right. Three right. beers down, 11 seconds. Four right. beers down. Five beers down. Yeah. It's left. 15 people. $500 who retweet this video. Say something nice oh, yeah. to somebody and put the easiest way to pay them in a reply where they say something nice to somebody. Big shout out. To <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh. 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 You rolled with him. Shouldn't open him. We rolled I'll, with him. I'm, I'm going to learn from this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I at least did it away from there. You can enter into the hashtag easy carry contest as well, just like Pac Man successfully yeah. just did. Yeah. Hey, how about that pickleball hitting you in the face during uh, the walkover? Mm -hmm. That was incredible athleticism to keep that alive. Yeah, man. I feel really good about it. I was a little nervous that I was going to drop the beer because it was kind of like... Yeah, those slipping down. a little bit. Yeah, yeah those smaller ones are not as easy because they're a little bit smaller. Yeah. So yeah. there's more space to kind of slip through there. You can also participate in the hashtag Easy Carry Contest. All you got to do is be creative. Showcase yourself doing it at your house, your apartment, your work, wherever the hell you want to do it. I think somebody walked from like a building to like... The other side of town. Damn. Really? Yeah, I think that somebody did that. People are taking it seriously. There's 15000 bucks up for uh, grabs from Bud Light. And for us, the top eight will make it into a March Madness-style polling bracket to win an autographed title from Bud Light and us, and also 1000 bucks. That's kind of fun. Great work, Pat. Yeah, man. let's go. Pat. Hey, Pat. Before we get out of here, we will do have to acknowledge something. It was on this particular day, 35 years ago. That an absolute hero showed their face for the first time mm -hmm. into this planet Earth. This man has had many different phases and chapters and eras. And uh, we've been honored to kind of be a part of all of them. Yeah, that's yeah. right. The newest one has really ruffled some feathers in some communities. Mm -hmm. But it certainly brought a lot of chuckles. Can't wait to see what this next trip around the sun does for this man. He's recently a father, obviously a great husband. Ladies and gentlemen, one half of the hammer, Don, Don. Cowboys. Tony Diggs is celebrating a birthday today. Happy, oh, birthday, yeah. Happy birthday, Tony. Happy birthday, Tony. Yeah. Happy birthday, Tony. Yeah. Happy birthday, Tony. Yeah. Happy, birthday, yeah. Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, Tony. 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 Happy birthday
Happy birthday to you. Hey, baby, turn on camera. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, dear Tony. Tony. Happy birthday, dear Don't burn that cowboy cab. Happy birthday, Tony. Thank you, boys. Proud of you, buddy. Make a wish, asshole. Blow him out. <laughs> Way to go, Tony. Right. What'd you wish for? Hell yeah. Don't tell him. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Big thanks to uh, T. Higgins for stopping by. Shout out to Peck. Big shout out to Jet Passing for stopping by. MLB opening day is happening. The NBA is cooking. The NFL is always making moves. We can't thank you enough for allowing us to be a part of your afternoon. You're the greatest humans on earth. We're going to Chef Bose. We'll see you tomorrow for a feel-good Friday. Goodbye.